Cyclops. And then Wolverine. Colossus. Nightcrawler. Iceman. Malcolm Paul A. On Instagram. I Hold on. Know. Yep. One second. Sit in politics, baby. Thank you. That was actually yeah. Deuce Andretti came in there's in the clutch. Echo. And there's Echo, but I, that's just because I have to turn it down wow. up there, but it's all good. I'll get to that in a second. Um, sit in politics. Go show some love. <laughs> sit in politics with us everywhere. We were muted. Deuce Andretti came through clutch for me and just said that we were muted and we got, got that done early. Uh, we came in with the X-Men intro. If y'all are 90s babies and you know about the fucking X-Men, that's a full revival. <laughs> we're not even going to talk about it much today, but I just thought that was so dope. And the motherfucker, Yo, I love Wolverine. The motherfucker with the beatbox uh, coming through with the theme song where we don't get copyrighted, I hope. By the way, Deuce Andretti, I'm going to bring you in here just so you know that I see you, baby. You're in here. Um, is in the stream with audio only. So you're in, in here with audio only. I, I if you want to pull up your camera, then you can. I'll figure that out. Okay, that's beautiful, baby. Um, uh, Deuce Andretti, go find Deuce Andretti on Twitter, going crazy today, talking about the guy Kai Sinet. Anybody that's here to hate on Deuce Andretti, I want to let y'all know direct the hate towards him. I, I think am. it's disgusting what Kai Sinet did. It's disgusting. <laughs> what a sick person. A sicko. Who does that? Capitalism. You're, Perfect. Perfect. I, I want to get a uh, mic check audio. He's there. creating jobs. Capitalism, brother. It's capitalism. Yeah. Hey, he's supporting small business in a way, for real. Um, and then, like I he said, some shoes, I, I, some backpacks. I gotta pass it to Paul because we're about to nail. We, you're gonna go oh, find oh, Paul take this two. week. Take two. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, you did already. But we were muted. Oh, we were muted. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh my God, and you fucking did it beautifully. And I did it beautifully. So okay, let's see when you get in. All right, so at X, formerly known as Twitter, as we call Twitter, it is at Paul B. Balcom. Yeah. And then at Instagram, as oh, some shit. of y'all call it IG, yeah. it is Balcom Paul. Okay, so yeah. there it is. Yeah. yeah. No, he's like, government name. Because I was like, damn near, like, he nailed Twitter before we got on here. I'm like, let's just give him the Twitter, make sure it's correct one time. Let's just make sure. Got and it. the hilarious part, we come on and he's like, oh, yeah, it's just literally my name. It's just my <laughs> name. Again, again, yeah. It's like that. We yeah. had that hard of a time. Yeah, yeah. we, we, we thought things were going. Yeah, I was told by a recruiter to do that. I we were thinking, overthinking. Yeah, that was it. Which actually probably, it probably was a good move. I'm thinking about just changing all my shit to my fucking just first just and last. Fuck it. Yeah. What, what am I hiding? A whole family. Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> taxes, Dudes, brother, bro. taxes. Yeah, dude. Yeah, for, well, I mean, and I was thinking just like whatever kind of privacy that I could salvage would be, uh, you know, beneficial. Right now, we got too much privacy, to be honest. Hey, share this, guys. Share this. We got too much privacy. <laughs> too We're much trying privacy. to actually get rid of some of the privacy. That I, we got I haven't right received now. a death threat yet. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think. I came pretty close. I think me and Deuce were on a uh, stream one time, and it was we were talking about abortion, and there was a guy that got real hot about that. Yeah, there was a guy that was uh, ready to chop our heads off. Well, and he said that he couldn't support the podcast and just was disgusted by our opinions. That he used really fucked with us and just couldn't. He should have loved our opinions. They were great. Yeah, so, until that one. Till that one opinion that you say, that's all it takes that's all it takes you know and this in this crazy. country of freedom he was a communist yeah, brother yeah which is like why can't people this just country of freedom let people have opinions freedom. um here i'm gonna play a video real quick and then i'm gonna go ahead and take care of the sound um i don't know how much that's coming back on the feedback for you guys so let me know like i said in the comments hop in get involved in the conversation we're gonna go over a lot of stuff i think let's show that hillary clinton video that might actually get things real okay. hot under hillary. Uh, yeah, so Deuce, make sure you tap in here saint. and listen to what Hillary has to say. All lies. Uh, Arizona is, you know, without exceptions. It mm -hmm. is, and, and you know, as an aside, the the man who wrote that law was married, I think, four times, and mm. one of his wives was twelve. Ew. Two of his wives were fifteen. Ew. I mean, so I'm glad we're getting advice oh, from an yeah. outstanding yeah. Let, let, citizen let's, of the community. Let's yeah. go. Let's go back to that yeah. that era and. Uh, 
and and the you know the danger to to women's lives as well as to our you know right to make our own decisions about our bodies and ourselves. You guys want to take a second and just hop in before we get? She's to a sick person. person. You said she's a sick okay. person. For for what in this moment? Okay. Yeah, I will say she starts out here by talking about uh, abortion and. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Okay, just checking yeah. this out. Um, can you still hear me, Deuce? Yeah, I can. Hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. Okay. I was making sure I had a little bit of an echo, so I was trying to figure that out because I just turned down the sound on the camera. Um, but yeah, in this clip right here, she is kind of like she's kind of like emotionally loading her stance by attacking the guy that had the the pedophile. <laughs> Which, I mean, the thing is, both sides do this, but we criticize the other side, rightfully so. I think when they do this, it's like if you have a if you have a moral stance, you don't have to literally start it out by saying, "Well, but what's an aside? He had the man was a pedophile." You know, that's 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 hey. that's, that's that's fair, I guess. But it's like you had it kind of distracts and kind of turns into an ad hominem a little bit instead of just building on your actual idea. But go ahead. Yeah. So, so what I think is, uh, it's more of a nod to how different that time was. That 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 look, we're we're looking at a time where first of all, we, we 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 can claim religion here at that time. Well, in, in the religion, I believe you shouldn't be married four times, right? Okay. So um so so I, I guess that's pointing out a uh, hypocrisy. Okay. And then when you look at saying that hey, he was married to a 12 year old, a 15 and a 15 year old. Yeah, I don't you know, know if, a Mormon? It's, as much as like like pointing out his character, as much as like the times that was okay, gotcha, right? Gotcha, Which okay. is disgusting. Sure. But that was the time. So we can agree that the times have changed with that. Times should change with the abortion law as well. Well, is, is he a Mormon, though? Oh, God. <laughs> know, uh, in Arizona? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we're, we know Mormons <laughs> be heavy in Mormons. Utah, but uh, that's right. They're saying they believe in multiple wives and shit. So yeah, they do. Oh, okay. okay. I thought we were, I thought the these children. Kids, though, man. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about so the they, children part is fucking crazy. Yeah, 12 and at all. 2 15. Uh, I just think. Yeah, I mean, so I and I think it's it is a little bit more of an interesting and less of a condemnable tactic uh, if you're trying to like basically paint the picture of the time period we were, we were in. Because I mean, like I said, from from my perspective, I just took it more as like, yeah. oh, I'm attacking the person that passed this bill back in the day. No. It's like that's kind of irrelevant um, how they were living their life, whether or not the message was actually is the message actually true or not, whether they were lived up to those standards. We could point to examples like that all the yeah. time. Which honestly. which which that, that's yeah. kind of the nature of the times that why, why our mind would go it, it, or, it, immediately to that yeah. is that that's been the, the game yeah. that has been for the past decade is like instead yeah. of focusing on anything that matters, but, it's like but the, this yeah. guy, this guy, well, this guy, on, it's like. Or but, time really yeah. even oh, yeah. today like some of the policies like we're going to talk about biden later that he passes that or gets passed that we might agree with it's like he kind of there's plenty of times in his career where he's fallen short of that like it's not as extreme as this example but i'm saying like as far as like somebody whether or not somebody is pushing a policy that is just or not or that's going to actually have good good effects on the uh, country is it's kind of irrelevant as to like are they a good person are they necessarily living up to these tenets i mean you want to have the best examples in those positions i would agree right. with that but this is this is like re-litigating something that happened forever ago yeah. in, in a way forever um, ago yeah i mean I, I forever ago actually is probably that probably Bro, like eight, actually minimizing it a little bit though, even. Or, 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 yeah. was there uh I still honestly, I'm one though that slaves were still slaves at that time. I know, but like for me, and and, that's pre Civil War 1864, uh, yeah, 1880s, right? Yeah, and I got I've gotten some shit on here a few times where uh, talking about like just people that are from uh, just old times and holding them to like a modern standard. I've gotten shit for that, but like some things I honestly I stand by that. I think like when we're talking about 12 year olds, I just can't imagine, even if like from uh societal aspect it was something that was admissible because it wasn't against the law i can't imagine partaking in something like that ethically like there's just like a major drop off you're talking about like people i don't want to get too off the rails into religion so i mean but let's just say people that were like in their 30s 40s taking you know wives that are like 12 years old Dude. it's like that's not something that could ever really rationalize like oh well it was acceptable in the times it's like okay well i mean like 
it's some things are still just morally well they're against my ethics so i'm not going to partake well, where do you think I, age is nothing but a number came from brother you know what i mean oh my it god come, Park, come on like, that that yeah. came from <laughs> from, from, from like a 30 year old to a 50 year old like hey listen still beautiful you still got it but like like like, 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 like what like, R. Kelly was talking about. No, R. Kelly's no, disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. disgusting. We do books, not commit. I mean, condemn. Yeah, we look in three yeah. books. Listen, listen, listen no, we, we definitely not. condemn it. We condemn it. We yeah, do not we can do. Yeah. Rain of so, but, but like, but uh, Bobby, honest, like, like back in high school, like, like there was a thing between like being like a senior, like to me, like a junior, like a senior going with, like mm-hmm. a freshman sophomore, because you're sitting there and it's like, dude, like. Like they're like knowing being active between those ages, it like happens. you knew there was such a difference. I know it happens, no. but you just knew there was such a there was you such a physical difference. Uh, yeah, 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 there was, but but <laughs> like but like there was such a physical oh, difference course. between the two, and it's like yeah. so to to think as an adult to yeah. to, to know to know at, like at like thirty like, years, yeah, to, yeah to, to know like at thirty what my wife, a, a grown woman, at, no, at, at like, thirty, bro, no, bro. I know, I know, yeah, but we're on the same page. Yeah, to, to think, it's like it's like how there's no way even if you told me, hey, listen, it's okay, bro. You could, I'm like, nah, you like, know, what? I'm, I'm like, more than okay. Yeah, I think it's I'll be disgusting. The thing it's is, a problem. Matter of fact, man, Kai, I hate to. I'm a mental health issue. They need help. Don't don't throw them in jail. I'm just kidding. We're just kidding. Yeah, just kidding. That was a joke. That was Deuce. a liberal joke. Deuce. <laughs> that, that, that was a joke at myself. Deuce, do you have a uh, do you have an opinion on the matter? <laughs> um oh did we have to finish this honestly, video? Honestly, uh she's over here spewing hatred. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Okay. She was she was hating a little bit on the whole situation, but rightfully so. She Give me five it, seconds you know. of seriousness. Oh, this man shut. Yeah, he hopped off the stream. <laughs> His camera shut down. He said, he said, he's almost like some bullshit and dip. Yeah, I did that for you, brother. I had to kick you out. I had to ban you for a second. <laughs> I had to ban you for your comments. <laughs> Damn, bro, what happened, brother? Where am I at? Bro, I had to ban you, bro. So so YouTube knew that we were, you know, moderating and shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Get back into it, brother. Go ahead. We're good. Okay. <laughs> You you left off as she was spewing hatred. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I was fucking off. But no, yeah. um, she's a slime ball though because I have no yeah. doubt how she's going to bring this point home. Okay. Yeah. She's let's let's, let's gonna, watch it. She's going to be exonerating herself in white. She she was exonerated like by nine FBI on this planet. Nine FBI investigations and zero evidence. Okay. That that what is exonerating. Oh, so the guy that just shot the video? himself, hung himself. Oh his, my god, the, the, those are those are alive. Stories. They dragged himself by a horse. Stories. He just did all that to himself. Yeah. Are you kidding Bring me? Get the court. fuck out of here. The guy who was fucking stampeded kidding. by a fucking centaur. Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> yeah. guy, right? Mythical fucking yeah. creature. The, 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 the one she sent the tooth fairy on, okay? <laughs> the, the story Bro, started to get real. Look up weird. the Hillary, the, the Clinton hit list and look up there the are 13, kill files. There are 13 who got hung and nobody has any questions. Are you fucking the, kidding the kill me? files, man. We got to pull those up. How did someone get shot with a shotgun? In the chest, and it's a suicide. You can't, you, you can't do that, brother. It's not, it's not possible. Well, you see the autopsy, well, sir? Can you, can you not do that though? I don't know. Then so, he hung himself. Yeah, that's then what I'm he hung yeah, himself. Yeah, okay, okay. That, Shot himself hard. in the chest, and then hung himself. Bro, yeah, read the police yeah, report. Read the okay. police report. Okay. Okay, we can might you text there. it to me? Can we get back to the yeah, video? We we're there. getting off track. We, we, well, we're not too off track because we are don't, still talking about Hillary Clinton. Relevance. Brother. Relevance. Is a demon. Well, she's attacking somebody else's character for being a pedo. Now, Deuce is saying, well, okay, well, we're hearing from a fucking murderer. Speculation here. here. Speculation. I've already I've already proved the, the evidence, shown it, that, yeah. hey, listen, this is a more of a brother, talk about the times than the, the mom, individual. Brother. Okay, we are yeah, talking about the times of this law being written is 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 a non- well, it's, okay. it's, it's just not modern. Yeah, okay? but, but we have to consider how much does she value life? We're talking about abortions. How much does she value Come life on. if she's willing Dude, to fucking order the hit? Stem cells from those she babies. Baby. Is she, okay. If she's willing to she's order the stem cells from those baby parts, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? yeah, she is. But from from all their all their uh, right. circumcision skin or skin. Oh, that's just one. That's just one piece. That's of just one pie, source, brother. That's, that's one. That's one oh, of the yeah, listen, listen. After watching Fallout, spoiler alert. A oh, foot, sure. a foot will go for a lot, right? Oh, I mean, hey, here dude, we go. We are going to talk about fallout. Hey, so you you right, haven't well, finished that, have you? We just got canceled for that comment right there, brother. Jesus Christ! Yeah, oh, yeah. oh my God! <laughs> hey, you haven't seen Fallout, right? No, brother. I, okay, I'll put I that a little that. bit towards the back. All right, I don't want to spoil that for you. Oh, so we'll man, put that towards spoiler. Back. All right, let's go ahead and finish this video. We're going to get a little bit more into it. Let's go. It's so profound, and there's another element to it which I find so troubling. I mean, there's a, a kind of cruelty to it. I mean, you know, no exceptions for rape, incest. 
I mean, cruelty? really? I mean, what kind of world is that? And and also, I have been pregnant twice, hospitalized both times. Oh, I mean, literally, I asked God, oh, this is a wow. real thing to just take me and my son in the hospital the second time. Because I was like, what? what? Take me? If you're saying, <laughs> shit, this is a, this is a, cool. she, was in a she was in a scary, dark Technical place, okay? Foul. Kelly alone. She said to take me and, and my son. And, okay. and Hillary's never been but cruel selfish. a day in her life. So but she did. She, the thing is, I don't like how she said take me and my son. There should have been a little bit more of like a pause on that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Take me no, and, you. and my son. Yeah. You're making it sound like just get us both out of here. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't pack, know. Pack this shit That's up. That sounded voluntary. That sound but either way, I'm not trying. I'm trying. I am trying to have fun at her expense. But um, this is a real situation. Her, yeah, her. Her bringing up her personal situation is definitely that's all I'm saying. This is kind of like she's not wrong to do that. And this is like a talk show. So it's not like supposed to be taken ser super serious. So we're kind of holding it to a really tough standard. I'll be honest. Um, but um, it does kind of like like I said, it really emotionally loads the kind of question that we're asking. And it gets away from it points it in a certain direction. OK, thank you. What? What? <laughs> Almost any discussion with Killary is unhinged. Poor Kelly. Listen, Listen, don't Hillary, call her that. She did nothing. Okay? Yeah, Hillary is right. I need. I should have put that in the bitch. title. You should have said, "Take me and save my child." What the fuck is wrong with these people? Oh. <laughs> like, what is wrong with her? Let's just point that out. She didn't even think of that as an option. Like, what the fuck? How like, dare the fuck? Like, are we serious? She's gonna be a vulnerable on television. Yeah, how dare her? We're like, why did she make a rational decision? <laughs> she's fucking asking well, for death. She's full of shit, is what I'm saying. She's lying. She doesn't um, say, take no, me as a child. The thing is, like I said, it, it does kind of like, and I'm, the thing is, this is where I'm being, I want to be honest, though. It's like, I'm not expecting for there to be like a debate that starts to take place between Kelly Clarkson and Hillary. I'm not expecting there to be like some kind of like pushback on, for example, on the case of the fetus, which we're not like digging into yet. We're going to listen to the rest of it. We might, but it's like, we're focusing on the woman's right to choose, which I think is a, a valid and interesting point, but the opposite side of that conversation, there's not really a place for that to be had. There's only the guy, <laughs> this guy's what a pedophile. About the father? What about the father? <laughs> the guy that fucking did this. He was a fucking pedophile. He's a bastard. We should get away from that because in those times, people thought people could touch kids, so now we shouldn't be able to do that. Oh, now we should, now we should be able to kill him. Oh. <laughs> well, in order, we do kill him. Oh, no, we do kill yeah. him here. Uh, well, this uh, and they, they already said, by the way, I want to highlight one thing that she said is this is dealing with no exceptions. So that's obviously a place uh, that in most states at least before there was repeals um where that was the extreme and a lot of times this conversation when you would start to center it around that people would be like why are we even discussing like the extremes of you know because they're real situations they're rape real. and incest that's true um but i'm saying that now i think that that's not even like necessarily the conversation that we're even having at this point uh, uh, outside but, of this in this case we are yeah in, in this, this case, case we, we are but not are. only this case uh i want to say yeah. arkansas uh, mississippi and yeah. Texas and Alabama all have have really strict laws in place to where if sure. you if you if you go out of the state, I believe if you go out of the state for an abortion, then you're still held reliable. Yeah, like or, or liable. Or so it's like, so it's like no, it's right. It's very it's it's hurting recruiting a lot. No, I think it's a, it should if it a should doctor hurt performs. Uh, I mean, I would imagine, brother, an abortion is considered murder. Yeah, and it is. The question: Should the mom I, I, also be held I, I, responsible? I think for that? in Alabama they are. Oh, interesting. I okay, wanted, we'll look yeah, at that yeah, yeah. I, we have to look at all, yeah. all the. I wanted to paint. I just wanted to make sure that we did because we we were talking earlier, so we're getting a little bit away from it. As far as like, they are literally in this case talking about the extremes. Yeah. So if we're if we're if we're having the conversation on the fringe in this scenario, well, that's literally you know what they are which, discussing which, in the case of Arizona. Which again, yeah. in 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 grape case, cases, yeah. How how many of those guys are going to be considerate enough to not? finish inside you know what i mean like sure like like yeah. like they're so it's like how many of those cases do they do they become pregnant and then seek abortions and, and it's private because yeah. why would they broadcast that to the world again yeah. it, it's humiliating sure. it's 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 like it's well they, 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 broadcast it to the doctor. they don't got to broadcast it to the world okay so yeah. so yeah but the doctor is the one that has a case and they can't go broadcast that to the world they have confidentiality well and i think that it's fair regardless to say like in those french cases which we're going to get into is like 
that's not the person's not having the choice at the point of conception so why right that's a completely different conversation but even then i think obviously there should be conversations around when it's caught i don't think if the baby is conceived through um something like that incest or grape that you should be able to just get rid of the baby change your mind at any point which i'm not saying that's the, what we're saying right, but, but that obviously still comes into play exceptions isn't to say that okay in cases of exceptions there's free reign right you know just want to make that clear. Not, like like now uh like i i i, yeah. I guess we're going to get into it later so i'll get into like like personal, yeah, sort of, I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 personal okay, situations perfect. later yeah. and then i, I was going to read these comments before we start the video back up uh killery is literally not helping the women uh who are hurt by the ridiculous ban indiana has banned it straight up mm. uh indiana ain't fucking arkansas or alabama still banned yeah so yeah, it's a, well that's why I said that, 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 that was a layered <laughs> shot at yeah, Arkansas in Alabama. Then yeah, like what the fuck are we doing? I love it. I love it. <laughs> SEC country, baby. Yeah, yeah they, in the places that probably have the biggest issue with incest. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> just, that's just an observation. <laughs> just I think Mississippi holds that record. Oh okay. Well yeah, see what their uh, balls look like. <laughs> they got super athletes over there too. It's the worst thing. I didn't know I'd get emotional. Sorry. It's okay, oh, she's because you're speaking for that, so yeah. many. You're speaking for literally millions of women yeah, in our country face. and around the world. And it, it, um, it was just the and worst. And they have some guy sitting in a Supreme Court in Arizona to or make legislature. some women go through that. Yeah. Yeah. It was my decision, you know, yeah. and I'm so glad I did. I love my babies, but to make someone there, there, there is a, there's a. There's a, a cruelty toward women, toward yeah. women's lives, toward... And you don't realize how hard it is. Yeah. The fact that you would take that away from someone, they can literally kill them. Right. The fact if they're raped, the fact if they're some, by their family member and they have to... Like that, it's just like insane to me. Oh, law. That's what happens when you get two uh, hands of horn, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah, brother, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> She One comment great. on that situation, I feel yeah. like um, with that young lady, uh, I feel for her. She went through something uh, very traumatic. Yeah. Um, Kelly Clarkson. Fucking... What's the fucking reason? Kelly Clarkson, we were just Kelly. watching a clip from her TV show, brother. Uh, uh, but, um, named, I, I called think, her a young lady. Yeah. I tried Clarkson, to keep so. her name out of the media, like you said, but I guess if you want to... Come on, it's her nuts, face. It's, it's her saying, broadcast show. You don't respect what you said, right? I'm trying to look out for the victims, brother. Jesus. i look out for the victims, brother. That's all. Oh, my Lord. Those are flip it like a pancake right here. Hey, brother. Hey, listen. You walked right into the booby trap. Yeah, you got, trap, me, brother. Brother. you got me, brother. There's a big out here. We're a jungle warfare, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. There, no, but, okay. Um, but, yeah. The, the the crazy part is though is the other side of that is you have that fucking slime ball fucking snake sitting there, fucking slithering like, yes, please pour out all your pain to my base. So they sit there and give us all your votes. Like, she literally is, is no, using that situation. He's not running for anything. It doesn't matter, like, bro. Yeah. Joe Biden yeah, just, is a fucking shell of himself. Who do you think is running the country? It's either her or Obama or both. The, the, <laughs> the yeah. cabinet, probably. The, the, wearing be. a mask of Joe the Biden. Cabinet, the, the cabinet with no fucking experience? Fuck no. They don't know what What is. are you doing? Okay, you need to look that up. Okay, Who's we're the best. That's, that's, that's the Obama? Yeah. That's so, running the what? country. So go ahead. I have some comments I want to get yeah, to. Yeah, no, oh, if you wanna... look, okay, cool. I'll do that real quick. Uh, so how does this, this just might actually propel the conversation a little bit in an interesting yeah. way. How does a 13 year old prove her pregnancy is from a rapist or incest? Um, and then I'll just read the rest, but then I will obviously come back to that. How does oh, anyone sure. prove that? Uh, the problem is doctors do not want to do them, period, because they could lose their license mm -hmm. or worse. Um, Killary looks <laughs> always looks miss evilish i feel that yeah 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 i mean big guys yeah. her uh, oh my God. But, <laughs> uh if, if, if a certain council would have oh, okay. uh, would, would, would have approved the defense of funding for, and forth. for the embassy you know what happened to get off yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, man. And then when she laughed about it, so bitch. oh lord, man, so, so so back to this. We lost fucking yeah. American how, citizens. Okay, look, look, how look, how can we'll a thirteen year old? We'll keep listen, listen, everyone calls them a whore. Everyone calls them a slut. That, that's usually what happens. Oh, okay. and, you're and, talking about okay. Well, they, hold on, okay. Girls, Wait, hold on. Pause. Who calls rape victims sluts and whores? What do we? What people do that? that yeah, we should probably clarify what. Well, 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 yes. That, 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 that's that's usually yeah. that's usually every yeah. time someone come every time. A woman comes out, they're usually yeah. not believed, besides by a few. A few people believe them. Everyone else is always quick to to to, to, yeah. to defend the guy. 
I and mean, then, and, then ways. and especially when, when when it's in the family, when, when it's inside family, okay. when it's inside of friends. I, I mean, okay. you, I mean, you have the very public case of, of DL, right? Where it was he was approached oh, okay, by his yeah. daughter, and then he couldn't believe that somebody that's so close to him would do that. And that and that happens in, in non celebrities. Hold on, explain that because I'm not like super yeah, yeah. We need we need some more detail on that. He was approached by his daughter. What was that? Mean? Yeah, like 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 his daughter. Sexually? No, his daughter told him about her being assaulted by somebody that was close oh, to him, Jesus one of his Christ. close friends. Okay, gotcha. And he basically like uh, turned it on her. D- didn't believe her okay. at all. And, and stayed close to that person, and it kind of ended like, 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 uh, severed their relationship. I, I, I the, the details okay, are a little muddy, but saying, again, the there's, gotcha, gotcha. but, uh, it's, gotcha. it, that happens in, in real life, sure. in, in everyday people. So yeah, it's like, that, that is yeah. tough. I mean, <laughs> and beyond just, just like, like victims, um, uh, when you look at like the six week ban, like, again, you, you have, uh, in Florida, my my wife and I we have to do like when uh she would take uh when we were doing a I is IEP I forget what it's called but um anyways it's it's the incisions okay, um you. not IEP I forget what it was anyways idea um um IBF? no no that 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 that's next step so, okay. so 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 this is like I have to go in like 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 you know give, give them a Got sample it. they they then put it into a little syringe put it inside her uh-huh. and. When that happens, when we do that, you then have to wait until your next cycle and then uh, uh, take take the test to see if you're pregnant. Now, within like a month, we lot wound up losing the baby and it's ectopic. Or okay. like, and the thing is, situations like that, if you don't abort the baby, then you're in a high, high risk, especially that early, at the mother dying. You're talking sure. about get, getting septic. You're talking about like yeah. a lot of issues. And it's like to put a ban on that because yeah. it's in the time frame is is highly ignorant and and it's just wrong i mean you're talking about your your handcuffing people just off based off of what which in the first amendment it talks about how you can't p- pass laws based off of religious religious context yeah. right so it's unconstitutional to even put these through when, when, I think when it all look at it from a like criminal standpoint though like you're taking a life you know to like but that, that's, that's not a life it's of- it's the, the, the well, baby does it, does it, does it, it's I understand. Like, I, just, I understand that. Uh, I understand, the baby's already passed, though. I understand that. Uh, like, oh yeah, that in that case, situation, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I mean, we, we probably all agree, right? Yeah. And then, and then, and then even before, I mean, science. We we got to follow science. If it doesn't have a heartbeat, if it doesn't have anything, I mean, again, you're you're basing off of a. It has a soul. At, at but conception. I have seen miracle situations to where because I've gone through something like this. Obviously, mine wasn't. Um, a, a miracle situation, but I have seen it to where, like, they don't detect heartbeats and all that shit and all that, and then you know they have the baby, and then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. like, they're able to you know bring it, bring it to life or whatever. So I mean, or it's even, just yeah, it's a it's a touchy or subject. Point, or even at that point, like you're saying, like they don't have heartbeats, like, but at a certain point, you know, like they do. So at what point do we start to talk about it is something that should be protected and should have essentially the same rights at least as the mom. Right again. I guess that's where you want to have the. That's where we can have the conversation at, and when the heartbeat starts, when things like that start. Is that what you think? Is it like, because it does become like, well, it kind of does become a little arbitrary because, like, what are you judging that off? Why when the heart beats? Why not, you know, this or that? Because because if if we're stemming it off of it being a life and the murder, then you have to base it off that. If 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 we're going to go to the black and white context Mm -hmm. of law, if it's something where it's so you think uh, that has to do with heart stopping. Uh, no, because something could be living without having a heart. I imagine I have to look that up. I wonder if they're. I'm I curious. Guess, I don't know. An animal, a human. I mean, something sure, but a sure. human, different. And again, like like in a well, but, in, but in my a point situation that is, is that we don't define. I wonder. I'm gonna look into it because I'm honestly not sure. I'm just right. like kind of we're having a, con- a conversation, but um, I wonder if like something else was living and like moving around, like even like bacteria. We would say that's alive, but. I don't know if it has a heart, you know. So we don't define everything by no, but, heartbeat. But, now but, that thing's yeah. alive. Yeah, heartbeat but, stops now. It's not alive. Yeah, but a but, human. Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking sure. about a human specific. Okay. So uh, like like when a human's alive, there, there's a heartbeat. You know, mm-hmm. again, not a heart can stop and then become you know re- resuscitated. What about sure. organs? What about if organs have been developed but there's no heartbeat yet? What what is that? Is um, that I, I mean, I guess again, let's look at what science says. When does science say that the life starts? 
at, at what well, I'm age? Ask the heart thing real quick, just yeah. Because I'm curious about it. At what age? And then, like, because again, like, like a situation where you're talking about, like, like it could be resuscitated. I don't think that if the baby is is the determined to be deceased at you know 18 weeks, you carrying it out for the ne- for the next several months, if you're going to be able to to you know restart the heartbeat, the baby is it's it's gone at that point. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like you're you're now facing you know, like you know s- something going wrong internally for the mother, and it's like and and I think that that should be a situation. I know someone personally who that happened, and then they decided to carry it full term and give birth to a, to a deceased baby. And again, they did that mm-hmm. because their religion, like and and you respect it, yeah, sure. Like like it's hey, like that's yeah, your decision. That, that's your decision. Like and that's just kind of the thing where it's like the government shouldn't have that. <laughs> Well, I think it goes. I go. I think it goes to choice. Uh, You know, I mean. But the thing is, your choice can't infringe on the rights of another human being, whether it's your child or not. So that that would just be my position on that. So, not disagreeing with your premise, but I would say as soon as that decision, because like in the perfect scenarios that you're creating for, yeah, like I agree with you. Like, yeah, there should be uh, abortion rights there, of course. But and do you think? That, what, well, and do you think that those protections for those things should still remain in place? Yeah, because like because, across the board, because, because it's not just r- what do you r- mean across like, the board, like, though. Well, what I mean, like, is like all state ha- all states have to respect this as like if you know a baby dies in the womb then someone oh yeah medical be- reasons but that's considered a medical okay. reason though. you know what i'm saying and oh, like, the well, biggest- okay and okay, rape then also obviously like that's like i said that's yeah, what they're yeah, talking about they're saying no exclusions so when we're talking about the video that we just saw with hillary clinton aside from someone like the virtue signaling and stuff that is kind of cringe to me the general st- point that they're standing on that i can't really disagree with which is like obviously there should be protections for cases of exception and i mean i, I, I imagine that you know We'll kind of agree here before i pass it back to you guys i want to get to these comments and then i'll pass it back for a little bit more of the conversation before we move on and then also i just want to let you guys know because i've shown the audience here uh that this is just interesting so the animals that don't have a heart include jellyfish flatworms corals and polyps starfish cyanoma uh sponges and uh, sea cucumbers and sea lilies so everything by, by the way water. it's kind of interesting that it's uh, interesting well, and it's interesting that there's, like, I wonder what the fuck. Which is further, w- w- which is further know, proof that, that that the water, yeah, the ecosystem, the, it doesn't belong to us. We yeah, need to say the fuck up. Yeah, don't fuck with that. <laughs> um, no, that's a fair point. Um, let's see these comments real quick. So, healthcare decisions yeah, should be left to citizens and their doctors. Correct. Uh, it is really that simple. What was that? Deuce? No, I'm saying, uh, I, yeah, no, it's okay. Keep going. I, I think that's interesting. Okay. Just one, comment. Another comment right, real quick. Uh, doctors do not have an oath to do no harm. Doctors, oh, no, I'm sorry. I read, misread that. <laughs> doctors do take an oath <laughs> to do no harm. A mm-hmm. fetus is not viable until around 20 weeks. So why not leave this to doctors? That's right. uh, why do these Christo fascists? 20 uh, weeks. But that think doctors depends. are murderers. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, I understand that. But I, I honestly, so I think that we probably would all generally agree with what you're actually saying, aside from the fact that when you're saying like leave it to doctors, there still should be some kind of like barriers because there's people you like if you really want to find somebody that's going to uh affirm your opinion as a uh as a patient in capitalism where there's private doctors i'm sure you will in any situation there's because of the market actually if it's allowed then there's going to be a, a fucking uh doctor regardless of the moral code that Just will like actually surgeries that'll take advantage of that kind of like opening opening in the market so i don't know that we could just blindly because you, you have to think also in this country healthcare is still an industry so we can't just leave yep. an industry and say leave it to the experts let's not regulate it i think that this is something that there still has to be protections i i think that we probably would come really close to agreeing on where those protections would would be um because at least for me from my perspective you know obviously these exception cases i think those are situations where something is being forced on a person i think jade spade you made a really interesting point earlier with that too that is really hard to contend with which is that um you know how does somebody prove that does somebody have to like basically go through an entire trial prove that then at that point are we it's, already it's past beyond the exactly exactly so no i mean these are which, these which, are real which, problems which with the six weeks if you don't find out you're pregnant until three four weeks and then you have to 
plan the surgery. You have to plan the yeah. appointment. And that yeah. happens four weeks later. Yeah, are no you now going to make you go through that. a trial if you're right? But, that, that, I mean, if they but, do that, no, that's not true. Oh, actually, People yeah. do go through trials to, 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 yes. to, to prove that they've been raped. That's it, true. But now I did actually this. I, I'm going to give it right back to you because I wanted to contend with something you said earlier. What state? I didn't agree with because earlier you kind of said like basically. I don't know. At least this is from my perspective, so you can clear it up. Um, that you, you made it sound like m basically more people are going to automatically chastise the woman that comes forth I'm not after more. being raped. I'm saying people do. Like people like, do, but well, but and then also like because we were talking about like as far as like defend the guy, you did a, after that say something about like it being like you kind of put it in a family context. After that, in in that case, I can kind of see what you're saying, but I think in the society that we have now, and I agree, actually me personally, I agree with this with like the believe all women kind of movement and stuff like that. I think it's much much more. If somebody's going to come forward, a majority of people are going to be sympathetic and also probably. I'm not going to say the thing is in the believe all women thing. I think that gets kind of misconstrued. And we have, we have had this debate on here before. I don't know if it was with you guys, but I'll just really make this quick and concise. It's like, when I say that, I don't mean like believe all women. If somebody comes and has a, uh, uh, levies an accusation, it's automatically true. We should throw somebody in jail and not investigate it. I mean, as far as like those kind of accusations should always be taken seriously and should always be investigated and should never be not taken seriously. So believe them in the sense, as far as like, I, generally believe you like we would hopefully with any crime if somebody comes to the police and they're like hey somebody fucking robbed me i i would hope that police officers wouldn't be like hmm well is this guy fucking lying about being robbed or not right you know what i'm saying like just but, believe me so, investigate it if i'm full of shit punish me for that so two two situations yeah. which which one one quick pushback on what you were saying like yeah. like like these cases although yes they're they're these perfect examples they are real examples that happen so you have to have things sure. scapegoats for or whatever no avenues for that policy for them. um when it comes to like 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 this situation i can i can pull two which maybe deuce remembers this from from when he was in high uh high school there was a girl who she was gang graped at a party okay like like okay. like drugged all this what? people there knew what happened oh, hold on but like yeah like well oh, you can't see him the the the, the, the so room were you there hold on hold on so were you there for this were you were you at this party? Uh, i was there where like like things like started and like like it was just it was just a weird situation so a few like like several people left but what wound up happening was afterwards you hear like the rumor go around that such and such slept with seven eight nine guys at a party oh my gosh she's a whore and they would went Sheesh. all around school quickly and it was like yeah several of us like like that left knew like Kind of what happened but like what do you do like how do you like like what do you just go ahead and like say everything so like like it's at a time where it's like you just kind of like like tell people like that you're like you don't know what happened and like leave it because yeah. like, there's nothing to prove and then you have uh let's say a high you don't profile. think you could have possibly this person could i mean this is a specific they, they, scenario they, i don't want to like make mm -hmm. it too specific to them but i'm just saying in a scenario where something like this might happen there is like and I know it's hard. I'm not saying that it's not like insanely hard to think of going through that experience and then having to go through her experience the next level of that in order to hold somebody accountable which isn't easy um but there are processes in this country we have law and order so i mean you could you know you could go to the police file a report um you know i i've never been through that so i mean i've seen on uh tv where they do things like rape kits and stuff like that svu yeah, style which, which, maybe which, which, stuff, which maybe uh, we we should have went since i don't know man 16 yeah. you, that's kind of uh, yeah no that, of like, course well but the thing I is mean, this is also I don't want to sound cruel here, but, but this is but this is also reality. Not yeah. everybody gets justice, and that's for a ton yeah. of reasons. That's and, because, and, go ahead, yeah. No, right. so what, what like, I was going to so say. So, what is, are the circumstances in that situation? Was she partying with a bunch of dudes? We probably like, don't, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to get yeah, detailed. Yeah, we don't like, need to. That's like like, like something was slipped. I mean, she, was, like, just... she was passed out on on a couch in the front room, and then the first dude like, walked up and was like, and, and it looked like everything was like consensual. But then multiple people started going to that room and leaving that room. And again, then she like remained like in like hmm. same state. So it's like, so it's like, like she was on like, drugs. Yeah. Like it's okay. So then, yeah. So, that's, that's, but but that's then, then a high profile case to Sean Watson's case, right? Okay. Yeah. You have people that immediately, well, you know, if you can't prove What's it in court, his name? I love if, that. if, yeah, if you better. can't prove it in yeah, court, better, then it better. didn't happen. And it's like, how can you prove something like this in court? You know, well, well, what you're it, saying is so, true with the multiple people in and out rooms and all that stuff. Then, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, and she's on drugs. Yeah, again, thing. like it, she's on yeah. drugs. And I mean, assuming everybody was the same age, that in those parties could 
possibly come into question? Were there adults that could possibly be responsible for providing right. drugs or even taking part in what you're just talking about? Um, so I think there's a lot that goes into that. I think any way that you would slice that, that would be um, great what you're talking about. Very messy. Um, even if she consented to it, honestly, it would still be that because she was under the influence. Um, yeah. So, yeah, which, yeah. and then, like I said, I'm well, honestly, unfor unfortunately, I'm. Sounds like there's a shit ton of witnesses. Um, yeah, but again, it's again I mean, who, you get subpoenaed to testify. Who, who is he's he's really going to send them like, yeah, we were all drinking, smoking, and doing this, and this I is know. what you saw. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like again, it's fucked up. It's, fucked up. Like, it's, again, it's, it's, fucked up. it's yeah. shit that you kind of like something. Uh, it's a sad thing. Yeah. But I, I just think that's kind of like the gruesome reality is like people do have to be. That's one thing you have to be brave enough to come forward with a. Mm -hmm. accusation gotcha. and i know that's crazy hard and i some people if, if it's not for you that's not for you but i'm not saying you have to understand why you then don't get justice but that's you're kind of playing a part in it in that way as far as like, i i understand yeah, where, like, where i was wrong here no. oh no no, 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 no and, and i think but no, i think generally like i said i think we pretty much agree it's just like and we're just we're, we're we're being empathetic to the fact that like i do get that even just getting the right thing to happen is hard you know what I mean? That's fucked up. It usually is harder than just letting the wrong thing slide. Like, just go home and have a miserable rest of your life dwelling on this thing that happened to you because it's, I guess, kind of easier. You know what I yeah. mean? Than taking yeah, the no, that it's, action. It's fucked. Yeah, it's fucked up. Um, so, yeah, I think, though, on that, generally, I think we did have some general common yeah. ground. I think another day, really we don't have stuff to get into, well, another day where we don't have stuff to get into, I think maybe like hammering down on like where maybe we believe life starts and stuff is an interesting conversation that yeah. I, I don't think that we have time to get into on the back of that but um you know yeah i think i think it's a good conversation thank you for paul shared that video so i appreciate that man putting that oh, yeah. on that. Right, you're welcome uh let's Always go good for some hillary content huh paul yeah. well, algorithm baby. Baby. Hillary. Hillary. <laughs> uh, so james Bates said when are you running for deuce so probably I think I'm going to run 2028. I'm going to run as a uh, oh, independent. Man, that's wild. Yeah, he's going to run. Uh, he's going to run the as a nationalist. Will run gonna, the country. <laughs> he's going to run as a nationalist uh, separatist. <laughs> no, I'm going to oh. run uh, independent under the Green Tea Party. The Green like Tea my Party. Ancestors. <laughs> like your ancestors. Uh, so let's see what else we got. Looking like a lawyer. Uh, and then. Oh, okay, more videos coming through the thing. Uh, baby and Paul, uh, when are you guys <laughs> in for office after? Yeah, this? let me clean up the mess yeah. first. Yeah, we got to come in behind him. I see how it is. <laughs> I, I got to clean up the mess crazy. first. I got to come in with yeah. the street sweeper. Yeah, this is the guy that needs to. I guess you're. I guess you're draining the swamp. You know what I mean? Oh, brother, drain, brother. Oh, the, I, I'm not <laughs> I gonna go that. there because they're gonna shut this bitch down if I say what I'm gonna say. But yeah, yeah the no, swamp, Paul, please. Well, don't get it shut down any more than they already have shut it down. To be brother, honest, it's gonna look like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> nice sandy beaches. I love it. There is a big ass swamp in the middle of the state, but that's fine. Yeah, uh, sorry, we're about to put some dirt in that motherfucker here soon. We need, we need some more houses to build. Happy days. Yeah, no, definitely. We are kind of running Hopefully low on we real can estate. kill some of the snakes because that that's just getting out of hand down there, boy. That's just the problem where we're at, man. To be honest with you, I haven't had too too yeah, much of a problem at my house, but I've seen other people like in the you know how you have the little apps that tell you what's going on in the neighborhood. People are bitching. Oh, yeah. you getting them? You getting the big old boas down there? Uh, I don't know. Kind of, they said they were poisonous. Actually, I was like, "Damn, let me not go outside." Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't that's that. even worse. I'd rather get bit by a boa and I can shoot it. I don't think boas don't bite like that, right? Don't they? They like wrap you up and try to suck oh, they, you. They, they, they they bite you and they. Hey, okay, okay. Because they yeah, they want to yeah. get the grip. Yeah, they're they not poisonous. Get, yeah, they gonna get that grip first. Once they get that grip, yeah. then they go release and they just gonna squeeze. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, break your fucking arm off. Yeah, um, no, citizen app. I don't think it's a citizen app. I don't think so. Um, but I have seen the citizen app wild stuff when I was visiting Indianapolis and they were like, guy driving down the highway with a sh his shirt off, <laughs> looking, standing on his motorcycle. Oh, crazy. Yeah. crazy. The, the next yeah, door app, I think it's what it's called. Uh, oh yeah. That, next door, yeah. Right, right. that sounds right. That sounds right. Next door. And, uh, yeah. I get some crazy <laughs> stuff over here too. Cause I'm over here by all the reserve land and stuff, you know? So. Oh, where the Indians yeah, we'll uh, have like where we gators eating oh. people's dolls. Yeah, Native Americans. <laughs> no. I apologize. Um, what uh, there's hey, what, what what do you think about this the situation? Okay, because what what about a situation where a woman is sleeping with her boyfriend is consensual, mm -hmm. but she doesn't consent in like to bust him, the nuts. Yeah, him impregnating her. Yeah, 
Okay, how does... See, I see, that... I see that, and this is where I think we're getting into silly conversations here. But, but that happens, that is, though. Like, it's not silly if it happens. <laughs> like, like, that, is, that, that is someone's real <laughs> real life situation. Oh, guys, most of us are born. Oh, hey, we're actually, I was an accident. Okay, sure, I was definitely an accident. I've told my dad all the time. I know that. The criminal system should not have to waste money on cases like that. Is all I'm saying. What do you mean waste? But that is someone's real life, bro. Like, 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 if something is something she's life. She's laid down and opened her legs, brother. Come it's on, that's not. Come on, dude. That's it's, fucking it's insane. You know, you, you should know what that person's going to do ahead of time. You should have. You you should have sleep with your man. Like, like, that's wild. I mean, did you make sure he had a rubber on? I mean, what did you think was going to happen? I mean, I, he, he he said, trust me, baby, I'll pull out. And then he just yeah, said, well, not. Well, you trusted him. And you trusted I don't want to have a baby with you. Well, you what are you doing? Yeah. And then, you know, what, this are, are you going to pay for that kid's food stamps? I don't think you're going to complain about it. Listen, no, the right? government's going to pay for that kid's food stamps. But what I'm saying is, is she shouldn't have laid down with him and trusted him to not bust an under. Oh, my that's God, dude, problem. what a perfect world. It's but not, like, no, like, the I guess, world's like, not like, perfect. Well, that's the problem. That's but, my point. No, but, the world's not okay, perfect. No, but that's not your point because because then you would have you would have avenues and safeguards for the no, imperfections no, 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 no. Because that people happen in the world have to have because responsibility that are people's real life. Over their decisions. Oh my god! They need what do you to have mean responsibility, responsibility for the decisions? See, see, this is your Old Testament on New World. Okay. The, the, it's that, that new world. That, you want people. That's where it's at, okay? The government well, is not going to protect you. Fucking back in eighteen twenty six here. The, the 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 government can't protect you from yourself. I, I don't know where, where you think that that. But, but that's not protect, that's protecting you from other people, people who impregnate you without your permission. Paul, she had sex. <laughs> that's see, that's she that, that's had sex. So, like, so so because someone has sex with you, that gives you the right to impregnate them. No, it means you have the possibility of getting pregnant but, unless you have the partner that knows what he's doing. I, I mean, I don't understand. Like, what, what's the issue with that? No, no. Yeah, you. Back up. Yeah. yeah. This is Zab's voodoo. Better. Perfect. Perfection. Those voodoo chips are fantastic. Yeah, as I was saying, Paul, before you try to really a, a, a lot of seasoning on the bitches. Listen, it's okay. You, you're, you're trying to protect oh, them. On my last bag, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, you want to protect, last bag. You protect people. No, bro. She people. literally laid down and fucking got her back blown out. She doesn't deserve that's the wow. From the government. What are we talking about? You know, and and and, not, and that you know shows what the government gives you for protection. That's it's probably not, not perception most of the time. It's probably it was probably a very it was yeah. probably. A disappointing time for her. Unless you know? it was immaculate conception, she just, needs to go ahead and handle that. I don't know. What, what was saying. your answer, by the way? So, if somebody ends up, if people have intercourse, does that give them the right to impregnate? I wonder. Do so. What was your answer to that? I'm curious. That was a good question. Listen, girl, you gotta figure that out. I mean, oh, you gotta figure that out. You should have strapped up. You ain't making a step up. I don't know what you're doing. Family, baby. I'm on the way. You know? I, my oh. bad for bringing it back. My bad. That's great. That was great. Thank my you. Bad. I'm just saying, listen, if you're. I think it's actually to, a worthwhile discussion either way because what the responsibility do does the woman have to being on some kind of like contraception that can prevent that? So, she I mean, have a I have a health health you, have, you have government officials trying to ban those contraceptives. As long as it's available, though. Hey, you have but a it's way available now? Is that, hey. Why is the responsibility of that on the man to And, and, and there's out? different health. I guess, like, yeah, he gets no right. say in the baby, though. He gets no say if the baby lives or dies or whatever goes on with the baby. He doesn't have to carry it. Uh, and, and, again, again, we, we so can get into we, we can get into that the moment the baby's born, there's a mandatory DNA test. And whoever that father that is, is not his responsibility not to get pregnant. Child, the baby has to pay child support immediately. Yeah. Then, then fine. It's not up, his responsibility if she get pregnant. If she get oh, pregnant, she needs go. to handle business. What, what, what saying, a black man! Right. If you're gonna say that, then why is it his responsibility if she get pregnant? It's not his. Yeah. Okay. If he gets no Men say. Rule the what world. goes on with the baby. Well, that was a good born. conversation. Let's go ahead. Let's move forward because we got some other stuff to get into. So I want to make sure we're able to move forward. Let's get into this this J Cole Drizzy sex tape that just came out. Yeah, sure. We can definitely Crazy get into that. In. Um, that's one of the things that I definitely want to get into towards the top. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, Kendrick Lamar and Drake, they've been going back and forth somewhat. So we had the like that uh verse, the introduction to the whole thing. Kendrick Lamar sending shots on the future album, uh, future of Metro Boomin. And uh Drake responded through and it was leaked. So I'm, I'm actually curious how you guys feel about that. 
process of releasing the, out, the song. Um, but it was leaked. Uh, and I'm curious to see how you guys felt about the diss. I loved it. Uh, I loved guys, it. guys, go follow Sit in Politic on Twitter. Paul B. Balcom on Twitter. Yep. Um, and Deuce Andretti on Twitter. Go follow all of us on Spell Twitter because we were all, yeah, we were all going in on this uh, subject for sure. And um, like I said, some of this kind of stuff I did kind of, I talked about on there a lot yeah. and argued with some people. So, uh, yeah, for me, I really think that Drake did his thing. I think people that are downplaying it, it for me, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Uh, if you're a hip hop fan, I get people like, not people. caring about it. I get not caring about it if you don't give a shit about hip hop. But if you care about hip hop, it's such a dope moment for one. It, it highlights that competitive aspect. Um, it really harkens back to like the roots of the art form in general. Uh, and then also, I think it's quality. You know, I mean, it it might even be better than back to back. I want to go back and listen to back to back again. And Deuce made an interesting point last week, and I I listened to these songs uh, again after he said that. I don't know if I agree with this one. His, he said that charged up the disc to Meek Mill before back to back was actually better. I I do agree that char- so I like charged up a lot, and I think that that's something that Drake, like a lot of people, thought that was whack for some reason when it first came out. Um, and then back to back really hit really hard for some reason. So this though I think was more the push ups track was more in the spirit of back to back though, where it's more energetic. Um, the beat was reminded me of back to back a lot, kind of like frenetic kind of pace to the beat um in the lyrics also he was just shit talking but yeah the, i want to get how you guys the, about this it. was more insulting like like he like he was like the back to back no no yeah yeah stuff, I, I, I don't I know like this was, he was saying pussies and stuff but the 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 give me 50 push-ups thing is like it's just fucking hilarious uh, well do you know the the thought behind that i went deep on this so i kind of yeah, know kinda like what he's getting at with most of the lyrics um so when he's saying uh Top told me he says something like Top uh, told you drop and give him give him fifty. He's saying because he was signed to Top Dog, so I guess he's saying that the splits that they had. That's why he also says that your split yeah. uh, split your pants or whatever the fuck he says, rip your pants. Um, he's saying like when drops tell uh, Top's telling you to drop some music and give him fifty percent of it is actually oh. like the like deeper meaning Dang. behind that. So yeah, 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 um, it was beautiful. At first, I thought he was just making fun of the fucking viral video of of. Kendrick Lamar doing a bunch of push-ups. Yeah, me too, yeah. But I thought he was just poking fun of that. But yeah, when I dug deeper on it, that's that's what I was oh, getting. Shit. And the way that he flipped that too, by the way, because he flipped that hook so many times. That was another one of the awesome parts of the fucking disc was, you know, he has that drop and give me 50. That's the hook. So then there's several times where he's like, uh, you know, you got me out here acting like I'm 50. Yeah, And I then he turns that. around and then, and, then he, and then he did this fucking Rick Ross who had a beef with 50 Cent uh-huh. and just goes in on right after that. He says, he says something like, you got me out here like like I'm 50, something about you're going to cuff, he's going to cuff him like I'm Ricky or some shit like that. Yeah. So bringing back the Officer Ricky shit that 50 yep. Cent started back in the day. The, the, he's a CO. Um, and yeah, then, yeah. Oh, clever, clever little bitch. Ricky oh, uh, pit, um, pit squeak to, but his to bars entry. are just kind of like uh, <laughs> his bars are just entry, you know, it kind of like that. But it that's very part to of the point, but though, the thing that, is, that's, that's part of the beauty of yeah. it is that you can you get it. message, you know, anybody what I mean? can listen to it. Anybody that's why people say, it. and that's why people, and he even talks about like the captions on his in his music where people take them and use them as captions for fucking pictures and shit. It's like that's real because it is something that's kind of it's. One, if this is a good part, is that it it really illustrates whatever he's trying to say. He's really it just shows you how. Words. But then how, it is simple, uh, so people get it. It doesn't go over their heads. But even well, some that, of it—that's a big problem with the with the community, though. Community. You didn't get it the first that's time. The problem with the community, it. though, just dumbing it down for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just watering. No, but it I'm down. saying he doesn't really dumb it down because I mean, there's 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 like entendres to all the shit he's saying anyways like i just said paul listened to it probably i don't know how many times i listened to it a shit ton. several times yeah i listened to it a shit ton and there's still things i didn't get that at first that's actually i told paul because i was like oh at first i didn't get it i thought it was just talking about the actual push-up video i got a lot of it i got a lot of it the first time i felt like it was very savant the first first time too i I felt like like it was very vanilla um no for a drake disc it was good i mean i feel like charged up was better but um, because here's the thing about the Drake. Right? Be negative. This is why I like the charged up one is because when yeah. he was dissing Meek Mill, he was saying shit that you actually had to like know happened or situations that were going on for you yeah. to even really process the diss. To where I feel like this one, it was kind of like you didn't give us anything that wasn't kind of out there already, which is usually what's great about Drake because this is how he killed Pusha. 
is yeah. okay, you're gonna come out with my son being born. It's okay. Well, I'm gonna come out with you getting fucked in the ass. Yeah, you he ain't killed Push, though. Push actually killed him. For Push did kill him. Push killed him slowly. Four people. But in, in I tried to give Drake, Drake a little prop there, but you know. What yeah, I'm yeah. Saying? Right. You yeah that's him. that's actually the one beef I would say that he actually lost that I can think of because I think he got the better of me. I think a tie. I think it's a tie. In what? Push a team. I think push it. Yeah, I think it was a tie. And that's how you feel. I give I mean, a slight edge to push it. Though. slight edge. Just yeah, yeah, push it had two fire. The Adonis one where he talked. That's the one yeah. that everybody remembers the sun thing. But then before that, he had a song called Infrared, which yeah. is fire. And he was going yeah, crazy. And he's talk, he, he was talking about like, yeah. uh, 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 he was talking about fucking um, baby Birdman and all like all of them. Yeah, all, yeah he was going out there next. He was, he was going yeah, he's talking about fucking Lil Wayne, me and broken shit. But. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Um, so yeah, yeah that he, was great, but... he was releasing information we didn't know though. Birdman on uh, uh, Lowane, all that money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he said. Well, he, and he said uh, uh, he he said something like, uh, uh, and that's well, I don't want to get too much into Pusha T, but he fucking killed Drake on that shit. He, he said uh, uh, something about like basically because Rick Ross dissed Baby Birdman, and people were cool with it, and he dissed Baby a long time ago. So one of the bars they has in there, he says like, uh, um, "Now it's cool to diss Baby." Motherfuckers are looking at me crazy, like I really killed a baby. <laughs> and uh, then he then he says something like, "Raw sees what I see when you see Wayne on tour. You know, a golden platinum rapper that won't retire." Does it all the key goes crazy? Because he has no yeah. money. Because he has no money. He has to keep working. Man. So um, which would be Birdman's doing? Be Birdman for sure because he's taking but, that he's taking that crazy crazy split that different that that fucking fuck that's 50. why. <laughs> that's why fucking uh, Lil Wayne went with uh, Jay Z. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. They've had like several times where they've had issues on uh, throughout Wayne's career, and there's been word that he might leave, and then he ended up not. But then you had the free Weezy shit. I don't know if you remember that, but that was like, well, no, he like sold his he sold his contract. Remember in the law the lawsuit dispute, what happened was no, that was after over. though. That was after. Yeah, I'm exactly saying like fact. they had the dispute before, and then I'm I'm asking like the he had like Lil Wayne literally the free had Weezy a shit. I Weezy campaign. Yeah, yeah, and he had I an album that. called Free Weezy, and the whole fucking thing like and he yeah. did go kind of crazy at the end of every song. It was basically like something about him basically let me off my contract. Yeah. Um, but but I, but I like I like how Drake basically opened it with like okay. Yeah. Your yes, future, yes, right. like like I basically gave you your first hit. Hey, you know, um, yeah. what, what, whatever. Call it, call, Turn call, on call, the uh, no, Telling uh, Kendrick, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna jack shit. How are you gonna stop me with those small ass feet, size seven shoe? Yeah. Right. Then then told Metro just to go make drums. Yeah. Which was hilarious. Yeah. I do like and how he, with the rig, and it was just like I do like how he handles Metro. Like, bro, yeah. he just hit all of them just, just very them. casually, yeah, yeah. too. I, I feel like the other dishes were kind of pussy, but the one with Metro with the drummer shit, I think that is hilarious. Like, he'd be trying Metro like a little bit. I, I do yeah, think that was clever. that was good. I think a lot of the Rick Ross shit was pretty, pretty good. Uh, like, I mean, Rick Ross shit was clever. And then, like I said, he flipped the 50 thing again. He said, Are you making me act like I'm 50, Officer Ricky shit. And then he turned it around again. He said, I can't believe this motherfucker's jumping in. He's turning 50. <laughs> uh, so I was like, which is fucking no, hilarious. No, no, it was, it was how pokey it is. And also, by the way, when you're saying it's simple, Sorry. there's a there's a cleverness to that to where it doesn't you're not going over your audience's head you know what i mean so like yeah. you're right everybody can hear this it's like if you make fun of if you make fun of rick ross for being fat you know that was like the common thing it's like yeah. everybody can look at him and see that it's like, like so it's like like, like it's, ross calling him white boy exactly it's, it's like, a it's a physical thing so it's like that's why on. it's like something that people can immediately just see and just laugh at and relate to or whatever um no matter whether if it's accurate or not so um but yeah, so either way, so with that, I really appreciate that he got it, Rick Ross, um, in, in this disc. And I hope that we actually see it get more focused. I hope this is really the the track where we get him saying, like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And then we get a Kendrick response, and then we get a, I'm coming at Kendrick directly, and now we're in a... I, I hope I get a more heavy detailed, intricate, like, he actually put some effort into the disc, you know what I'm saying? Bro, like, he put effort into this. Please stop. No, he bro. didn't. He bro, fucking bro, leaked bro, it. Bro. First off, he wasn't even. And here's my point, right? All yeah. these motherfuckers getting their shit back. leaked. Yeah, leaked. Well, why do you think he leaked it? Or whoever? Well, here's my it. thing. Here's the here's the 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 psyops with the whole leaking shit, right? If you leak it and it's trash. You can deny it because you never leaked it and it wasn't ready and that's not your shit. It's AI, right? Oh, by the way, which people are saying about Kendrick Lamar. I don't know if you saw that. Exactly. Okay, so I know this is what I'm saying because I'm saying all of them are being a pussy because every everyone but J. Cole, bitch ass, who sat there and apologized. Yeah, so now he's in the bitch ass That's category. That's actually an interesting too. point. Yeah, I, have, I, did you hear the alleged uh, Kendrick Lamar response? 
Okay, so there's one that came out, and then uh, it wasn't, like, really well-received, and it wasn't long either. It was, like, when it first came out, people were saying, like, this is the first two minutes of a five-minute diss track. Um, and, it, like I said, it wasn't well-received. And then it ended up coming out today. People were saying, oh, it's AI. It's not actually uh, Kendrick Lamar. So this I'm like, is my oh, point, because same. then you can just that's plausibly that's deny the garbage-ass music this you is put the, out. This is the times. This is the times. That's true. Yeah, but, you can deny the music you put that you put out. It's garbage. If you put out a garbage shit that wasn't up to par, yeah, this would be like, oh, it wasn't me. It was a fucking robot. Yeah. No, I thought, it wasn't a fucking see, robot. I, I had thought it was somebody that had, like, maybe he was hesitant to release it for whatever reason, and somebody had a copy of it, and they just let that bitch go. Yeah, like, maybe he go. was, like, sitting around, because Kendrick really hadn't went out crazy to be honest because the like that verse is like that's not super Flight that's work. why I'm still, that's why Flight right work. now in my opinion drake is in the lead there's no question yeah. he's given an entire song response kendrick lamar gave like a probably 30 second verse this and which they was had this really nigga light. j cole apologizing before yeah, which was really light though by the way which was really light because bro like he didn't really get into any deep shit it's like oh yeah. I, it's top it's not top three it's just me okay well bro like that's like Jake Cole level dissing where it's like you're trying to be nice while you're dissing. Well, that's how I kind of Drake said fuck you. He said well, fuck you. Like, well, you had Jake Cole fucking drop out before this track was even dropped, yeah. man. But dropped like, the diss track and then got pussy wet. It like hold on, cuz. That is true. Well, I did. At least get a response, bitch. Yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. But I but, feel but, that, but but like with Kendrick and Rick Ross on how it feels like it was almost like like a normal song Let's with not talk some, about Rick Ross in this conversation. with some disses in it. Who are you talking about? Like, 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 like Rick Ross's diss, diss to Drake, Drake. and then Kendrick's so like, like, like there. verse. It wasn't all des like designated as like a fucking true diss. Like Drake, there wasn't anything in that song that Thanks wasn't there. a diss. It was just a diss. Drake, Drake was just every bar was just him dissing someone or something about. You're it. saying Drake's was. Yeah, Drake. Well, was. but then by the way, which we should commend him on because this is what he said in the past with uh, Meek Mill with back to back. He he dissed him on like basically I'll make a song and make it a hit type shit. This is still catchy though. He did. Very I agree catchy. with you. He was vicious, but he, like with the with the hook even the drop give me fifty like that was still like kind of kind of like uh, catchy, but then it actually still had a really it was still beef related you know yeah I mean? it's, it's still so, disrespectful so like like like, like i fuck with it and it like, like my, it was my, cute. my my takeaway was almost like all right well, you guys already said enough all right so, something physical has to go off at this point oh sure, so, so, some hands need to get thrown rick ross drake in the boxing ring let's see this is what you're thinking? hey listen oh, bro you can't keep there, some insult Hey, listen. Rappies, man. All ones black on black fire. Hey, 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 listen, Rick Ross isn't even talking about rapping. He's talking about, you know, yeah, man, if, if, man, I, I'm going to snatch your chain. I'm going to stomp you this. Listen, you're you're going to get Ross shot. Don't you're going to be in the conversation. Listen, bro, he's trying to talk all this big gangster like, 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 like he's a fucking pit boss down, down there in Miami. Yeah. And it's like, no. Yeah. We're, okay? so it might with, be. Might be, might be. Yeah, he might knows, be. Who knows? I take that back. But We're the, close enough. I take that back. Yeah, but the Rick Ross thing is interesting. Um, I do think that there's something really, and I got into this on Twitter, so you might say it, but uh, I think it's really, really, there's something really pussy about what him and ASAP Rocky did, where it's like you, they allegedly have problems with Drake this entire time, and they wait for Kendrick Lamar to come out and say <laughs> something, which that's been pretty much like a like like we were saying on a previous pod, where it's like that's been kind of a cold war. They've been sending shots that were not that veiled back and forth to each mm -hmm. other, but not to the point where they're really in like full on diss mode. Right. So. So Kendrick decides to really open that door by making by taking a really blatant shot. And then now you have this motherfucker Rick Ross. And this is before Drake dissed him. So he just he dissed Drake back after he dissed him. But before that, he already co-signed the Kendrick Lamar diss. He was driving down whatever yeah, fucking road, yeah. playing it, laughing. It's like, bro, this is a motherfucker that you actually did mad music with and actually like were really successful. Bro, right I don't think it's pussy for publicly, it. And publicly, you make no issue of to this point. But if you have but, an issue, have an issue. You don't have to go on the back of another man to make your issue be known. It's but crazy. that's been Rick Ross's MO. Look at what he, him and Ace Hood. He he was supposed to be big brother to Ace Hood. Cala, whatever that beef was, Rick Ross completely cut Ace Hood off. Per what well, Ace no, Hood's no, 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 and, no, no. and then Ace they Hood. blackballed him on all on all south on all no, south. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. Okay, what happened? I was a big Ace Hood fan. Ace Hood talks about that shit too. He, he so Ace Hood was the type of dude that got rich, got went broke, got rich, went broke, right? Um, he was Ace Hood is signed to DJ Khaled. With, when with Khaled best. and Ace Hood went through their contract, you know what I'm saying, dispute or whatever, you know what I'm saying. Um you know, Rick Ross took Cal outside, but Rick Ross always takes Cal outside. He takes Cal outside in the Birdman beef. He took Cal outside in, in every every beef Cal gets in. That's just what he does. You know, just like 
you know, like that's the one thing about Rick Ross. When he has homeboys that have a beef with somebody, he gets involved. That's the type, that's who he is. You know, he's going to be the front line. I'm the Mr. Petty because I'm the 40, 60 million dollar man, not signed to any label, and I can do whatever I want. You know what I mean? I can go fucking fuck with my cattle, he, go ride my horses. So, you know. okay. So then why didn't he get involved with the French Montana shit before? Oh. Huh. With French Montana? Yeah. Well, that's because that's the reason. Is he they signed to him still? That's why. Well, no, I'm saying. Okay, so he, he said he said that's that in his the, reason. In the disc, yeah, yeah, that's his reason for having an issue with Drake. He said that he sent a cease and desist to, yeah. to French Montana for their Splash Brothers song that they had together, which has Rick Ross on it. So when was that? How long ago was that? Oh, brother, yeah, two, three years ago. I mean, how time works. Yeah, that song is old. Years. Yeah. So let's check out. Yeah, so, yeah. 2024. But you know what? They could have yeah. been found yeah. in a while time, time, because because I remember French Montana flexing out on Instagram and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think Rick Ross would probably be oh, great behind the scenes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, the album came out in 2024. I think Splash yeah. Brothers might be a little bit older. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, I think he probably was beefing with Drake behind the scenes more than likely. Drake's an aftermath in the song. Do you think that the uh, Drake, Fifty, and Eminem's going to jump on this now? No, no, because I think that was his. Uh, yeah, I think the reason he said aftermath <laughs> is because I think the inner scope aftermath is like a subsidiary to. Interscope, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. So I think that was just him, like yeah, extra. they all got the same balls. They ain't gonna fight. He's like extra. He's doubling down Jimmy? on the what he's the like metaphor he's trying to paint with that. So, um, uh, but yeah. So with the Drake shit, for me, I I was personally satisfied with the first uh with the first track. I, like I said, I'd like to see based off what Kendrick says, him being like, in, ra- obviously, regardless of what Kendrick says, I think Drake should respond, um, and they should keep it. Keep it going Keep for it a little going bit. For at rap, least for, bro. At yeah, least summer coming up. At least full on. Yeah, let J. Cole's bitch ass just, watch from the sidelines. Exactly. Exactly. No, but we should at least get um because this first disc, although I liked it, it, I wouldn't say that it was that that focused on Kendrick Lamar. He had a lot of people he got to. I mean, like the weekend, like Metro yeah. Boom and Future. Um, so, so like did Drake yeah. shoot shots at them, or did they shoot shots at him first? Because it seems to me like it's tough he to say. He sprayed a lot of niggas on this track. It's tough to say. I would say so. They took he the said first twenty v one. They they took the bl- first blatant shot because uh, the like th- and also Kendrick Lamar. I feel like it's because he also had the smoking on your fucking top five shit that he had in the um, Range Brother song with. You remember where he? It's not how the actual beat goes, but before that, he's just like he's saying, "I'm smoking on top five tonight." Smoking on the top five tonight, over and over again. So that's obviously supposed to be a reference to like Drake, but it's been very veiled. Like I said, really not getting into specifics. What happened to Good big, Spirit, brother? What happened but the big spirit? three conversation is not something that's that um, up for debate. Like people pretty much say that it's Drake and Kendrick and uh, J. Cole that have been in that. So when he makes that statement, it's much more definitive. Where top five is like, okay, that's subjective. He's not really being that clear. Everybody has a different top five. When he says the big three thing, he is referencing blatantly something. Yes. Uh, I think Drake has a big three bar too. Bro. Oh yeah, he did he, it in this. He, he, okay, yeah, he said sure. he said something about like 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 he's no, not I'm saying like, like he okay. had a big three bar and then Kendrick Counterpunched it, and then Drake came back and count, came counterpunched yeah, it. Cole again. did. Cole, I thought Cole had the the bar. Well, maybe it was Cole. Yeah, maybe a first yeah. person shooter. Yeah, first person. Oh, first person shooter. Oh, first shooter, person shooter there. Yeah, name. that's what it that's is. That's when Kendrick comes back. Boom. And then in this, when when he says something about like 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 what's a prince to a king? That's my son. Oh yeah. So basically, like 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 use what Kendrick said about MJ versus Prince. I think that's an Adonis um, bar. Against him, and I was like, that was. Yeah. What do you think about that one? I think that's an Adonis Oops. bar right there, King Adonis. Ooh, ten shots well, at the sun. No, like. No, 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 no. That's Drake said that. He said to so you know how Kendrick he he said in his verse, oh, this is actually another pretty outright shot at Drake. So this is another example of that. But in the like that verse, he says something about uh Prince outliving Mike Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this song, Drake responded to that by saying, you know, what's what's a prince to a king? It's a son. Yeah. Basically calling him his son. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Then Kendrick, you're my he son. Was, yeah, he was stabbing, bro. Here, Trevor. Bro, he was like, anything you said. This is the thing, like, like, Kendrick, like, Kendrick gave back. him, like, some he light stabbed. work. Some light work. Yeah, he you did. That's saying? his fault. He, he, he kind of just threw him through, through. No, he, he shot. He threw a he shot out in the there. air. That was yeah, his problem, right? He shot. He shot, him, he shot, he shot, right? he shot at him. And we need nah, Kendrick to come back because listen, he wanted to see what the niggas wanted. He wanted to see if they wanted that smoke, huh? Bro, you Drake. Okay, okay. Well, Drake came back with, with fire. Did. Okay, and Drake. No, listen, Drake he brought back, back the, the gas. I Drake sat there and I'm like, oh my god! And then you get another another gas. So I need Kendrick to come with with some gas. He's gonna snap. Some straight up. I believe he will. I believe he's gonna go crazy. Kendrick can end the beef. 
Kendrick can end the beef if he wanted to with one wow. song. It's not going to end with that bullets, bro. No, no, no. What do you mean? Kendrick could literally come on there and just say some <laughs> crazy shit and end the whole beef. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Maybe filet I mignon. You know, put make Drake seem like a cuck on fucking Degrassi again. You know what I'm saying? I mean, watch like, out. That could, was a show right he there. He could embarrass him, and I'm sure. He, but I mean, just like everybody got embarrassed just now by Drake with this track. But Drake can. He's gonna. He has the pedigree to where he's gonna respond. That's not gonna. Like, bro, call kill him. him Pipsqueak. If he wants to keep, yeah. If he wants to keep on <laughs> participating in the beef, I think it'll pretty much you know continue to to last as long. I mean, as long as they want it to go really I yeah mean, but i'll remember the real. these dudes sweet. keep like doing this pussy shit and like leaking their songs so they can plausibly deny if it's garbage yeah that's the point you made i didn't that's i had speculation shit. a little bit yeah no, but that's not make, speculation that's weak shit bro it does make sense You're we don't know if the kendrick million shit dollar artist. Artist. If it was genuinely ai and they just came out afterwards and said oh well that's ai then there's nothing wrong with that well the direct is wasn't ai though great. No, no, he hasn't denied it. So, like, yeah, like he, well, he claimed, but, it. but that's what I'm saying. But, but if it's trash, you could be like, oh, bro, that wasn't me. That's kind of like, point. That's but, a good point. but, 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 it's, but it's kind of who Drake is, though. Again, like, like where he just like leaks shit. So I don't know if it just like plays on with like, like he if it's just him. a lot of shit too, bro. Yeah, I know, releases, but you don't yeah. leak. He releases shit. I, I bro, think, I think like back to back. Leaked. I think back to back got released. Got released on SoundCloud when it came out. If I'm remembering right, I could be wrong on that. I'm pretty sure it got. Which I mean is kind of leaking. You know what I mean? It's not on like a. Uh, main platform. Yes. Um, I wonder. He probably got paid for that. He's like, "Hey, I got a diss. I'm gonna drop it on your guys' platform." Right. I'm sure he got paid for that. Um, right now, Drake's winning. That's understand. That's you're outvoted you, right now. When you get older, you start to just like see that kind of weird shit with businesses. When before you were just like, "Oh, he just fucking leaked it. There was nothing else to it. It's all about the art." Yeah, in reality, it's like, yeah, I need fucking uh, three million dollars to drop <laughs> yeah, this shit bro. on the platform. Like, <laughs> you also go to fucking, right. <laughs> right. Oh, I'll drop it on Twitter if you pay me. Okay, boom. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. See what Elon's coming to the table with. Elon's like, okay, I can drive all those Drake fans here and all these Kendrick fans. Okay, perfect. So, so where did Rick Ross since. release his that that Pips YouTube page? No, I please, Rick Ross needs to oh, just yeah, go sit down in the corner. I, that's where I heard it. So probably the same thing, to be honest. Right. Yeah. So, so exactly. So they all kind of just yeah did it old school for us, bro. Did it world like like uh well, but world star? You can get it on iTunes. It, it's everywhere now. It is ever his shit is on iTunes now. He had that the you know the white guy that looks like Drake like yeah. picture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like viral. He used that yeah. as the cover. So, yeah. Yeah. You can that, usually get that, anything on iTunes. Me, bro. Why boy? Why boy? Why boy? Now, can I? I might take a little offense to him saying that. Yeah, maybe it was just it struck a chord with you, brother. But it was like about, yeah. Rick Ross? the, guy, the guy's yeah. mixed. Man. Did, you, did you hear his track? No, Rick Ross is literally, bro. No, because he's a goofy, bro. Why am I going to listen to that shit? It's a waste of my time. Like, he does not deserve to be in this rap beef. I, I'm not trying to hate on him because yeah. it's a Florida boy. But the thing is, it's like, bro, like, there's levels to this shit. And my nigga, you sat down for the last, like, three or four years without putting out barely any music. Like, I, I don't want to hear from you. I'm sorry. Right like, you're, you're, you're upset that fucking French Montana got made fun of? Well, he's a grown-ass man, brother. Like, how about you let him defend himself? Yeah, let okay? him come out defend himself, but he won't. Listen, uh, because Frank Montana is going to handle that a different way. I'm not going to speak it on here, but he would handle that a different way, and that's okay. I'm speaking not opposed to that either. But so, those are going to get dirty. Speaking of support, no got mob rappers. Ties. Okay, I got to find this. But holy shit, brother, you're going way back. Well, I sent it and nobody responded. Yeah. So listen, Bing. our our boy Plies got, re- got. Listen, he he needs to he needs a lawsuit coming out. This is another motherfucker. Listen, How are you making this conversation about Plies? Hey, right listen, now? listen, because because he brought Florida. So Glorilla and Megan Thee Stallion released a song, bro. They oh, yeah, I saw what they talking. ripped Plies, me and my goons, entire sound, bro. The entire melody. Are you talking about that new twerk song they got? Cause that bit busting. Want to be? I don't know. I don't know if you're twerk. I don't know if you're twerking yeah, to, twerking it. to it. But cool, but man. when I first heard it, because nah, there's a light, nah. little positive. Like, like, like I start bobbing. I'm like, and then I hear it. Her come on, I'm like this is not Plies. Oh, and I'm like, oh, oh, this it, bitch though. took me and my goons. So I went to me and my goons and listened to it. I was like, yep, that is 100%. <laughs> Stand on that, brother. <laughs> that is 100%. <laughs> yeah, that was made as uh, the picture. I mean, just, me and my goons is very interesting. They sample yeah. that. That's a, well, the thing is, he probably doesn't. I mean, I'm, I don't know. We'd have to look into it, but he might not own it. I'm sure. They oh, I don't know. Problems. I looked at who wrote yeah, what song. Who wrote song and none of those names matched. What about the beat? No, he don't own that shit. Yeah, just because he wrote it definitely it, does not mean he, 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 it. he was his own studio, wasn't he? Back no, then? he was signed at that point, bro. Well, yeah, when he dropped sure. his first album, he was first signed, album. bro. Yeah, the uh, but just to kind of tie this up, um, going forward, I don't know. I mean, it kind of seems like we're on the same page, except Deuce, he's saying that that was absolute <laughs> bullshit. But we want to see me and Paul, we want to see whatever Kendrick's gonna say back, yeah, and uh, take it from there. I think that was we the Megan song, man. 
You said what? Well, I thought y'all was playing the Megan song, man. I want to hear it. I, I don't know if we can just play music. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we maybe towards the end. It just might take us down. Play a little 15 second snippet. You know what I'm saying? He's the guest. Could, could, could I play the first like three seconds just so you hear the, the beat? Uh, it, I mean, uh, but it's just because it's, it's going to be it's, it's going to be shitty quality because it's going to be over your phone to the mic. <laughs> so it's like if I had my phone to play it like it's that, fine, I would. Fine, but fine. Uh, it's all good, brother, no worries, brother. We uh, can look at yeah. it after. Plus, I mean, cool. do we really need to spend all that time on a fucking Meg the Stallion song? Well, she sucks. Fucking but bringing she, justice but, supplies. You know, uh, you know, supplies. My motherfucker writing off on the plug. Goddamn thief. Hey, uh, yeah, dude, you got hey, brother, don't do Meg like that. She's beautiful. <laughs> Lupe, by the way, also she, got, she has a man in prison right now. Before she's a little shrapnel on her foot. You know what I'm saying, like Iron Man. Yeah, she got a lip. Uh, but before I move on past this, I do want to say I thought this was interesting because Lupe came out and he said that Drake is a better rapper than Kendrick. Um, yeah, he said technically uh, Kendrick is a better, I want to say he said better skilled performer, I think is what he said. But he's he said as far as like lyricism and stuff like that, he said Drake's better wow. um, as a rapper. Yeah, hey, I just thought it was okay. Lupe. That's okay. So I definitely thought. Yeah, I like Lupe. Lupe that kick push is... nigga, but you know, whatever, bro. You had one. Hudson okay, one. you're hitting his one mainstream song, but the guy's a lyricist. Like, like, bro, I'm oh, a Lupe fan, awesome. bro. The Let me stop awesome. fucking bullshitting you. I've been a Lupe fan, <laughs> but what I'm saying hey, is... I'm sorry. You is, said it, so I took what you said. Yeah, we took it as you were not lying. Uh, <laughs> Deuce I'm here, brother. Him he's let's get in, drugs right now. Let's get into UFC real saying. quick because <laughs> I, I want to hear your opinion on this. Let's go ahead and cruise through some of these fights because we watched it together. You can go check out our stream if it's still up. It, I think I got an email about it, so it may or may not be up right now. But um, uh, YouTube. but yeah, UFC 300. You can go check us on uh, X with that, and also on um. YouTube for sure. And by the way, just so you know, on those fights, sometimes we'll do commentary. We'll do it. We'll kick it like this on a podcast and we'll watch the fights. We'll react to it. It was a good time and we'll get into all kinds of other stuff. So we did that with UFC 300 because it was the biggest, one of the biggest fight cards of all time. Uh, and what I want to ask you guys, do you guys think it delivered on that? Because that was the hype around it. They're saying the biggest card of all time. Do you guys um, think that it, card was fucking started? amazing? It was amazing. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, fucking woke up, I woke up thinking about that card and I was like, you know what? Now, obviously, like, you know, some fights weren't um, like up to, like Charles or Vera fight. That was kind of lame how that ended. You know, like the ref kind of not calling that a tap out when the motherfucker clearly was like limp, um, knocked out. Yeah, he was literally like, limp, bro. He he went limp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you could obviously tell when he snapped back into it. His fucking his whole body flopped like a fish. Yeah, um, he looked. He didn't look totally aware. But um, it's just crazy. That that was a great card, man. I mean, the, the you had what knockout finishes, Oliveira, no, not Oliveira, but you had uh, Holloway, uh, Gaethje, then you had Pierre. How he finished him up. I mean, I would have liked to see that, that final fight go a little longer. Yeah, you know? but the way it finished was. I mean, yeah. but can I really get mad at Pierre just putting that no. those fucking mittens on somebody? I, I really can't, you know. I, you put, I, put them Paul I don't want to skip over the. Yo, what's up, Iceberg Slam? I appreciate you, the Fresh Out Pod. Go check them out, guys. I've told you about them before. Sorry. Great podcast Sorry. for hip hop. We just got out of the uh, J Cole and um, uh, Drake and and Kendrick conversation. So well, it wasn't really um, J Cole in there anymore, but you know, yeah, it really was wasn't. I don't know why I said first. Drake body and the I don't boys. Know why I said first, it came to mind first. Uh, but here also, I want to go ahead and share this with you guys. This is the UFC card. So anybody that needs a reminder, I'm gonna put it on the screen. Yeah. Um, so, the Zhang Wei Li well, one was good. That was well, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what I was gonna say is I don't want that one to get skipped over. Like that, those two, uh, those two women fought, bro. That was a brawl. Yeah, yeah. Well, I lost money on that one, Paul, so I don't want to talk about that one too much. Oh, um, you know what? <laughs> Get her thing. I definitely lost money on this card. There's Bro, no Gate, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, I think we probably lost $400 this night. Uh, Gage, um, uh, he's, he's. Bo Nickel one was bullshit. I felt like that though. was kind of like. Yeah. I, I need Bo, him to fight someone that actually is going to fight back. Um, well, the Bo Nickel thing, uh, by the way, I want to get you guys. We talked about it a little bit on the pod. Um, or be on the re, uh, when we did the live reaction to this, but uh, it was kind of interesting to see him on the main card when you consider how stacked the prelims were. So, this Yuri that was a blow fest, yeah. Bro. They were throwing some this Yuri the Cal fight. Cater fight was good too. With uh, it was a good one, and I mean, by the way, either of these I think belong over Bo Nickel. This is you're talking about a fight where neither fighter is ranked, and both of these ranked the second ranked fighter. I'm not even upset I though. I mean, I guess I mean I'm not. I I wouldn't say it that. Made the, it made it the bro. prelims more exciting. It made me want to watch to, the prelims. You're trying to like treat me like an emotional bitch right was, now, bro. I'm not like, upset about it. You know, I'm just like, pointing <laughs> yeah. out. Was this the one where? Uh, no, but I'm just saying it was. It was cool to see these type of caliber fighters 
on mm-hmm. an early UFC card sure. because normally on the big cards like this, you get kind of bullshit prelim fights. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because mm-hmm. uh, not every amateur, like not amateur, but pro fighter on the UFC on the undercards is super talented or super exciting to watch. So it's like sure. when you get fireworks like well, Jerry on the on the on the prelim yeah. card, you're like, oh yeah, I'm definitely well, this watching gives, that shit. This gives a little bit more like emotional stakes because you know that this has you know like stakes. Like Yuri check in Serbia, this. brother. Look at that emotional. You are damn right. Look Yuri, at that, well, and Yuri winning this, he's probably going to go ahead and get a rematch against Pierre at some point. That shit had political implications, brother. <laughs> yeah, true. No, they had hostages. <laughs> they got traded back after nice. that fight. Uh, yeah, the Holly Holm. Oh, this is, yeah, this bitch right here, Kayla Harrison. She was. A yeah, bro. I'm so pissed, bro. If I'd have seen her fucking biceps before that fight, I would have never bet against her. Jesus. Well, and Christ. you really played yourself with this Diego Lopez fight. Remember when, he- bro? This Sadiq <laughs> Yusuf. I try to go with my brother from Ghana. This pussy let me down. <laughs> Nigeria, Nigeria, respectfully. Yeah, no, he's from oh, Ghana now because he lost like that. that is that how that goes? Yeah, I mean, this is the early prelims. They're still going crazy. Jessica and Draj, you got the Marciano man. I should have just bet the house on him, motherfucker. That's the thing. That's probably what we should have all done. I won on the first on fucking four fight. fights, bro. That's the bullshit. Oh, yeah. my fucking... Oh, no, my partner, no, I hit the first you. four. They honey dicked you, brother. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, they gave you hope, and then they took it away. Now, next uh, time, though, guys, tune in to the uh, live. We're going to go ahead and do uh, breakdowns and uh, yeah. pick, pick bets live with this shit. Definitely. This time. Actually we're looking at the people we're picking, not picking yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. blind. The Justin Gaethje fight, by the way, I don't want to just move on past that either. That was wild. <laughs> wow, that wow. actually here, this is cool. So their website here updates and gives you who got the fight of the night and performance bonuses. So um, got both. this fight. This fight got fight of the night, and Max Holloway got a performance uh, of the night bonus, and Yuri also got a performance of the yeah, night bonus. Which was, um, was, was, the way he was, fights was, is just like a brute. Was, it doesn't even make sense. Was he the Yuri one? <laughs> was the Yuri one the one where like he was beating on him for like a good like forty seconds on the ground as like her call the fucking fight, where he was uh, pounding his fucking uh, head? No, no, I think that one. Uh, Let's see. Because it was fucking him up at the it, end. It, yeah, it, it, it was, yeah, like, was real back and forth. Yeah, it was back and forth for the first round. And then, yeah, yeah. Then no, it was the Diego out. one. It was the Diego one. He was already fucking slumped, and he just went and fucking mounted him and fucking beat it. Well, that one only lasted a minute and 30 seconds. I don't think it was that one. Yeah, no, I I, I think it was a year. He was like, like, I began, he was just like fucking hammer, hammer fisting. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, yeah, because here he's like, it was a great fight. Beat him down. I mean, the funny thing about Yuri is he fights so weird. Like, he literally just stands in front of people and he just takes hits. And gives hits. It's like Beast. it's like watching Forrest with uh Forrest Griffin all over. Yeah, again. dude, he's six four two oh six. I think is what I'm like, like same thing. Except he's got a little bit more like Muay Thai to him. But he just the same. I'm gonna stand in front of you and I'm gonna punch you, kick you. You're gonna punch and kick me, and whoever falls first is whoever falls first. Like he has no game plan. Shit. Um, this is Yuri right here that we're looking at. Fucking so height seventy five inches. These fucking cunts. Can't you just keep it American? 16 pounds. He's uh, barely a lightweight. Light heavyweight. The 6'3. Nice. He also, by the way, has he's 30 and 4. God damn. Um, that so yeah, that, that fight he's, definitely. I mean, he deserved that. Okay. And he, the lead he, up, he destroyed a fucking monster. Yeah, it, well, that's it, an uh, animal right there. He's getting his ass with the boys of the fights. Oh, yeah. Fight too. It was a real that was a real, real so, dangerous back and forth fight. Man's so got heart. Six four. I don't know heart. I was watching. I feel bad for this, my wife's family now. If you count the bun, he's <laughs> six seven. Count the bun. It's yeah, six seven. I was seven. over check, bro. I, I All the way, brother. Fuck him. Uh, so Justin Gaethje and the Max Holloway. What that fight. fight was insane. Uh, Max Holloway now is going to go ahead and go on and fight Ilya Taporia. He said yeah. he wants Conor McGregor. Oh, okay. Well, he he's going to fight. He wants his rematch. Right? Michael Chandler yeah. got that fight in June. So I think. so uh, I will say that I am kind of. Dan is saying this a lot lately, and I get he has a promote. He's a big I don't promote. want to see Michael. Chandler I want to say Rogan might have said something. I think Dana White said that the Max Holloway's knockout was, was like one of the nastiest he's seen in a while. And it's like I don't, I don't know if that was no one hundred percent. Do you think yeah. it was one of the nastiest? Brother, yeah, he I mean, said, "Get your ass in the middle of the yeah. ring and stand." And that was badass. I, I, I think, yeah. It was, yeah. And also, it's like one of the most dope. It was like one second before the fight oh, was that over. was the yeah. buzzer beater. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. No, beater. no second. I thought it was like one second, which was insane. Yeah, no, bro, sir, he was, it was a walk off KO, brother. It really was a walk off. Okay, he had the fight. He already won the fight. He, I thought well, he broke his that's, neck. That's another thing that made it like so crazy yeah. from his perspective that he was willing to risk the fight and who he was fighting. I yeah. mean, he was bro, fighting. Justin he, Gaethje, that, bro, he takes a beating, He made bro. Justin Gaethje go fucking limp. The man yeah. stopped moving. Yeah. He literally, his body shut down. He was like, the guy's nose is 
fucking. Have you seen it after the fight? Yeah, I haven't seen it after. I haven't seen. I it saw either. it before, and it was flopping as he's throwing punches. Like yeah, that yeah, thing yeah, was. He's fucking, getting plastic surgery. That shit was bad, bad, bro. That this fuck, he's got deviated done. septums and shit. He he yeah, needs to go see right a doctor. That. Clear out oh, that clotter he's yeah. got in there because he got fucked up. He definitely does. I think. uh What a if, fighter! If by the way, Max fights um Ilya, how do you guys think that goes? How confident? Ilya's are you? not gonna fucking strike with him. He's a pussy. He's already talking. That's the one thing, man. Oh, like can't. Ilya was talking all that gangster shit before he got the belt, and now he's got the belt. He's like, oh, I'm gonna fight him smart. I'm not gonna. Mr. I'll Wayne? never. I'll never stand in the middle of the uh, ring and just throw punches with him. It's 45? like you're not gonna stand in the ring and throw punches That's with a man true. who wants to strike with you. Are you serious? Well, cause, 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 I want to see what's the different, what's the weight catch between him and uh, uh, Sean, and then, and then, and then Aljo. Uh, uh, Aljo. Yeah, what do you mean? They, Aljo just went up one division. Forty-five. So, so that can't happen. And then why would Aljo uh, fight Sean? No, I'm talking about Max. I, I, I'm trying to think about about who he could fight that would. That, Brother, that he's got a lot of people he could fight. You don't even be trying to switch his weight class. He just went to one forty-five. He got to go through that whole division. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm just. What was um? What was uh, Gaethje the Gaethje ranked eighth in that division? Uh, that low? I, I don't think he was. No, I don't think he was ranked that low. What's Max ranked? Because I think he would have to go through the one and two contender now. I mean, or they're just gonna give him the Tiporia fight. But um, so one fifty five. Damn. Yeah, lightweight. Um, okay, so let's see the lightweight. So, range. so, so then Max, so, so Max had a gain weight, then, huh? Yeah, he went gain. up. Yeah, yeah, he went uh, up. UFC, but he he was walking at that weight though. You got to think about that. He's walking at that weight. Yeah, yeah, he's walking with fifty five. That's almost weight. all of them though. I mean, whenever they go up, they're almost always chasing a healthier weight. In all honesty, because uh, shit, not right, Aljo. So, that nigga is with that one forty five. He still walks around like one eighty. Crazy bastard. Oh, but he is. He went up as well though. Oh, what is he at? So, I thought no, he just fought and went up. So he was uh, at one, he was like at 135. So okay, so so, so so this is kind of what I'm looking at. So after Marab, if, if Sean beats Marab, who else is not there? beating Marab? Okay, yeah, so, I don't think he beats Marab. So, so 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 let's say it happens, who else in the weight glass is there for him to fight, or should he move up? Like, I mean, how long can he Sean be needs that? To just go small? ahead and chase money fights fighting strikers if he loses yeah. to Marab, which I do think is gonna happen. Because the Why thing is with Sean, he's not dedicated himself to getting on that fucking ground and putting so. in that work. Um, we'll see. I, I mean, I'm not gonna write him off because I honestly thought Aljo was gonna be Sean O'Malley. To be honest, no, I didn't think Aljo um, was gonna be Sean. Aljo's pussy. Yeah, I did. Um, ain't got no chin. Well, uh, he did get Marab got a chin on him. Boy. That, I guess, but, but you know, Sean yeah. is a, got a chin on him. Leader. Yeah. So he I mean, yeah, I think clean. I think he loses to Marab. If that happens, I think that's interesting. Does he go down? Does he move? Or does he stay and try to reclaim? What, what, what division no. is he in? 125? Uh, 135. 135, right? 135 yeah. yeah. I think he probably, I think he would be smart to go down, cut the weight, be a he bigger, cut any more weight, bro. Be a bigger 125-er, you know? He's already saying? a bigger 135. He probably walks around 155, 160. Yeah, he's a big 135, bro. He's six he's 6'2"? I don't know. Well, it's gonna. I do. It's just, bro. Because for, if he's not gonna dedicate to jujitsu or wrestling, then he. I mean, I mean, he might as well just chase money fights with like dudes like. Well, Poirier. I think he's, he says that he has dedicated. It just hasn't really been tested like that. Yeah, and he's athletic enough to. Yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just not talking he, like take down defense. I'm he's talking really about being able to get up athlete. on your feet when you have a fucking. Well, he's five eleven. He's so only five, bear. In the way, oh yeah, they are real light. That yeah, so one thirty five. Like so, Cheeto Vera right here is five eight. For example, the guy who just fought. I don't know which one would be more. I imagine like five eight would be more typical for the weight. Dude, class. That's what I'm yeah. saying. He he's got to go ahead and just go down. He can do it. He's not that big. He's only five eleven. Five eleven, one twenty five. Yeah, I mean, hey, bro, one thirty five is death, light, maybe. bro. Um, if he really wants it that bad, he might starve himself. I don't know, but well, I mean, I mean it's either that or get wrestled by guys bigger than you. I mean, it's, or fight it's, or fight Marab again. I, but the thing is, that's where we're having a disagreement. I think he's, he's already not getting a rematch big, from Marab because he he's didn't already a big one thirty five. Or if anything, yeah. he may have room to go up. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He's, he's not going to one forty five. He's not doing. <laughs> You're right. He might not. He, how, 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 how he's got to go through Max Holloway, Aljo, fucking uh, uh, Islam. Yeah, you know, he's got there's killers up there. There's killers. He's not he's not doing that. There's 29. He's not going to really thicken out more like 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 naturally. Yeah. So so I mean, he could just find his home 135 145. Well, yeah, I mean, I think he could go up 10 pounds though if he just yeah, cut yeah. this way. Do yeah. you I mean, think sure, that like, he will become an elite striker yeah. like Israel Adesanya, 
uh, he is an elite striker, though. No, That's no, yeah, no. he is. Elite, he, is. he doesn't use his legs. So he's not no, he elite striker yet. Brother, he does use his legs. Yeah, bro. but he's not. No, no, he's not kicking things upside the head. Is what I'm saying. I'm talking about like no, dangerous. He's, right. he's not Perrier he, where you're worried about him doing dangerous it. Dangerous with the head. Yeah. That man is a like, lethal striker. Um, in this pitch. He's a lethal what? boxer. There's a Sean difference. O'Malley, what else did I need to look up with this? Um, he's a boxer, like, though. I'm talking about a striker. Muay Thai. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, um, Max Holloway's uh, weight, the, the whole division. We're, 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 like the rankings. Oh, yeah. we're, we're, we're just we're, look we're up divisions. Back. UFC weight divisions. <laughs> Lightweight. Yeah. Well, I was there. I'm, I got to go back. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's so point. Sean O'Malley, uh, that's his. And then, yeah, with Taporia. So this is if he gained weight. He would have to fight. Ilya Taporia at the top of the weight class. Volkan Ortega, Yuri yeah, I mean, Bro, he's I not. Mean, he can fight these guys. If he's top tier, then he can fight these guys. No, brother. Like, he's not well, running through that list. What did Max fight uh, Justin at? What, what, what was the weight? What did, what did I miss? Probably a catchweight fight. It was the, for the BMI well, yeah. belt. No, I think it was uh, it was 150. He went up. He went up to 155? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Max oh, Holloway. Matt, and then get, Justin went down? No, 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 no Justin no, is 155. At that. So Max Holloway is... 5'11", the same height as Sean O'Malley. Oh, so it's like he that would be a really nice. Yeah, fight, he can go actually. up. Why the fuck couldn't he go up? Unless okay, he's just but look at look at Max Holloway. High, so if Max strike, Holloway, is so he can't Max handle Holloway, this guy. Yeah, go ahead. Sean O'Malley's ceiling. Mm-hmm. Do you think that? Okay, hold on. Well, I'm sorry. What, uh, make, the man is undefeated. I said they, they fight. The, oh, hold on. Hear me out. Because to yeah, be honest with you, Max and Sean fight exactly the same. Yeah, they're both strike. Yeah. No, they fight exactly the same. They barely throw kicks. If they do throw kick, it's a leg kick. Okay. And they're What's your point, just, They're going to keep distance and they're going to they're going to try to knock. What's you the out. point, though? Okay, so why can't what he I'm do that? What I'm asking is 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 that his ceiling? Because we've seen Max get beat by That's guys. Great. Oh, what a, what a ceiling! Throw, Max Holloway is maybe the greatest featherweight of all time. Was a champion. Like he had the striker like, for sure. It's not no, like he, that's what I'm saying. Is that his ceiling? Is well, because when what when Sean goes, because what I'm saying is when Max went against another all time great. Right, we saw the he beat a lot of them. He beat a lot of them. I thought we just having an argument. Okay, but I'm saying a guy. I'm talking about a balanced fighter, though. I'm not talking about another striker. I'm saying I watched Max now. He's a champion right now. What? He just beat Justin Gaethje. He just knocked the motherfucker out, whooped his ass the entire time. Fucking striker is what I'm saying. I'm saying a balanced guy. Volkanovski. Justin Gaethje is a striker. Am I missing? I'm not talking about balance. When Sean O'Malley okay, sees someone balanced okay, yeah, like yeah. Marab is what I'm saying. You just said you think he's going to lose to Marab. What I'm saying is, yeah. is that his trajectory to where he'll just never be able to beat these elite ground game guys? Because you saw like right. Anderson Silva was able to overcome those can elite ground game guys by knocking them out. Okay, so can you see the screen, brother? It's a little, it's a little, you know. Goddamn. Okay, well, I'll just I'll read it because it probably Frankie almost, Edgar. There we go. I, Frankie okay. Edgar. So he beat Frankie Edgar. I would say that's a balanced fighter. Brian Ortega. This more is Sean's record. This is Max. Because okay, you're saying yeah, he no. didn't oh, beat Max's anything. Max's good. I'm not saying that. Oh, saying, no, you're, I, saying, you're saying he has beat. You're saying that Sean hasn't done that. Yeah. No, Sean hasn't done that. That's but I'm not. Saying, but I'm saying Max didn't beat. He just beat a wrestler, round man. game guys though. Is what I'm saying. But he did beat guys that yeah, have he, strong ground. The, the last guy I he just showed beat. you. I just showed you. I mean, I would say Brian probably Ortega. Brian Ortega has the best, and he's a more Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu guy than a wrestler. Uh, is what I'm saying. No, I think now he's talking about Max Holloway. You're talking about Max Holloway, right? Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and you're saying that he hasn't really beat balanced guys, correct? No, I mean he hasn't beat elite ground game guys. Is what I'm saying. Okay, well that's a very spe- so. Like I said, if you want to get that specific, he has beaten Brian Ortega. Well, he's, um, a, he's a he's a Guy. Okay. He lost the but that's ground game. What the fuck? But is and Ortega, bro, Ortega's a scrapper, bro. Come on. You know Ortega's just gonna sit there and throw hands with the motherfucker. Get he got his there. ass whooped badly by Max Holloway, and, by and, the way. And Max Holloway's working he on his did, because he said he was gonna go toe-to-toe with him. He did lose to Volkanovsky. I'll say like that's the I guess one that you could point at. Other than that, he doesn't really lose. That's the thing. So it's like he lost to Dustin Poirier, who is a striker. But the only person, the only person you can even say that he's lost to in the past. Since 2013, which by the way, that's when he lost to Conor McGregor, who's a Warrior, he lost to Poirier, champion, boxer. Yeah, so it's like, well, my thing is, then he went since 2013, then he didn't lose until 2019, six years, never lost. So, so when you're saying like, <laughs> so he lost I mean? through, through arguably the best striker in the division ever, yeah. with Max Holloway being one of them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's another thing is, is Conor, who, Who's his kryptonite? The, the arguably the best wrestler to go through the division. But this is what no. I'm saying, though. Yeah. Is, so is, is Sean going to be the one to break that hump of the elite strikers to just being able to dominate 
the wrestlers in the division. Like you see it, this is what I'm saying with the elite and the one... Anderson Silvas. They were able to go in there and beat the shit out of these elite grapplers. You feel what I'm saying? Is Sean going to be that guy? Yeah. Or is he going to be one of the guys that can't do that and is limited by that and he limits who he fights by that? Because okay. the whole Ducky Marab thing was based on that ground game situation. Now, me and Jamie, Big Baby, just said yeah. that we believe he may lose to Marab. I think yeah. it's more because of the ground game part. If he's over there training with Aljamain, but he can strike a little bit, a lot better than Aljamain, I think that's an issue. That might be a problem. So I'm interested yeah. to see how he handles that. I'm interested to see if he develops his ground game a little bit more and he gets a little offense down there to balance out his game. But, yeah. you know, like even Connor can get down there a little bit and, and wrestle. So it, I, yeah, I just I don't know. I see what you, I definitely understand what you mean with Sean O'Malley because we agree that I don't think that he's been like super tested. But after the, uh, like the Aljamain, well, really the Peter Yan fight was the first test and I didn't think he was going to win that fight. But that's another striker, so I'll give you that. Right. Um but then he went I don't on think to he beat. won that one. He did win that one. Um, no, I'm but, saying, I don't know, but that was the controversial one. Okay, you don't like, agree with it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, that was close. Um, so after that, he fought Aljamain, who, and you've already kind of touched on that, like as his one. But I mean, that's a that's a huge, huge, huge test. I thought he was going to lose that one because Aljamain is one of the best grapplers mm -hmm. in that division <laughs> of all time, and he was able to mitigate that, get away from it, stay on his feet, stay quick on his feet. Did not allow Aljamain to get his hands on it. They knocked his ass out. Uh, and Aljamain, by the way, was a big 135. So when we're wondering, like, oh, can he go up? Like, Aljamain was the best at 135, and he was a big 135. He moved up to 145 Sick. and then immediately, like, won pretty decisively. Right. So if that's his test as to whether he might be able to move up against a grappler, I think that's a good sign. Now, I think Marab is I extremely strong, and I think one of his issues is is he's going to be more relentless with the wrestle the pursuit yeah. of wrestling. Uh, yeah, strike, not, strike, strike, strike. So yeah. I, I shoot, think, shoot, shoot. Yeah, yeah, so I think that's fair. Um, but I also don't think that like every division actually has a Marab at the top of it. Like, the, like for example, in the division ahead of him, the featherweight, I believe, 145, that's Ilya Taporia. That's the guy you're going to have to beat. Do I think Sean O'Malley has a chance against him? I do. It's he a striker. He's saying game, he though. has to. No, but he has, he's he, got he a has good a, wrestling and ground. But he, has a and but he has a chance against him, and his main focus is his striking. But you're not wrong. But I think that Sean's proven that he can get away from good wrestlers and, and uh, stuff like that. If he fought Henry Cejudo, for example, I would actually pick Sean at this point. So who um, who who? Yeah, at this point in age, but I, I just don't think if you're putting, I, we're gonna learn a lot about Sean O'Malley in this next fight. I'm just gonna yeah, say I agree with course. that. I agree with that, and I think that you know. By the way, we've had the. We've had the discussion. I don't think with, I don't think learned. with you. I think the Cheeto fight was a, a total like give me. I think they protected him with that. That was a bullshit fight in my opinion. I, feel bad. I, I didn't think it was that, that competitive. Yeah, and I, just, I, think I thought they thought Cheeto, Cheeto would come out and wrestle him, but he Cheeto he was totally flat. On top of that, the thing is, I can't even say like because I don't even think we saw the best of Cheeto that night. So I don't know if he had an injury. I know he said like I'm not a bitch. I'm not going to make excuses after the fight. Um, so who knows what happened with what's going on with Cheeto? But he looked totally flat, not aggressive. Was just getting they didn't try to take him to the ground. At all. But how, how much of fighting right. a great striker who, who's that long? Yeah, are, are you afraid of shooting and getting caught? Well, I'm not, he's a you're he's already getting cool. punched in the face. She was a good striker, he literally could not yeah, strike have, with yeah. him at all, like at yeah. all, bro. And that was the thing, and that's why I, I thought from like just like testing him standpoint, it wasn't really compelling because. He knows somebody he's getting his ass whooped on his feet and he doesn't even have the option really to go to the ground because he's not any better than Sean's going to be on the ground. That's uh, fair. Yeah. So he had nowhere to run to. It was, I have to just keep standing and hopefully I get a rhythm in this fight. Yeah. Um, and he never did. And he got his fucking face. Beat so, yeah. so, so Max is what third or fourth ranked in the division right now. Uh, let's see. Doesn't even matter. He's the number one contender at this point. I think he I think is. Cause he is. also, uh, uh, Taporia said he wanted to fight him. Yeah, it doesn't so matter. When the champ wants to fight you, 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 get, you skip the line. So Volk is the number one contender because he just lost the belt, um, but they're not going to have an immediate rematch because okay. they're going to let Volk chill, I guess, because he got knocked out, uh, I think, two times back back to back. Um, hmm. He's got too much stuff. So, Brian Ortega right behind him, and Brian Ortega, by the way, somebody I think Sean O'Malley could beat. Yair Rodriguez, I think that'd be actually a great fight. Him and uh, I don't think uh, so. I think uh, Yair, I think Brian Ortega is the one willing to, willing to take the damage enough to get inside yeah. on Sean O'Malley and try to get him it's in a choke. 
Maybe that would be a cool. It would be a good moment for him to redeem himself from the Max Holloway fight where they, he got his, his ass beat so bad. No, Brian Ortega's gotten his ass beat several times over. I mean, I yeah. just love him because he's got fucking heart. Motherfucker's a killer. Oh yeah. Well, in that fight with him and Max Holloway, he was a soldier. Like he was getting fucking battered bad. Like where he was. When Max told him to keep his hands up. Yeah, yeah that one. So like, like that. Like brother, defend yourself. Defend yourself, please. I'm feeling bad. Yeah, it was that was crazy. Um. So either way, so yeah, no, we're like I said, make sure you lock in with us. We are doing those lives, so we're gonna do them again. We're gonna keep on doing those. Want to bring them to you. We got some content put in there too, by the way. So if you don't get the fights, and low key, we went ahead and blessed you. Um, and any of you motherfuckers that were watching it that were ungrateful bastards, you're still welcome. Um, let's see what else we want to get into today, though. Um, oh, Jamar Gerard Carbichael. I want to talk about this with you, Deuce. Oh, we lost him. We'll see if he if we get him back. I'm still uh, here, brother. I'm still here. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, cool. So, yeah, Gerard Carmichael. So, he's a comedian. Um, we probably won't spend too much time on this because we have other things that are a little bit more important, but I definitely wanted to um, just touch on it. He's gotten some heat because he has a new show that is on um, HBO Max. It's the, I think it's actually called the Gerard uh, Carmichael Show. And um, people have just been a little bit upset with some of the content. So, um, here, let's read this one real quick. Because uh, one, by the way, was that he, <laughs> his white boyfriend had like, con- like taught, not taught, but like convinced him to read. And this actually might be what this is. Um, and he kind of likened it to the relationship between a slave oh. and a like, like a son of the of the master teaching like a slave to read. Oh, God, the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, he went crazy. And then the other one that he got heat for like a couple weeks ago, and I'll pull that one up. I, I guess we can't hate him for his feelings. You know? Hey, man, look, and I, I know we'll get into it, but he'll, uh, I know some of it, he's like, hey, this is, this is out of context. But here, let's go ahead. Uh, in a recent episode of the Gerard Car- Carmichael reality show, the comedian said, my boyfriend, uh, he makes me smarter. He makes me read. I have so many books. Realistically, I'm not going to read all those books. He knows that. But the fact that I brought that I bought them says I love you. They're little monuments around my apartment. Just like, look at this book from Amazon that I'm never going to read. Uh, he then added, I sometimes joke to him that our relationship is like that of a slave and a master son who like teaches me how to read by candlelight. Okay. How do you feel about the deuce? Can we get in here, brother? Help me out. Can we get the brother. is the camera? Okay, yeah. Get, let's get in front of the camera. Let's uh, let's give us some uh, you know, yeah, uh, let's give us some black action. Yeah. Honestly, brother, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> I I'm just a little confuzzled here with this yeah. fellow. Um, I'm not sure because he's gay. He, is is that where you draw your line with this? No, I, I, it's not even First that. Time. But I just don't know yeah. where he's he's talking about books and. He's made me confused. Well, okay, so in the episode, which was during a live stand-up show, the joke seemed to fall flatter than Carmichael accept, uh, expected, with some people in the audience groaning and hissing. Yeah, he groans too because he's a good person, he replied about his boyfriend. Uh, he doesn't like that fucking joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that shit's hilarious. Um, hey man, Carmichael you know- then saw backlash. When some viewers called out the controversial idea of race-based sexual slave play, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, during an appearance <laughs> on the Breakfast Club <laughs> with Doctor Envy, just hilarious. Okay, so people on the fucking Breakfast Club, Carmack will clarify like the joke, which he said was covered from from the punchline on and missed the setup. I really don't like that. He said on the morning show talk show, it made it seem like I was talking like. <laughs> I'm into some type of race, sexual slavery role play with my boyfriend, which is untrue. It's so false. He continued, it has nothing to do with my boyfriend. It has nothing to do with the sex that we have. Uh, it has nothing to do with the sex. It's something about uh, something people have been reporting on. Nobody it's about, brought up sex, though. It's about my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, it's about, it's about my boyfriend uh, reading so much. Right. He makes me feel insecure about my level of reading. Um it it, it it might be the the romanticizing the relationship between a yeah. slave master son and a slave like like that might be like the the issue some people might have there yeah i mean you know uh, yeah the thing <laughs> is you just gotta when you're gonna make like 
So I like that he has the option to make that joke. You know, I like the yeah, first artistic amendment, all freedom. that kind of stuff. Yes. I think that's 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 cool. Yes. Um, and he just has to accept that it's not Back gonna, off. yeah, it's not gonna work for everybody. Some people are gonna think like, oh, that's really stupid. This is why I think it's stupid. And then you just gotta hear that. Then you say like, why, in your opinion, it's funny, and people move on, and life goes on, and I don't think it's the end of the world. So I will uh, say, yeah. if there, I mean, if, it's if, a little weird. It's a little weird. I don't know. It, seems it is like weird. Now, I mean, yeah, like, now, is that, that's what he's fantasizing about, weird. like. But that's what makes it the the lens he's looking at it through yes. is what is supposed to make it funny. It's yes. supposed to be ridiculous. It's, it's supposed, supposed to be, to be yeah. absurd, outlandish. Yeah, it, it's just it's weird when you think about like oh he's reading to me and then that's where my mind goes. Yeah. But I will say like if let's say these two movies are made right, Hallmark made a movie that was about a slave master's son falling in love with a slave. Okay, that movie would be received a lot worse than if Quentin uh, Quentin Tarantino made a like parody movie about that situation. Okay. Like, like it would be like, like it, there would be two different receptions. Are you following Deuce? No, I mean, I, I, I thought I was, but then I, okay. Yeah, like, no. like, like, like jokes are supposed to like, like they get more freedom. I'm just saying. And it's like, he just kind of like, yeah, it was kind of like this weird romanticization with it. Yeah, but again, that, Hey, it's to his freedom. It's his show. He wants to, it is bullshit that they take out the setup, but once again, that's kind of like once you start spewing shit out your mouth, that's the risk you take. That that Tim I'm Robbins sorry. show, or whatever that's on Netflix, the one with like, are you sure about that? Oh yeah, that, yeah. that guy. Like, like it, there are a lot of a lot of like little clip scenes that they do that. Like, if you were just to take a little bit out of that, it it, it could like ruin someone's. Yeah, career. So I guess it's fucked up. Yeah. 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 But I mean, like, they're not portraying it as like, uh, this is like how things should be or like part of him having that thought is probably what's kind of comedic about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, he's recognizing that it's a fucked up kind of way to view this relationship. Uh, I'm talking about my own personal insecurity. I'm an educated person. I'm usually the smartest person in the room. OK, flex on that one. Uh, he reads so much. It makes me feel like, oh, do I even know how to read? That joke works if I had a black boyfriend. If my boyfriend were black, that joke actually works better. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, you're not yeah. going to be able to put it in the same context. It wouldn't make as much sense i guess or maybe sense. or maybe you would i don't know um but yeah so there's this and then also there's another thing i'm gonna look up but how do you guys feel about this one alone and then i'm gonna pull up the other scenario and i want to ask you guys his opinion on that um, i mean i don't know bro it's weird it just seems like there's some weird fetish fantasy shit you know <laughs> yeah like, you know just cucks and fucks you know what i mean hey man tweets their own tweets their own whatever they want to do with their uh imaginations and booty holes you know hey if they want to role play be some confederates you know what i'm saying oh my so god your show. Leave, leave well, the slaves alone. thank you very much oh, oh, I needed you oh to be look at this dude of reality oh wow well thank you very much a double foot fetish you know, it's new. It's new. I'm really like, okay. in the feet lately. Like, yeah, it was a taboo. Second, <laughs> some feet on a grinder. Day oh. first okay. Well, so I, I wasn't able to find the actual video of whatever, which was probably probably for the best. But there's another uh, video, or well, another part of his this show where he's sucking on a dude's foot and his boyfriend's foot. Ooh, um, Andy Cohen going there. Yeah. So this on top of this is, I think, maybe why people were like, "What the fuck is up? Are you guys doing like some weird like subservient <laughs> indoctrination?" Yeah, I don't know. It's definitely it's definitely out there. Um, do you think there's anything any conspiracies with this, Deuce? Because honestly, the conspiracy around this, like I said, I've seen on Twitter a lot of like sex uh, cults. Not e not even like basically like normalization of like this weird shit for black folks in the black community. Oh my God. Brother, um, brother, they, they, they don't have to worry about the community, the, brother. We're, we're that never crazy shit. <laughs> so, he was like, but a lot of stuff that I've seen has been like. Um, uh, one like like you said the fetishing of the relationship um, but then that per the black person in the relationship being put in like these weird like in this case he can't read or doesn't read as good as the joke then the other one is him sucking on his boyfriend's feet which I think is well, just again, degenerate a lot of y'all's fucking uncles <laughs> are licking feet out there I hate to break it to you okay a lot of people they got foot mouth yeah yeah a lot of them out there licking some toes women like a lot of like your aunts and shit and like that shit do you think there's anything to that goose the criticism or do you think it's toes, just, like, I, I ain't sucking toes he, he said he said uncles and cousins and shit not paul but do you think yeah. there's anything to that by the way brother oh uh, sucking toes no, just like this being like an intentional thing. Like I've heard this argument with rap music as well. Or is he just talking about his experiences? Yeah, or is he just talking about his experience? That's possible as well. Uh, it's no, it's definitely some indoctrination. Nasty boy. 
Yeah, we don't we don't do that in the community. Um, oh my god. <laughs> you know we do. <laughs> Never was practiced. Um yeah. bro, until we now. Grew up, but it wasn't until in bro, the for Ice Cube's dad on Friday and his uncle definitely. Yeah, suck toes. Definitely. No, suck they weren't sucking no toes. They were sucking oh. toes. Bullshit, I think they might bro. actually show him suck toes in there. I'm it trying to remember be, back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm no, trying to remember. Because Day Day's dad had the had the ma- the the bondage mask on and yeah. all that shit, the, the gag ball. Well, does it make it different if he's sucking white toes? <laughs> no, but hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Can I can't. Can 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 he not suck white toes? Like, white people can't get sucking toes, period. Is it the sucking toes plus? The white plus gay equals abomination. So like 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 that. That's like the You're whole filling up trinity. a bingo card right now. Yeah, fill yeah, up the fucking bingo card with the quick. with the free space. There's only one more to hit. <laughs> <laughs> there's, here, here. I don't. I like. So I just wanted to like touch on that a little bit. I just thought it was like a weird story that came across today. But I want to make sure while we have Deuce here, um, I want to make sure I get into this Kai Sinet story. Um and oh, kind of break yes, it down. Please, brother. Please. Yeah, yes. I definitely want to make sure if there's anybody Follow hating on Twitter. Out here. Yeah, all of his new followers that hate him. Uh, Kai Sinet, so if you guys have heard, uh, he got a little bit of hot water around possibly paying for some vagina, some vagina, um, and paying a like Instagram model or OnlyFans model or whatever to uh, come and uh, have sex with him. And then she exposed him. And now we're kind of, he said that it, he said it's not legitimate. I'm going to pull some of the stuff up here uh, while we talk about it, but he said it's not legitimate went through his like pays and said that she, he basically just paid for her Uber, I believe. And um, they hung out and she's claiming like, Hey, she was paid for sex and um, just trying to, you know, slander's name a little bit. I'm curious for one, how do you guys feel about the public aspect of this? And Paul, you can go ahead, but I want to make sure I get Deuce's opinion on this before he has to slide. Cause no, I no, he, he, he go ahead. Go. Oh, he's not even by the camera. Oh, right so, now. So, so yeah. So, um, honestly, I I've been pro sex worker. Well, I believe you have on this very podcast. Yeah, I, 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 I think that although I don't participate, would not I think there's a lot of, ooh, but to each of their own. And again, especially a situation like this, like, Excuse me. As long as it's two consensual adults, and there's and there's a uh, pay that to, to get, you know, someone wants to pay. Transacted. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. I know where the IRS comes and says, whoa, 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 we can't tax that. So mm. slow it down. Well, you also can't tax someone tipping me for helping, you know, bring their garbage cans up to their to the side of their house. Okay. So I'm sorry, someone got tipped for some acts. Now again, I can always argue. I should again ignorant high school, but we can always argue this. If I have to take you on a date or somebody takes you on a date for you to then give it up, right? Then is that not kind of the same thing? And some aspect? is is that not some like some way the same? Hey, something had to been given to be earned. Not I think again. you're kind of you're it's a little bit of a stretch. It's a far stretch. I understand your premise. Yeah, but there's like a, there's still a like you're literally paying for sex. So then so there's a difference between if you're literally paying for sex and then I don't know does that person then not have the right to say no? I don't know. That's we can get into that. Ooh, so with, yeah, deep. with the, with the dinner thing. You know, like uh, yeah, obviously, obviously, like if the lady at the end of the day, and I'm not saying that you're saying that wasn't on the table, brother. Come on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let there, me clarify. Yeah, there was an implication Just because you that, buy dinner does <laughs> not mean I'm saying if that is your if your more lady, internal the woman your qualifications were like, well, then it, it, listen, it's the same thing. Don't I'm saying as far as the, the women, don't hate on women that are getting paid for it. Yeah. That, that's it again i think that is it slimy yeah do i yeah. think that it's grimy yeah. of course how many people look that's day? why they didn't get benny hana brother that's why they didn't get benny hana they got fucking cheesecake factory you know what I'm saying? um again I, I it's something i can understand okay. um again i i, I have I, laws against this obscenity yeah yeah so i'm just curious i don't know because I, I want to explore this i think on its face i agree but then I think there's more to explore there. Like, do I really think like one as a society, do I think that it's a good thing to um, do? I think on his face, like it's good to legalize sex work. I, I don't know if I agree that it's good. That's where like legality doesn't necessarily just mean good. It's not like just a fact. It's not like a fact finding mission, you know, yeah. it's like what is just generally right and doesn't infringe on people's uh, rights. So, yeah. so street working. Yeah. Would I would say bad. Okay. Okay. Brothel, I would say is as good as that could 
that line could get to where to where there's some sort of regulation, some sort of oversight to make mm-hmm. sure that like people aren't being necessarily trafficked. Sure, sure. You know, as far as it's consensual tested, all that. Again, I, I just I propose a question to the dudes that it's like, how many like are you the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dude the other day? Like, yeah, is that right. like, like, is that not a thought process? Does that not come through the mind at all? This man, you know, just because you're buying it doesn't mean you can't have the other thing. Should, 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 should it be a one day a week type of job and take a few days off? Brother, you no, know? brother. What do you mean? You can days not, off, man. Like, you're like, not a sex off. worker and you're still the seventh or eighth person of the day. I mean, I don't. Oh you know, my God! Well, I watch wonder, your that's that's wonder, true. Now you were talking about perfect examples earlier. That's like that's a kind of a part. Yeah, but yeah. I, I wonder honestly, brother, go to FAU. Go to FAU, brother. You'll see it all. I do like the idea of making it safer for the people that are participating in in general. I just don't know. Like, it's thing thing is, I don't know how that ever really is that safe. Like what you're saying. Like, um, I think you make a really interesting point when you talk about like how many people are there, like that. Cause that actually is a good question because if you could do it in a safe way, let's just say, so people are getting tested and stuff like what's to stop you from transmitting something. If you say you have to get tested once a week legally, but you're fucking 300 dudes in a week, you know what I mean? So it's like, who's to say within on number 150 that you've now transmitted that to, you know, 149. People. Dude, they have to come with, with, with the test card. And again, yeah. and, and 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 now you're looking yeah. at people being embarrassed, all that stuff. Sure. Again, I, sure, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. It's tough. I, like, yeah. Well, uh, what I was gonna say is, is uh, uh, like that's illegal, but something as far as like sugar daddy, you know, a, a young woman marrying a, an old man for money, and obviously there are, dude, they there have been the contracts that they signed saying we, I will do this x amount of times, and this x, like. It, and it's like, come on, is that not the yeah. same? It's, I don't think it is actually the same. And the reason I would say is because, and it really is something that I didn't think of this previous to the conversation, but you now have said something make me make, made me think about this a little more. And it might not be in the best interest to be legal based off like public health concerns. So like thinking about the the way that s- diseases could replicate in a community if you have like just a brothel that you can go down and just you know, in, in every, any and everybody in the community can fuck whenever they want. Um, that's actually something I hadn't considered of as a as a really big concern for me because previously I would have been like, oh well, it's adults doing it; they're doing it within themselves. I don't get in between that. But now, when you take into consideration the actual public re- repercussions that could happen from that, you know, married yeah. men going and giving it to their wives. But and, but 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 that's going to happen anywhere with like the massage parlors. So, it's true, so but we're not. N- but we're making now that's it illegal, not regulated. So, but we're making it illegal. It's a, it's. it's you can, that's still legal, right? If what? you go into a massage parlor, they jack you off and you pay for it. It's still prostitution. That right? is prostitution. It's totally legal. They yeah, just pop they, someone in Port Charlotte. They, they, they do okay. things constantly in okay. Port Charlotte. But the thing is, those institutions stay open. So I it's like you. it's like okay, you arrest the the the, the girl and a few oh, guys, but the system's going to continue that's, to well, operate. What do you want them to do, brother? I mean, they, they can't arrest everybody. That's maybe an issue with our system, but the very fact that it's illegal allows us to enforce it at all. So the other option is don't enforce it at all. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe your opinion of regulation, maybe, maybe in your opinion. Well, no, I know, but I'm saying like enforce it as in like make it against the law. You know what I mean? Like we can enforce this ladies getting ladies, jacking dudes off and taking money for it because it's literally illegal. If that's no longer illegal, then yeah, I mean, I guess you try to enforce the amount of hand jobs that the ladies, okay. that the well, we, I, 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 again, it, it's, it's all yeah, different, yeah. but again, like with, with, with like marijuana, mm-hmm. right? So recreational, just because it's, it's, it's made legal uh-huh. recreationally doesn't mean that you can still purchase it off the streets. You have to then go to a, a dispensary to purchase your marijuana. If not, you can still be charged with possession, right? Okay. Like, like, like you're allowed to have possession, but it has to be in whatever, like, like it's, it's containers. Mm-hmm. So I guess it would be kind of the same thing where it's like, yes, it's not going to stop your fucking back of the porn store fucking glory hole. But what mm-hmm. it's going to at least do is make the, those people who want to go to the massage parlor for that thing. At least a, a, a safe place to go do this. Go do that. Yeah. Which again, I, that's the same thing. Ar- that argument with like legalizing like hard drugs. Like, oh well, people want to do it anyways. Do we want them to do it in the park or at least do it in in the facility? Yeah. And it's like with hard drugs, I think that. So I, I disagree with your weed 
argument because like i said i don't really see the same risk from like a public health standpoint yeah so i think you really honestly mentioned that makes me actually much more concerned about it coming into this conversation i was kind of like yeah prostitution is what it is but it's like yeah, I mean, I don't know if you let that proliferate in your societies like many, many, many times over that. I think you're just like you're just not doing what all you could do as a society to prevent that. Even aside from the obscenity, like the pushback that I originally had was that. But I think that even more concerning than that is actually, like I said, the public safety concern. If somebody decides to smoke weed all day. um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't really see how that's even really affecting. Aside from them, I mean, maybe they're a more lazy member of society. So, but all this stuff really affects them more adversely than it's going to affect society. Where on the other end, like if we have another AIDS epidemic, which you know maybe it would it would come from this, maybe it wouldn't. We're not but, preventing sex work entirely, anyways. I agree with that. But, um, but uh, what, what if 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 you have to come in with like your your card saying like hey like i'm clean mm -hmm. they they have like a little thing like outside the door like you're clean you've been tested mm -hmm. and then you have to wear protection like like all yeah. these all these regulations are gone through all these things mm -hmm. that would severely lower any risk of of diseases spreading yeah i think there's things that you could do oh no people there's are things, dirty brother yeah there's, there's things you could do to help it i think for sure um I just don't, well, I don't know, definitely don't think that you're going to eliminate it, but I don't think that that's what we should be worried about necessarily because I don't think you're ever going to eliminate it. I just wonder what kind of, like, what practical rules do you have? Like I said, for the lady, you know what I mean? Like the person that's getting fucked over and over again, like, is she, she going to get tested after every single time? Is it even going to show yeah. up? Getting fucking annihilated. She, I'm sure it won't. So it's like, how, I just how, don't see how, how do they do it in the porn industry? She's getting fucking annihilated well, they're, every they're, week. They don't have the same, they're not taking on the same workload, brother. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. definitely. Hey, I don't know. That's I'm sure. Other workload, but <laughs> I'm, well, okay, this is what I'll say. Her workload. I, I don't know their specific workload. But it won't be as much as a big yeah. load. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> It'll be a big load, brother. Big load. How, how do they do it in Europe? Because they do this in sure. Europe. No, I'm not sure. I, that's the thing. I'm, so I'm, I have I'm no idea. Europe. That's why, like, yeah. I, and I mean, we, we can only take, take what they've done. Yeah, originally, <laughs> definitely, I think that. Um, so, oh, well, this is another thing I want to ask because I don't think this. Yeah, I don't think this really swings it for me either way, but I am curious how you guys feel about it. Do you think that uh, legalizing prostitution would have an overall positive or negative effect? Job creation. Okay. Taxes. Two positives I can think of right okay. there. Less sliminess. Because, again, the, the field is going to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can eliminate some of the, the slimy back, back alley type of ways, Motel 8 shit, and, and at least have a – it, it, again man this is uh, yeah it's hard for me to say because like there's one of those things that like i like i don't agree with personally doing yeah but like i can agree with like people doing like i yeah. I, I don't know like i try try to put like what's fair no, fair on understand. there you know what i mean well, it's not always so you don't like the truck stop hookers basically what you're saying yeah yeah like 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 the, the truck the truckers can go to a fucking facility where those brother, no, those girls now have a real job brother. for the game it, dude, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they respect it. Is there a base salary that they have to pay? Is there a membership fee for the for the guys? Is there like, you gotta pay dues? You, so you, can, you can't use certain gas stations without the cameras in the room. You know the girl's safety, but that's kind of perverted. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, well, no, they have right. fees. You got certain gas stations, you gotta pay a monthly fee to stop in every month. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There, is yeah, there a bodyguard outside each room and then the girl has a word she says and then yeah, no, brother, sure. you're you're doing business in your truck, brother. What do you mean? When I'm well, saying, I'm saying in, in the in the yeah. professional brothels. If it was like legalized, oh, in a professional What's brothel, bro, it's more. It's, 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 first off, it's it's escorts, call them escorts, and uh, two. How does Vegas do this? It, it's well, literally, bro. It's literally like you go in and you have like a selection of fine cigars. You, you know, you go in, you pick your, you know, and experience here. Huh? Yeah, man, you know. He's a uh, he's rented a woman he, many times. He's seen two movies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no that's I'm just I, I'm just I think the escort thing. I want Twenty Seventh so Street on Vegas Street. I'm, not an, I'm not an expert. I don't know, and I haven't with the experience. But like from what I've seen from like like media that I've seen escorts be depicted in, it seems like it's almost like an unspoken thing. You know what I mean? Like it's an escort. You guys know what you're gonna do, but it's like for legal purposes. It's for not, a date. Yeah, it's not a. 
uh, it's not a prostitute, although like you know, it's kind of like a wink and a nod, like you know, um, expecting to get my dick sucked. You know damn well, she's gonna blow the <laughs> shit out of your balls. Uh, so the Kai Sinet thing. Let's make that a little bit more specific, because like I said, dude, so I want to get I want to get your fixed opinion on. It. So, sorry, Kai, that you ended up being the fucking uh, face the, the most for horse. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. So how do you feel about this whole scenario? Him getting exposed. Let me pull that up actually while we're talking about this stuff. Um, and yeah, Deuce, go ahead, man. You've been you've been arguing with people online about it. I figure you have an opinion on it, brother. Speech. Well, honestly, brother, I just made a blanket statement. Um, I didn't know I was gonna have all these emotions when I made the statement. Um can you hear me? I can yep. hear you, it just sounds different, but you're good. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, but so I didn't know I was gonna have so many emotional responses talking about how mothers are whores and you know, your mother was a whore before Kaisenat found that whore and paid her five dollars for the Uber. Um, <clears throat> I think it's funny though, because all I did was reference a uh, previous court case with Donald Trump and how his Stormy Daniels case was handled and how he was able to shake that and she ended up owing him money. Um, so yeah, I mean, but yeah, you had some people that were very emotionally charged about that. Um, yeah. but I think the disconnect is, is they were thinking ethically and morally, and they weren't understanding it had nothing to do with that because it had to do with the way the laws were written and how they're going to be used. So, you know, I see both sides of it. I was just kind of like an innocent bystander on the sidewalk and someone just decided to fall asleep at the wheel and run me over, you know, 500 likes later, 500 okay. likes. <laughs> the, the way the way he became a victim and then not no more. Yeah, in other words, but they like, ran okay. me over, but okay. I did well for so, myself. So, so is she day. suing him? <laughs> uh, so no, he, yeah, so he's suing her. He's for, threatening. She broke okay. NDA. Okay, so <coughs> what NDA? If, if, if nothing happened, if they didn't have sex and none of that happened, what NDA? You might still not be able to say that you were even around them like that. You know what I mean? That's just, like so, that's she posted wild. pictures of them in bed. I saw. Yep. Uh, oh, that's yeah. what too, bro. Huh? Uh, Julian Edelman got caught like that too. This is what Julian Edelman got caught. Yeah. Well, I mean, he might have had. Some, he might have had some. Like, yeah, it, 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 it was after like a Super Bowl, at least a playoff. But I think the Super Bowl, a girl like posted like a picture of him like sleeping on, on like Instagram story or Snapchat. Balls it's empty like, as hell. Holy shit! <laughs> Man, it's like, drained. It's like it's like, yeah. it's like what a way to broadcast your family when you just taken did. from him. Which which I which I, I, I want to ask you first. I have a daughter, but like yeah. I don't know how I would feel if like my daughter was like, "Hey, Dad, look, I, I just took home Julian Edelman last night." I'm proud of you. I took home Julian. Like I'm proud. I'm proud. I don't know. Uh, her dad is probably a, a diehard Patriots fan. He's 100 percent proud of it. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be proud of it. I wouldn't be proud of the bodies <laughs> my daughter was catching. You know what I'm saying? Brother, so, Tom, if she brought Tom like, Brady into your kitchen, I'd be, I'd be why proud. Fuck, I'd be why the fuck am I even? Hearing about this right now, yeah. Leave me alone, do not tell uh, me. But, yeah, but no, if she brings like Julian, El- so you're telling me if your daughters bring Julian Edelman home, that's hey dad, different. that's completely different. Her bringing a person home saying, like, this is a person I'm in a relationship with, yeah. Like, instead of saying, like, hey dad, so I fucked Julian yeah. Edelman last, <laughs> so last night, <laughs> you, you know, this uh, the Patriots won the Super Bowl, yeah. Well, that wasn't the only trophy he had because he had me, yeah. Like, that's like, whoa. Whoa, who I, else, huh? I caught the real immaculate reception <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, well, if you're gonna take it to a dark place, man, I'm just saying. Oh, you guys took if- it to a dark place. Come on, what the fuck? But but uh, but, but, but Kaysa, <laughs> no, yeah, K- uh, the uh, Kaisenet. Yeah, Ka- uh, Kaisenet. 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 So let me read this real quick, just to give anybody out there. This is pretty much what we were, what I gave the overview of, but just so it's a little bit more concise, and so you guys know I'm not bullshit. Um, so this is Kaisenet. We'll get right into this article. Uh, as his compromising photos and phone number started making rounds on social media, Kaisenet, that's so that stuff. Kaisenet addressed the situation in a recent live stream. Kaisenet found himself in the middle of a controversy surrounding an OnlyFans model who allegedly doxed him after his private messages and photos were leaked online. The popular Twitch streamer addressed the situation, hinting at a possible legal action. That's um, fair. In a recent uh, live stream, the 22-year-old personality called out the model for claiming that he had sex with her in exchange for money. The controversy began after she allegedly shared a photo of herself in bed with Sinet in a screenshot of his $5,000 payment to her. Um, Kai Sinet tells OnlyFans model, I'll see you in court. Uh, as his, go ahead. Well, so $5,000 is not to pay an Uber. 
<laughs> no, it's not Uber. Sure. It's definitely not Uber. Sure. All right, let well, me tell you this though: five thousand dollars is not enough to pay a fucking professional porn star. They get paid probably twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a video. All right, definitely yeah. not enough to pay for a silence, and that's clear. I think. Well, well yeah, that, brother, like, yeah. 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 I, I I think that that maybe her his status that as was a the down payment with money, all that, and again, her wanting the clout was enough. Mm-hmm. I do under I do wonder if like he can't sue for defamation. But like the NDA, like she can break the NDA because again, like the de- like I don't know because with the defamation, because no, she like, can't break the, the the NDA. That literally means like, bitch, you can't speak on me in public. No, right, right. So, so he has a lawsuit. Then. That's what I'm saying. Like, so oh, he's giving a hundred thousand. So she yeah, she's very much. She, she played a goofy for five k. You, so he said, you took a picture of me without my consent, naked, revenge porn. That's revenge porn. I know, but you'll get in trouble. It's coming for you. You're the source. Text messages. You have admitted it. Um, you have admitted it. Uh, yeah, bro, it makes no sense. Hmm. Well, I'm on his side poor, for this poor one. guy. Yeah, th- I mean, this is a little bit deeper than even prostitution because there's like a break in confidentiality, which I guess wouldn't be automatically extended in like i guess the case that we were talking about with prostitution so i guess it's not a one-to-one comparison but but my boy's um, emotional which again should should nda be able to be broken if a crime was committed i guess that is a yeah it's not actually it doesn't it doesn't protect people against crimes uh no, yeah, you forgot, no. you forgot on t- well no, this is prostitution so he further dis- dismissed the allegations that he paid her five thousand dollars by showing his apple pay history and said you forgot i'm 10 steps ahead let me cook. First things first. This is my phone. Here we go. Screen record, as you guys can see. Thank you, Apple, for the wallet. Let's go to the transactions of 2023. Let's go to, let's see me, uh, let's see October. October for me, please. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's for my good friends. So he's saying that he you didn't probably got like He probably got, like, OnlyFans corn all over that shit. <laughs> he probably has just a porn phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Like you're a fucking millionaire. I'm sure you have just a porn phone that you pay for. And then you just run down on all these fucking old, pro- these old oh, dusty ass prostitutes. Yeah, twenty-two. Right. Bro, he's twenty-two years old. Come on, man. Like, like, bro. Yeah, he don't... definitely has a list of porn stars, bro. You have to come think. On. All these young streamer dudes, bro. They sit yeah, on the computer all day. But listen, you can't come out and say that I did that. So, well, and, oh. and, and like, personal information, like it's when you're saying like a. Cell oh, phone. bro, that's bad. Yeah, cell phones leak. That's crazy. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, low key on some spy shit. Uh, I think yeah. I think he's a little full of shit. <laughs> Why do you think he's full of shit? I mean, is this because we agreed? agreed? Yeah, I think like, it's, <laughs> I think I accidentally stumbled upon somebody agreed on. You're like, fuck, I yeah, got it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, because you know, it's I like for one, you're not paying that bitch five bands. You're gonna pay her like twenty twenty five. You know, Bro, I mean. If he negotiated five grand, why? Bro, why he's he he's more famous than her. Why, why wouldn't he have to pay out the ass? I don't think he really should even because have he people. wants right, some right, booty. Right. It, should, it should really be on the house. I mean, I don't. Why was it on the house? He's twenty-two. She's fuck a grown what? woman who gets paid to fuck. I'm okay, not okay, fucking okay. this nigga for well, less than a bag. Let me ask you this question: How many dudes do you think have looked up her OnlyFans since? Oh, that's interesting. So, so this whole story alone. It is is enough to cover that? How many people? Why do you think? Okay, that, so now you know why she's over here soliciting his fucking name because the nigga ain't pay her shit. You pay the bitch, she leaves you alone. That's his problem. Try to give her measly five bands, and you so are you a two or three million dollar nigga. For so one, your young ass should be buying no pussy in the first place. That's there it problem. is. Go find a wife at church. Go get married. Exactly. No, that's not what I'm saying. I, but I, no, I'm just playing. Family, buddy. <laughs> at twenty two. Not at 22. Don't do that at 22. Live your life, bro. Right this man but, is, it is like, oh, really? God, this man does. He already had a family, too. That's hilarious. He's like, don't do it at 22. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, do it yeah, bro. Don't live a little bit, bro. Travel the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, shit. Okay, OG. Okay. Listen, I love I love my family life. Yeah, definitely. Family's great. Uh, I'll tell you what. I love it, brother. It's about experience in all of life. You at know 22, what I'm I was not ready yeah. to be a dad, and I was. Okay. So, yeah, you oh, should go out there and just be safe. Don't uh, be a silly. So, guys, let's go ahead. I wanted to uh, ask y'all, Devontae Smith, he got paid a uh, brand new extension, fat extension to big money. Uh, Ridiculous money for his yeah. performances. Oh, my yeah. God, bro. And, so well, I wanted to get your guys' opinion. One, on let's just get that. And then I obviously want to ask about Waddle, what to do with him. Um, and, you better pay him. And then you have You C8. better pay him or you better draft somebody. That's your two options. If you Why don't do you one say or the other. Pay? 
You better you because, brother, listen, you're not going to find too many people that have the ability to do what he does with the ball in his hands. You know what I'm saying? And I know everybody's saying don't resign him. It's not worth it. It's going to be too much money. Whatever. I mean, listen, that's the going rate. That's the going rate. Saying is bullshit oh, right now. Like, 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 honestly, I think the whole tra- trading thing is wild. The guy is a back three time now, three years, three thousand yard seasons. Okay, like that's with one season with this quarterback going down. The other season is rookie year. It, it was in and out with with the quarterback, right? Yeah. So. Uh, the one game where Tyreek didn't play against the Jets, the guy had oh, seven. His rookie year was his best year. He had the most receptions. yards and a touchdown. He averaged like 17, 18 yards a catch. Um, yes, he needs to stay healthy. But again, we can point at almost every top receiver in, in the NFL right now, and they've all missed games. Okay? Every single player right now misses games. But I think he's definitely the player. He's, he's, he's worth the talent. He's good. In, he, that's how good he is. And Tyreek Hill has X amount of talent. Like you said, we need to draft somebody or we need to draft. No, I think and we need to draft. You, no, I'm going to tell you this. You can only do one of the two. You can only uh, sign him or sign to it. Which one are you doing? You, we, no, we do draft both. thing. Yeah. He's, they, well, but he's also talking about the draft thing. Yeah. He's saying go. sign Waddle and then also go in the draft. Which draft. which Chris Greer already came out today and said that, that Jalen Phillips and Jalen Waddle are, are both are picking up the fifth-year option. That's not even a conversation. So, um, uh, but I do think that in today's NFL, you need three receivers. And you look at what Houston did, it's exactly what they went out and did. They have Nico Collins now, Tank Dell, and Stephon Diggs. You need three legitimate wide receivers now. I mean, you don't really need it, if you're, but if you're going to be a more offensive team, which the Texans are right now, because, you know, they're not too deep defensively outside of their defensive line. I mean, yeah, if you're going to, you're going to have to get a really sick offensive receiving core. Um, and the division he's in too, who he's got to go up against. I mean, yeah, you, you're going to need to be able to put up some points. Uh, I don't know. I, I think you guys are in a good position. I think Greer has you guys in a position to where he could possibly get fired if he doesn't make some right decisions here. Um, but I've been saying that for a while. He's got some tough choices. You have been kind of advocating, to be honest. You've been advocating for uh. The hot seat for Chris Greer for a minute. Um, the uh, well, uh, not advocating, but I'm just saying, like, if you watch no, some of the decision making he's made, like, like um, what, like not signing players early that are all pros. How about if that? They Can we start agree there? To a contract, you can't like you can't force people to sign a contract. It's just crazy because every other team can sign their first round pick defensive tackle that's top ten in the NFL, but but for some reason, Chris Greer just couldn't get the numbers right. But every other motherfucker broke the bank. You know why? Because a lot of Derek Brown broke the bank. Teams, okay, but they don't have a quarterback to pay. So when you have to pay a quarterback, like hey, Chris Jones is paying the the Kansas City's paying Mahomes, Chris Jones, Kelsey, and boom, because they have to pay that much money. So we had more to pay than Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins got offered the twenty million dollar contract before the season. That was market bro, money. He should have got paid wanted. way more than that, bro. What do you That's mean? He, he wanted you have to make a choice. Do you build your team around your defensive tackle or do you build yes. it around the he's, no. your best, he's your best player right now? Yes. What do you mean? He's your and most it, consistent player. Yes, he's your best your player. Exact identical uh stats. And we're paying him eight million dollars next Who? year. Who? Zach Sealer. You know why yeah. he's able to have the same identical stats? Because why? you had everybody fucking focusing on Christian you're Wilkins, right. who you're is right. your all pro. That's Wilkins why. And look how Jay- much I watch how it looks. It's gonna look completely different right. now. Oh. You're not gonna have Chubb in, you're not gonna have Phillips in for the first part of the season. You're gonna have Sealer out there by himself. And when that offense, when that That's defensive it. line That's don't look okay. the same, I don't want to hear it. And when all you right. see fucking Christian right. Wilkins in a Raiders uniform dominating. Fucking splitting gaps, getting pressures on the quarterback from the interior, wow. which is which is how Kansas City's won Super Bowls for the last two years. If you haven't noticed, they just stick Chris Jones in the middle over the center. He just blows him up and puts pressure in the quarterback, and they can't do shit. So again, Sealer has the same exact amount of sacks than as Wilkins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, again, less pressure and less focus. I, That's okay. You didn't watch the games, okay? There are I many didn't watch the games, but yeah, I could tell you how fucking Tua we'll beat the, the Jets. You, you brought up the Jets on Twitter me. yesterday, right? You brought up the Jets. That was the one game that Tua won without Tyreek. The one team that couldn't fucking score points, but I don't watch the games. You try to tell me I don't watch the Dolphins games. I watch the Dolphins games just for these arguments. 
Okay. <laughs> I, okay. I, I, I yeah, believe that might down. happen. So, hey, by the way, can you see the can you see the screen, brother? Yes, brother. Uh, okay, this is it. Zach Sealer. That's good enough. Okay. This is Zach Sealer. Just so you Ten can see. And it was his best seven. season. It was his best season, was it not? His not best season. Sack wise, not tackle wise. I'd say it was his best season. Because overall. guess what? It was a overall. season where he didn't have to be the guy. He could be the second defensive tackle that sat there and got fucking one on ones. That's why he was dominant. They were paying him eight million dollars, so twenty million dollars less than what Christian Wilkins was getting. So the whole wow, objective bro, is again, we also have, bro, we also have Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. You're acting like Christian Wilkins They're is fucking one coming off ACLs. They're not even going to be playing in training camp, bro. Act like you know something. About. They're already on track just to play week one. Didn't he, didn't he fucking tear his Achilles? Bradley Chubb is supposed to come. Yes. They're supposed to oh already. Oh, my God. You think court. these guys are going to come back and be the same Her player? Report. Oh, my fucking God. You think they're going to be the same player? The reports. Christian Wilkins, I have his stats if you want to see those right now. Deuce. Well, I mean, I was just yeah. making sure he can. So less better. sacks, less tackles. Okay. But now. When you look at his stats, look at Christian Wilkins' sacks because we like to do this with Tua. Look at his game by game and look at the, the, the teams whenever we play a good team. Stats were absent. Okay. Mm. Now, again, I, I love Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins is one of my favorite players on the team. But the reality of the situation was that we had to make a decision. We gave him a, a very good contract offer. Hey, man, He's, listen. He you said he wanted, saying you don't want the same production. Oh, hold on. He he said he wanted to bet on himself. He did. He went and got market setting money. That's good for him. Now, scheme wise, we went ahead and built at the linebacker position, which we didn't do. Our 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 defense runs oh, more God. off of the defensive line engaging rather than Christian Wilkins being a gap shooter. That does matter. There's also three, four, five really good defensive tackles in this draft. So there is so it's not to say that today is the roster that we're gonna play with, but you have to lose players when they're all good. What what I got from the Christian Wilkins thing is that we have that many guys that we've drafted that need to get paid. Brandon Jones went and got a decent contract. Raekwon Davis went and got a decent contract. You have Chris Wilkins going again top money. So you have Ron okay, Hunt. so we're we're pointing out again, I was right. Poor roster management. This is poor roster management. No. You're basically saying all these guys are going other places and getting paid because they're good players. You know how the San Francisco 49ers stay in the playoffs every year? They keep good players in their franchise, bro. You they're don't want your best franchise players, players walk. Okay, and you're paying a quarterback practically fucking nothing, too. What do you mean? You're not paying a, top, a quarterback top dollar. You got money tied up in fucking players so, that aren't playing. So $28 million is comparable to 500000 uh, who's getting twenty eight million as a quarterback for 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 you? Two right. is getting twenty eight million. I believe that's what his that's what his uh, cap hit is. It's not twenty eight million. It's not twenty million. Is that but after anyway. the, the uh, exercise in the fifth year? Or is that I want to say it was. Yeah, I think it goes up significantly. But I mean, that's true yeah. still to that to this day. But and before, and it, actually, if, if we were to give him his, his extension, yeah, we save money on the cap. Already? No, no. Oh, if you're saying if we gave, yeah, him, if we uh, give him, I believe we save money on this year's uh, cap because because uh, it extends it out. So, uh, so, like honestly, you look at the roster today versus last season. Outside of what we we still have to hit a draft, I'm honestly uh, looking at it. Uh, any biased opinion out and saying I'm as happy with this roster as I was with last year's. You look at the corner position we upgraded. Kendall Fuller is better than Xavier Howard. You look at all the no, linebackers. He's not. Of- no, he's not. Bro, oh what are God. you talking bro? No, he's not. If you're coming from a person who watched Kyle Fuller, Kendall Fuller play last year for the Commanders, he's not better. I don't know bro, where you think he was Howard better. Got his ass beat almost every week, bro. Bro, they didn't even put Kendall Fuller on fucking number ones. They had a rookie playing number ones because Kendall Fuller was too fucking slow. He, bro, I, you know what I'm saying, dog? Like, I feel like yeah, you think Taylor, because right? you number get one. veteran you players. Talking? We have Jalen Ramsey for number ones. Okay. And Xavier and Howard got cooked. Why? Because the number twos in your division could be number ones in other divisions, right? Isn't that what you're saying? The coordinator wouldn't switch sides. But Xavier and Howard has oh. lost two, three steps in coverage. You can't he hide him. Bad. He's still on the field. You're not hiding him. What, I mean, it's either he's going to be on the left yeah. side of the field. He's a good player. Bro, it, it is, again, you 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 want to use PFF as, as a Bible until it talks about Kendall Fuller, right? Because because they have him rated as a good corner. Yeah, I because guess. Cause, cause Washington let him walk out the fucking building. 
they, they cut him bro. to save cap space because he was such a great fucking player. Because you're also right, bro. Stevens alignment top fucking money. Again, it matters. What you pay people fucking matters. You can't just keep everybody Who are we around. paying top money? We're paying two people. We have the most cap in the whole fucking NFL. We have $90 million. You think right. we're afraid to pay players? What are we talking about? We let him walk You're because he's not the same player. You're he's not the same player. We want to play quality You're player. Right. He's not that guy. Here. He's at his all-time worst. Bro, he's You're fucking 32, Paul. Do you really think he's in his prime? Is he 32? He's fucking old. I'll check, I'll check here. Uh, so I just want to save double back on the two uh, contract situation. So this year he's at twenty three million. Twenty three. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then before then though, Deuce, you were kind of on the right track. His first year he was six hundred thousand base salary and four million, almost five million in the signing bonus. Uh, so he was under, he was under ten million per uh, per for every year. Yeah, and, and, and as so, low as as low as five point five million, right. and then as high as nine. Well, and that's how you guys were able to go in and cash out last yeah, year, know, and I'm basically about, bet the house on everything. I'm saying his he wasn't completely he wasn't completely wrong when he was like, oh, you guys are paying your quarterback less when he's criticizing what has happened previously. But but, but our roster last year wasn't a bad roster. Our roster was a really good roster. No, it's like he paid a lot of money for it. That's my point. Right. So then this year we couldn't. Because our because our quarterback because our quarterback has to go up sixteen seventeen million dollars. No, he that, doesn't because he doesn't earn it. He ain't earned it. He don't have to go up. That. No, sure I, can't, that. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. If we're not going to have the again, if we can't do, if you can't because well, you want to give him forty five million dollars, oh, you, you can't do a real. What do you mean? He's not worth twenty three. Like, like, stop, like, stop being unrealistic. You just said you want to pay him fifteen million dollars to twenty million dollars more. So you want to pay him forty-five to fifty million dollars is what you're saying. First of all, again, keep up. We're talking about Did, twenty. I want to pay him fifteen million dollars more. Is that not what you said? And listen again, keep up. So twenty. Did you not say I want to pay him fifteen million dollars more than that? <laughs> Did you not say that? Am I missing something? Are, are, you said yeah, that, no? Context, clearly. <laughs> you clearly missed Okay, so now we're going to add context because you just yeah, said yeah, a blanket let's, statement let's, that didn't make sense. Okay. Let, let's hear what he has to say real quick. So you were saying how in 2023 that it, it wasn't a cap hit, right? Last year wasn't a cap hit. We had all that money. So why didn't we sign Christian Wilkins to more money? Why didn't we pay him more? That's and a I, question for Greer. And I am arguing that this year we have to pay him sixteen million more because he cost twenty three million dollars to the cap. The this cap year. goes up every fucking year. What you don't use carries over. I don't understand more. what you're talking about. That is sixteen million dollars more. So you can't then add twenty extra million to a fucking defensive tackle that is that now you're overpaying. You have a roster. Okay. Oh, with- so you're basically saying they didn't pay their all pro defensive tackle to save a quarterback. You feel to, to pay a quarterback. Percent. It's beyond forty-five it's beyond. million dollars, not this year, but the following no, year to pay him. The following year, when the cap goes up again, so when Tua actually gets his contract, it doesn't Do even think- affect Christian Wilkins because you could have paid him last year and this year. But Tua's contract will get paid the following year, so you can't sign Christian Wilkins. That makes no fucking sense. Yeah. Bro, you could have signed him multiple times. So, so Christian Wilkins, yeah, because okay, because the money doesn't because the gap doesn't roll over like like the money for Christian Wilkins is in one year. He's only taking twenty seven million. The rest of the seasons, he's playing for free. That, that that's the way that's going to work. Bro, no, the cap goes up every no, year. The cap that you don't use rolls over into the next year. You're going to have to then resign Von Holland, Jalen Waddle, Jalen Phillips, Bainey contracts, Austin Jackson. You're, you're telling me you're doing it for one player. You see how you just said you have to save all that money for fucking Tua, but you have four other players you have to sign. This is your problem. Y'all are not signing your great young talents early, and now you're going to lose them. And you're going to sit here and you're going to protect Greer, but you're going to have a talent full of fucking bums in five years. Bro, like, like, it's – listen. I'm just saying. You guys – listen, listen. Washington has a second pick. You guys are hosting four quarterbacks at one time, Okay. Hopefully you guys figure it out, and then hopefully your quarterback can can, can play themselves into a contract. Well, then that would then happen is you're going to see that your team, like every other fucking team that has a quarterback that's actually good, has to then sacrifice other pieces because the quarterback gets the the largest piece of the puzzle. And you're asking, do I want to pay him forty five fifty? Here's Not the answer: every team does that. Only teams Be that do more, that do no. that when they have a top ten guy. Stop what the bullshit. What team doesn't? Uh, New the York team. Giants. The okay, New York Giants didn't do that. <laughs> the New York Giants did that. The Los Angeles Rams did that. 
The Detroit Lions the did York, that? The New York Giants okay. didn't overpay for Daniel Jones? Eli no, Manning motherfucker, they didn't overpay. They paid him an average contract. Are you saying Average. They paid him an the average Daniel contract. Jones contract is talked about as one of the worst contracts in the league because he got paid Here, so hey, much. I just want to give because this he's a fucking point. terrible, not because the money's bad. Because he's bad. Hey, hey, real quick, just so I can move on, I want to keep on being able to look up stuff for you guys. So this, Kendall Fuller, because this was we weren't right on this. He's actually 29 years. 29. Old. So just so you know. So I all this shit information out the way so I can keep on the stuff. You guys so again, about. so so again. What was it you guys just said that I was like, oh, I need to look that up. You guys were just yelling about it. Fuck. Damn. All right, go ahead. You can keep on cooking. So uh, so so look. Again, the market is 4550. Okay, crazy. that's the market. Justin Herbert, who has zero playoff wins. Justin Herbert, who who has who hasn't who hasn't played as good as to a statistically past two seasons. It's over what 50. The fuck are you talking about? What in the fuck is over 50? Justin Bro, Herbert leading has not listen, played better than listen, Tua? He, are you fucking joking? Has he led the league in passing? Has he Justin been top three in pass rating? Has he been top three in pass rating? For the first three years of his career, Paul, has he, what the fuck are you talking about? He's dude, been better again, than Justin Herbert? Okay, you want to use the first three years, or are we using the past two years and now? What are we oh, doing here? What are we four. doing here? He played better. What are you talking again, about, bro? Again, okay, sure thing, sure thing. <laughs> Win loss yes. record, two has better. I'm gonna pull that up here. I'm gonna pull up oh uh, uh, some some Holy Herbert stats, but before shit. before we move on, I just want to hit on uh, Daniel Jones's contract. So 35 million for this year, 30 million for next year, and then uh, 46 million his last year. 46 uh, total contract mm, was 160 million for four and really years. It's, it's cap hit. Look at cap 47 million in 2024. He's gonna well, right paid. here. Total guaranteed is 92 million. Yeah. He's yeah. gonna get the cap to the hit to the cap is gonna be four over forty million for Daniel Jones. So that's gonna well, be yeah, his contract sure. and the extension. Hundred percent, so I'll, I'll pay two million Daniel deal. Jones. That's I'll pay two million. One hundred percent. I mean, but you're getting it is significantly more. You're talking about like fifteen million dollars more or whatever. Yeah, right? you're talking about. Well, yeah, you're talking about the cap at around fifty. So again, but but that's the market value. Again, you can say what you Bro, want. That's Here's included with Daniel when Jones' you look, rookie deal. Don't even let that fucking shit. Yeah, we have heard him, in there too, uh, bro. him aside from just yelling oh, at your points. That, that. What? So, did you want to like land a point with the whole Justin Herbert thing? I'm going to pull up his stats. I want to give you a second to talk, dudes, because we haven't got too much of you aside from you just like responding and yelling at Paul while he's talking. So, did you have like a, a point that you wanted to land on why you wanted to get away from paying Tua or why they should move on this year or whatever? Because I'm trying to be clear also on, on what point you're trying to make with Tua because Paul's also even though he loves Tua but he's also making a a argument from Tua is our quarterback he is the quarterback that we have so I mean if you have that guy on the roster then you want to you want to lock him in I think he's that makes a lot of sense by the way completion percentage uh, on the career for Justin Herbert is 66.6 .6. so I mean, take that for what devil yeah. that's the devil like mark music. of the beast brother. fucking yeah, you want to pay him out there in Los Angeles yeah, what you are pay you him? doing go ahead you know, mean, that, that's your boy <laughs> that's, your <laughs> that's your boy <laughs> that's your guy he's the six, best six six but by the way Deuce can you see what I'm showing yeah okay I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for you um Deuce can you see it because I don't see you on camera Oh, we might have lost him actually. Uh, well, so but yeah, this no, is like, his like, argument. Like, I don't like, need to like make Herbert. it. But well, here I just want to point this out. If he pops on, I'll make it this yeah. point to him. But I will say Herbert has actually regressed over the last two seasons. Thank you. And uh, um, yeah, his first two years, you know, he had a he came out hot, but since then he hasn't thrown for over twenty five touchdowns. So, right. which is good. But you know, um, which, which which again, that's thing. So and again, it's no shot at Herbert. Herbert's a great quarterback. Yeah, but it's just that yes, when you look at QB rating, yards per attempt, yards per completion, passing yards, touchdowns, everything that, that you use to measure the game of the quarterback plays, Tua is top five statistically in all of it. So then you have to say, okay, at the very worst of the conversation, we have to respectfully, if it's a real conversation, say top ten. Mm -hmm. Like you, you cannot statistically take him out. Whether you like that his body frame is smaller than you want. Or that he can't throw the ball as far as 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 your favorite quarterback. Yeah, the the proof is in the pudding. Now the argument comes to: Is he part of that top five conversation? And again, you have the Lamar, the Hurts, the Burrow, the Allen, the Mahomes is just there. You have the Rodgers. You have all these people that you want to talk about. That's fair, hundred mm -hmm. percent. But you have to at least say that he's there. So then, when you look, okay. Enough. That's where he's at. Then the market value is this. Then yes, he's worth fifty million. That's the market. And then yes, the salary cap went up. 
mm-hmm. which means that that 50 million doesn't carry as much weight as it did when Herbert signed the contract. So how can you as an organization go to Tua and say, hey, we don't value you as much as they value him? Mm-hmm. That's well, I mean, not going to work. Well, I mean, and it's because free agency, so he can just He's go been, get right. it on the open market. So it's like, um, and then, and then again, Chris Greer comes out and goes and laughs at the notion that, hey, are you guys going to? Have you guys thought about? Uh, there's reports of you guys drafting quarterback first round. He laughs and like we look at all positions, but that is one that we haven't even thought of. Like we, we're not, we're not going to add a quarterback. This is our quarterback, mm-hmm. and Dolphin fans have to accept it. The NFL, I don't give a fuck. Okay, he has to figure out what Washington's going to do with their second pick. Mm-hmm. But as far as our team, again, we've talked about it. The roster overall still looks like a highly competitive roster. And we still have draft. Do you think with Tua there's any chance? Because, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Because I mean, I mentioned this as far as the, the market. Somebody being able to go to the market and then uh, get a price. So, therefore, as the franchise that has that player on their team already, you're put in a position to pay them or else they can go get paid that. Do you think there's any chance that the league doesn't value Tua in that way? Like where he wouldn't be able to go out and command a top, top uh, quarterback salary? Um, Based I, off an of injury or something I, like that? I don't. I, I feel you think like, he would be able to. Yes. Okay. Again, uh, when, and what I'm going to use as my example for that is one, when you look at, we're just talking about respect for around the league. When you look yeah. at the, the NFL top 100 list, right? Those are players voted by players, right? Yeah. Tua, Tua was on that last year. Deuce, we have you in the thing, by the way. Tua was on that last year at a respectful spot. I want to say in the 20s or 30s. I forget exactly where. No, maybe it was worse than that. But I forget where, where he was. But he's in the top 100. NFL top 100? Yeah, but he was in the top I'm should be, I'm tripping probably. He's probably 50. Okay. But, um, I know he was on the list. So at least you have that respect. And I think he'll be on this year's list much higher or lower, however you look at that, closer to the... the yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. But um, I think that when you look at coaches and you look at how they scheme for Miami, you see the respect for what our quarterback does. Mm, okay. Now, whether or not that is every coach or every GM would be like, oh, I want Tua. Yeah. No. I, I do I, think that a Minnesota, a, Keith, a, a Kevin O'Connell... To look at what Tua does and say that fits my offense extremely well. Obviously, you have Kyle Shanahan. Obviously, you have uh, a guy like uh, what's his name, Pew Pew Pew, Gannon down in Arizona. Oh, gotcha. You you have you have offenses that it fits exactly what he does. Now again, he can't go into every system and just do what they do. But it's the same says for a lot of quarterbacks coming into any system, it has to work. The marriage has to work. Sure. And Deuce, I want to bring you back into the conversation. Can you hear me? Of course, brother. I could hear you. Perfect, perfect. So uh, what I just asked uh, Paul was, because he made a really good point. He's like, he's basically his point is like, regardless of how you feel about Tua, if statistically he's a top ten quarterback, and let's just let's go forward with that, so we can have this argument. Um, then you either have to pay him because that's what market dictates or else he's going to hit the open market and he's going to find that money somewhere else. Now I push back on that and I want to hear your opinion on that. Is this maybe a rare situation where based off like just the extra stuff around the player that may be true or may not to, to Paul's point um, that he may actually not be able to hit the open market and demand a top quarterback's money. Do you think to make that more concise, I wanted to add more detail for the audience, but to make that more clear for you, do you think that if Tua were to be a free agent, he would be able to demand that kind of money from uh, whatever team? I don't think he gets that money outside of Miami. If he gets like a big contract. Why is that? Just because he doesn't translate, like I know Paul saying he translates to Kyle Shanahan's offense and this guy's offense, but in reality, I mean, he he truly doesn't. I mean, here's the thing: is Tua a top ten guy? No, he's not a top ten guy, right? In talent, okay. Um, okay. when you're going to pay guys like the Mahomes money and stuff like that, what about Kirk Cousins? To- Kirk Cousins is an outlier just because he's a smart fucking businessman and he set his price. Uh-huh. Kirk was smart. I said it back then when he first went to the Vikings and he set his price and what he did guaranteed at the height of his career. <laughs> he was always going to be able to make that kind of money because he set his price really high. You know what I'm saying? So even though that it's fallen down now, years later, it's still high. It's still a high number for Kirk Cousins, you know? Yeah. Um, now, Tua can do that, too, to where he sets his number at 45, 50 and he'll be able to get a 35 40 million dollar contract the rest of his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. I'm in the 60s. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's very, that's, that's very well possible. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I just think when it comes to Tilla, you just don't know what you're going to get on a game in game in basis. So it's okay. hard to go in paying him that money. You know, like it's like almost when you, when Tyreek Hill said, I want to be the highest paid receiver and just break the bank. Miami was like, yep, no problem. You know what I'm saying? They knew where they were getting out of him. Sure. They knew, they knew what they were getting. They knew he was going to be there for most of the games, play through her injuries. You know what I'm saying? And be the focal point of the offense, you know, and take a leadership role with Tua. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like, okay, like, good quarterback but limited in a few ways and you're just not sure what you're gonna get out of them and then in the playoffs it just it wasn't pretty yeah i i think it's 20 mile per hour win i think there might be some hesitation by some teams just based off some of the you know narratives around to it but i don't know i mean I, I, it would be it would actually be interesting to see because i my gut tells me that he would actually be able to hit free agency and and get that from somebody but i do think he ha- is in a unique position because of the narrative around him that it wouldn't be like like if justin herbert hit even though i think they're probably around the same level of skill i don't doubt that he would have so many suitors that would want to no and, and, and again yeah. and 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 i agree with that and yeah. again i feel like that is all when you look at the ceiling conversation which is kind of like a bullshit but like a real conversation yeah. for what's the ceiling yeah. so like and i get that um like some pushback would be like like the dolphins like, herbert that I did. Yeah, like I, I did with you. I think you fell off, but I'll, I'll pull them up again. Yes. Like as far as like the Dolphins are to him, like I can mm-hmm. say that every report, like I said, Chris Greer laughs at any notion that he's not in the quarterback. They have flat out said over and over, like we are extending him. There is Tua said like it's getting done. I, I believe we're waiting after June first because again, like there's a whole part of the salary cap yeah, where this matters, yeah. and it's like it's just going to get done. Don't worry about it. It's, it's not a thing. <laughs> um, as far as like his narrative. What is narrative that he gets hurt? Mm-hmm. Well, he finished the whole year, and I will and I will ask this question: How many seasons in the past? Burrow's been in the league this four or five years. Mm-hmm. How many has he finished the whole year? One, right? Right. So yeah. it, there's no narrative though. There, uh, okay. Herbert back to back seasons has had injuries that maybe not kept him out of the game, but then there's always that. Well, when he doesn't play well or stats dropped, well, he was hurt. Maybe it's because he went to the Super Bowl though. Well, Burrow, and that's the thing is he's the only one. Like, like, like I had this conversation with my brother. Like, Allen, people say, "Oh, he's so close. He's so close." They haven't even made it to a Super Bowl yet. Mm-hmm. There was one game where they went to overtime with with Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Okay, outside of that, they Great haven't been played close. Yeah, Burrow, I'll give you, man. He was one fucking play away from winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, like, like he, like he belongs in that in that conversation. But again, you're running into he has been hurt every year. Yeah, but I think that where some of that confidence would come from with Joe Burrow. And I do, I mean, I'm not saying that's totally fair, but um, I do think some of that confidence comes from just like seeing it proven. And also, by the way, something we can't, we can't get around just to a small, you know, honestly. Well, so, okay. Well, what, what's small? Like, like just to a, <laughs> no, I mean, so like around his size, like under six feet, but he's, he's um, but not he's, athletic. He's six one. He's yeah. six foot six one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. he, he, he I mean, is. he does. He, okay, that's fine. I'll take okay. your. I'll take your word for this. He's two hundred and thirty. Okay. He was two hundred thirty-five pounds last year. Like, yeah, like, he was like, bigger. He was like bigger. How big? He was actually bigger last year, which yeah. I actually appreciated. And then, then this, years before that, though, I mean, maybe you wouldn't agree with this, but in my opinion, yeah, he was seeing, leaner. Yeah, and seeing him on the field, yeah. he looked like he didn't belong. He, was he looked small, like a little fucking right. kid. Which again, that was the again, yeah, like yeah. the recovery process. And again, he put on yeah, all that weight. I think this year they say he's down to two twenty, two twenty-five. It's because he wants to be leaner and they're running more. Sure, yeah. Which again, you can say again, like not athletic, the number one dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. You don't get that by not being athletic in high school, yeah. but you get that by being an athlete. Mm-hmm. A five star consensus number one pick until you break a hip. Mm-hmm. You have the talent, so it's yeah. like all that didn't go away. You had a year of him re- rehabbing from a hip, then him getting injured, and then now you're looking at. Him now being okay. This is last year was like who was coming out for really. I, I, well, I think we've talked about this the year before was really like him coming out, and then he got then the concussion shit muddied that. Yeah, yeah. But this was the hey, listen. Can we go to two of that now? And who's two is? Oh, okay. So yeah, sure. Which again, I said first three years Herbert by far. Last two years, two has outplayed Herbert. Yeah, but um, but I think that with uh. With yeah, like 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 it was him coming out and like yeah, uh, we, we no, can sit there and say, say that, brother. 
stats. Last year his stats were by far stats, better. Yeah, the stats do actually. And, and then the year before again, we look at a 13 <laughs> season. What do you mean by far better? Season. What are you talking about, bro? Well, you could say like Pull so. Up Justin the, Herbert's the, stats, bro. His stats were better every yeah. fucking year. No, they're not. Um, the well, only thing year, fucking two is better is it is his fucking rating at 101 and 105, and Herbert's at and like 97. He, 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 he has more. Bro, yeah, the, yeah. the lowest passing yards he's had for a fucking season is 3,000 yards. More bro. He had more touchdowns and more yards than Justin Herbert last year. Now, Justin Herbert got hurt. So no, he didn't, he bro. Look at it. I was just hey, looking at it. No, he didn't. 29 bro, I, fucking I just put it up for 14, you. Okay, remember this. Questions. Remember this, okay? Just give me one second. Just fucking please remember this because I already showed you Justin Herbert's stats. We were just looking at him. So 4,600 yards and 29 touchdowns. Let's just make it easy for ourselves. Go back. 3,100 yards and 20 touchdowns, brother. That's less. This is Justin Herbert's. You, bro, he threw fucking tw 15 fucking interceptions, bro. Give me a break. <laughs> well, right. say that. Say All that. Right. Don't say All that. Right. Don't say that he had more yards because he had over a thousand yards less and he had nine less touchdowns. Uh, now, like I said, the, the appropriate thing would be okay. Justin Herbert got hurt this year, so maybe that's why his stats are a little bit down. Mike Williams but, is down. All that. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's fair stuff to say, but I think there is something to be said with Justin Herbert and. I think Paul's He's making got this five thousand really well. more passing career. He's regressed right? every year. Well, I mean, I guess you could say his second year he kind of didn't regress. He threw more interceptions, but more yards and more touchdowns. But since his second year, less yards the next year, less touchdowns the next year. After that, less yards, less touchdowns. He's so, I mean, that's a little concern. He's had and he's, by the way, but he's been with the same head coach. Uh, the coordinator thing is a fair point. And that's, but that's a point that also goes for Tua because he had that same issue for the first three years. No, he's had three head <laughs> so, coaches, bro. Who? Fucking Herbert. He's had Herbert had two head coaches. Two, right? He had Lynn, yeah, he had Staley, that one white yeah. dude, and he had another dude. Oh, I guess because they probably had an oh, interim. interim. Yeah, yeah okay, sure. Yeah, but okay. it, yeah. But again, but again, Anthony Lynn is a you. great play caller. Uh Kellen Moore is a good play caller. Yes, that season has changed. He had more yards this defense. year with uh with uh, um, McCarthy. McCarthy yeah. So um, but again, th th again, this isn't a conversation to say that Herbert is bad or that Herbert is worse than Tua. Well, and even this Paul is, would probably say pay, pay Herbert. Yeah, yes. This is the conversation yeah. of I that mean, they Herbert are already got paid. We don't have to worry about Herbert getting paid. And that's he's the, an agreement. Yes, and he's that's the thing is that they're on the same level. You're saying pay Herbert. No, nope. bro. You got to think. Herbert they're has 114 on career level. touchdowns. He has almost 5,000 more career pass yards. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's on a different, it's a different level. even starting his first year. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It's not, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Bro, and, I mean, and, you know, it, 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 was it, it, in and out of the starting job. He was sitting there fighting Kirkpatrick and shit. Come on, bro. Stats, I mean, that's Kirkpatrick, again, that was Flores. But again, l let me ask you this. If you would have taken year six and looked at Aaron Rodgers versus uh, Alex Smith, you would have been like, Alex Smith is by far the better quarterback. Look at his career yards and touchdowns compared to Aaron Rodgers. Aaron I mean, Rodgers has been playing two years. Game. He sat for a few years. He only has been playing for a couple. But again, those years count because he should have been better than Brett Favre. Right, uh, Brett no, Favre no, was old and retired. It's and watching <laughs> the tape, watching the tape. Also, when you watch Joe Bur when you watch Joe Burrow, when you watch these other guys throw the football, bro, they're thrown in the tighter windows. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's guys not accurate, though. You're th oh, that is just something that you're saying to grandstand on. When you put oh, the God. film on, though, you are seeing the windows that that two is fitting the ball in. Tyreek Hill is running wide open, Paul. Waddle That's, is running right the, again, by people. He oh has two of the top receivers in whatever, the NFL. Oh. Good, good brother, it's okay. I mean, because, bro, because, they it's, have it's had like, a thousand like, yards. Like, you, you say something said, that has the truth, you just and then said it's like he's had a thousand. Waddle had a thousand yards yeah. every year since oh, he's been this, a rookie. This, this yeah, I mean, you know, so it does does Nico no, Collins run open? Does Devontae Adams run open? Does Smart Face run open? Does Justin Jefferson run open? You say that Waddle needs to get paid as receivers that run open something million dollars a year, and then. He had a thousand yards every every year since a rookie. He broke the rookie receptions record. Then he had Tyreek Hill over there breaking fucking receiving records and shit like that. They're saying he might break the. Wait, who's throwing the ball? Does that not count? So Tyreek Hill, it's all about Tyreek Kill, but his stats have gotten better since he got to Miami than it was in Kansas City. Has nothing. You know why? Well, because he's he catching more passes. Oh. He's catching more passes in, in Miami, Paul. You're throwing him the ball way more. He has way more usage. Hey, can in you bring up his career stats? Tyreek Hill career stats. Like uh, he literally uh, has more usage in in, in Miami awesome. than Kansas City. He Listen, literally okay. accounts for twenty. I think you looked it up. You said it was twenty nine percent of your pass yeah. offense, brother. 
Every you, team's number one receiver gets the majority of the What do you want to see? Targets. Team's number one receivers are at like 21, bro. Give That's me a not break. True. We've it. been over this. And I sent you all this shit. You did. Tyreek and I'm Hill wasn't even number one in the league in targets. What did you want to pull from this? I pulled it up. So, so no, we're just going to – so, Kansas City, 111. One, mm -hmm. So, okay, so his, his year in Kansas City with 111 receptions, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. And eight more catches. What? What? Way more targets. Okay. Uh, uh, what's that? Almost five hundred more bro, yards. That's not even the targets. That's only receptions, Paul. Give me a break, bro. If we put up the receptions, it's yeah, fucking the double. Too, but what, yeah. So hold on. What's your what's your counter to this? Because this we're only looking at receptions. What's your point with that point? No, he said he. I said targets, and he's like, oh, look at the receptions. It's like, bro, look. And the receptions has, are way more. He's in the hundreds every year. He's in Miami. He's in the hundreds. Well, he's then, never been in the eighties. But he, but he's increased his yards by five hundred. What about with eight well, more yes, catches? But he's fucking getting more catches and more targets. Is what I'm. He thinking. has more yards per catch besides the 2018 season. Well, yeah, and for I, I mean, and, but even for this, like this year, it's only an eight difference. Even if you're talking about like a 20, uh, 20 receptions difference, that's not going to make up for fucking five hundred yards, brother. Right. It's it, 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 again. Look it, at the targets, brother. Oh my. No, we, I, I am going to. Can, the can you ever first. just say yes? Like, well, can no, you ever on, just say way. like 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 you know what? Like 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 you're right. Like like he did have a better. Oh, like, he had his more is <laughs> like, how is there not like, high? <laughs> Is in Kansas City, and you want to act like that? That has nothing to do with your with your. Oh, quarterback actually, it's actually pretty on point. Talent. So check this out. So just based off his last year, it's he has eight more receptions. He only has eleven more targets. I mean, so, I mean we've already crazy. been over that again. You if, uh, if you look at twenty twenty three uh, receiving stats and look at re uh, targets, mm -hmm. he's not top two or three. I believe. I think he's like fourth or fifth in targets. When you look okay. at that, every other team's number one receiver gets over 120, tar like 105 to 130 targets. It's like, yeah, that's that's on par with with what teams do. Yeah, like sense. like that that makes sense. And then their number two has around eight fifty something to eighty receptions. And then the number three so, has forty to fifty. Tyreek was. 30. I mean, no, that's like <laughs> fucking top. That's like top receivers get eighty receptions, bro. Give me a break, dude. Oh, what what top receiver? About? Okay, what top receiver has has eighty receptions? Bro, look up Jalen Waddle's receptions right now. I guarantee that's not you that's not our targets. top receiver. Yeah, that is our top, second. Brother. And then when Tyreek Hill goes out, who's the top well, receiver? Let's look at who's, the eighty. You one? said eighty receptions or eighty targets. Right, let's look at eighty target players. All right, so uh, at eighty, and I'll go up from eighty to ninety. Gabe Davis, Brandon Cooks, Dallas Goder, Jahan Dotson, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Christian Kirk, Jonathan Mingo, uh, Alvin. No, but that's 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 against your point, brother. Yeah, that's eighty. Yeah, targets. these are eighty targets. You're saying that's. Uh, but that's start what I'm saying that's all twos. That could be ones, right? Look oh, at their okay. contract. <laughs> okay, I got it. Vashawn Robinson, Jerry Judy, Tyler Conklin, Deontay Johnson, uh, Dalton Schultz, Debo Samuel at eighty nine. So I'd say this is probably your first guy that you would say could be considered a number, a number one. one. Yeah. Um, and then you got Cortland Sutton, well, uh, and Kirk Colton got Matt, and George, George Kittle. Kittle. At ninety, but was he was that? overpaid, and everybody knew he was overpaid. No, he wasn't. He fucking broke a thousand Kirk. yards. He fucking earned the contract. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, guess, I mean, you could even okay, you could point at that, but then that's two examples out of all the rest Go of these up. guys that are not number one. Jahan Dotson, he had he, Tyler Boyd, he fucking had more receptions than fucking Marcus Brown. These guys, so Tyler Boyd's at ninety eight targets. Now Jamar Chase was down. I think yep. last year, so his little went up. Yeah. But okay, so who, so so let's look at number one. So that's what I'm saying. He's getting targets, bro. Like he's, he's getting targets like a number one. Wait, brother. So, look, so, look, so but 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 this is what I wanted to prove. Yeah. See, he saw P teams number ones have all these targets. Jalen Waddle, who we don't throw the ball to him. Remember, yeah. we only throw the ball to Tyreek Kill. He's the only God one. Knows. A whole offense, yeah. way way more than everybody game. else. Pissing me off. 104 <laughs> targets. Yeah. So Average. we're targeting our number two. A no lot. I never said you weren't. But we can't target one person and then not target another guy <laughs> in extreme. Like, like it can't be that way. You're saying that Tyreek Kill's usage is why was why two his numbers are the way they are. But then you look I said at both. I said both their usage is why the, his numbers are the way they are. I mean, who else is he going to throw to? And then also Tyreek is uh, so he has 171 targets, and we're talking about so he does have 70 more targets than Jalen Waddle, right? Which is expected. which well, again, there's not, two, at, there's not five. Be, well, I want to look. Uh, you who's can't number one more than five receiving cores better than the one. 
one is uh, CD Lamb. Okay, so Michael Gallup. Where's Michael Gallup? Because that you would be can't number name two. five receiving cores. Yeah, but, than I, don't, I just want to put him in the same class of a number two as Waddle. I think Waddle. It makes sense why he's up there. Personally, he's, he's a, a fucking really, number one. That's why. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely a really solid number two. Um, all right, so I guess maybe well, he, Calvin he Ridley. Rookie year, he put up 120 yard receptions and 1,000 yards receiver. One of them, I guess, is a number one. And he was down, but again, there's just kind of oh, more. Oh, right here, Devontae that. Smith. To uh, Let's compare him to yeah. uh, A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown, 158 to Devontae Smith's. Uh, I might have lost him. Right here, 112. 112. So 158 is what 20 less targets than yeah. which again Jalen Hurts runs the ball more than, True. than so that that's again good, that pretty, balances out. But again, so so do. I want to name five receiving uh, cores better. Again, you're moving well, you're moving is, this argument. I, I so mean, much. I don't know. Theirs is a little no, bit not. to Deuce's art to Deuce's point. AJ and uh Devontae, they are like that is quite a bit closer than what Tyreek and Jalen is, I would say. Although the thing is, didn't Jalen wasn't Jalen hurt? That's the I'm trying to keep up with all that shit. Yeah, like you're just looking at raw numbers. It's kind yeah, of like, like he got hurt a little bit. And again, this is like some games. And this Devontae is where probably didn't that I remember. No, Devontae, I don't think AJ Brown, I think missed maybe a little. Okay. But uh he might have caught Tyreek if he played the full. Yeah, game. but again, like if you if you're even looking at that, so at so let's say me. uh Tyreek Hill had how many more? Uh, Tyreek had uh, like 70 more. It was like targets. Like, yeah, 70 more targets. He had 171 targets, and I think uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about uh, to AJ Brown. Oh, uh, so 158 to 171. So he had 13. Like 13 yeah. And then uh, Tyreek, uh, Jalen Waddle was like 10. 101. It was a 70 reception. Difference. So so it was 101 to 171. No, 112. Oh yeah. So you're looking at 11. So there's a so total there's a two target difference. So if you're looking at be- between the the ones and twos, yeah, you're. I mean, yeah, you know, I I'm not doing that math in my head. I'm not following you completely, but I feel you. I know you're doing it. So yeah. I'll so, so if you point. add AJ Brown yeah. and Devontae Smith's targets, I understand. And then you add Tyreek Kill and Jalen Waddles, you're getting the same amount of targets by two, the two difference between your number one and number two targets. So if you were to do that between the top five, I think you're going to like like five, top five groups between ones and twos. You're going to look <laughs> at a consistent number. Who else do you throw the ball to? Who else do you throw the ball to? Why are you laughing, Deuce? Go ahead, brother. Let us know. Because, brother, I mean, this is this is wild. I, I, okay. okay. Math is wild. So you're I, basically I, trying I, to I, say I, that I yeah, you did Tyree Kill has 20 more targets than A.J. Brown. <laughs> but yeah. because Devontae Smith has more targets than Jalen Waddle, are you going off the targets or are you going off the catches? You're talking about usage rate, like, like, like. Okay, how about this? No, because because I think, this? think how, I think how, you tell me your point, and I'll argue your point. One on one targets. Yeah, because because 12. you keep moving what the argument is. No, no, so no, 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 no. Hold on, I'm checking your math because you said it was one twelve targets for Smith, and you said it was one on one for Waddle. Yeah. Yep. That would be an eleven and an eleven target difference. Okay. Then you said it was a twenty something. So target so, difference. so so right now it's plus eleven Philly, right? So 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 then then if you take Tyreek Kill to AJ Brown. It's a 20. plus. It's a plus thirteen. Okay. One, right, one fifty eight to one seventy one. Okay, so, I'm doing it right now. It's so plus thirteen. So then that will be a two difference. One's plus eleven. One's plus thirteen. That's wait, a two. Hold, Paul, hold on. Stop. 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 Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ask some questions, brother. What, what do you need? You What's just 101? said one hundred one plus one seventy one is what two eighty two two seventy two. I think actually we're a little bit off though because the uh says Jalen was actually 104. Oh, 104. So okay, okay, so it's a little so it's gonna be a little yeah. off, but three. All right. So 275. So um Tyreek. So the Dolphins between their two targets, they um ha- actually had targeted their top two um pass catchers uh five more times. Right. Than, which was uh, that was the three. So so we were three off. Okay. Right, with 104 to 101. So we had the numbers wrong. So it's 104, not 101. Right. So, yeah. so, so I said plus two, mm-hmm. and then you add the three that we were off. That's five. So the math was was there. So, yeah. so five more targets. So now wow. let's go ahead. What a giant usage. More. Let's go 171 minus 104. I know you guys are probably love to watch this. Fucking just do stupid ass math. Um, but so this is the 67 
catch difference between yeah. Tyreek to so then we were sixty two. Uh, I don't know. That's why I think we're not actually because I don't think we're mapping it on correctly. That's why I wanted to do this because I don't think it is going to be that simple. I think you yeah, I think it's way bigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that difference. Yeah. But no, so one fifty eight minus. I don't remember uh, what one twelve. One twelve. Thank you for that. So that's going to be so to 40, 46. minus one twelve. Yeah, forty six. So the difference is actually a little bit more significant than that. So the drop off from AJ Brown to Devonte is forty six. Yeah, and the drop off from Tyreek to Jalen is sixty seven receptions. Yeah, so twenty one. Yeah, between between difference. the one and two, but again, if we're looking at top two targets versus top two targets. Because yeah, I'm saying because you were yeah. like, oh, they between the two, there's only a five reception difference. So I'm just trying to point out how maybe that doesn't tell actually Be between you know, the two teams the story. No, I understand, but we're but, oh okay. But, he, yeah. but I think Deuce's point was actually that, I don't know this point. That, That's why well, I asked. Okay, him to let me let, let me make, make I think this is and Deuce. You can correct me if I'm wrong. His point is that. Miami is relying more on Tyreek than other teams. And I mean, based off of those numbers, but I mean, you can, I'm sure, get into them more. That would be true. Even though the receptions between the two are similar, that's because between AJ Brown and Devontae uh, Smith, they're actually closer. They're spreading the ball around more equally. Uh -huh. Whereas in Tyreek and uh, Jalen's scenario, there's a 67 reception difference. Right. So there's actually 21 reception right. difference. So there's, I'm sure, things that could account for that. But, so, yeah. so again, we, we, we got there because yeah. we go and we look and Tyreek is at number one. So, so, the, yes. so the notion that Miami relies <laughs> on their number one receiver more than anybody else is immediately false when you look at the fact that he is not the highest targeted. Okay, yeah. so he's not. That's not true. Well, so, okay, so, what about the comment too much? How about that? Is that is that something maybe you can understand a little bit I, more? I, I can understand if if you as a fan you want to nitpick and say too much, okay. sure. Right. But again, when you lead the league in passing, it's hard to criticize. Mm -hmm. But I do get that. Sure. Again, so 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 then it came to what well, he the also has. Is this well, by reception? Was, was he second? Oh, this was target. These were targets. He was third in targets. So, 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 so then it's okay. Well, he also has Waddle. Mm -hmm. So then we look at where Waddle is on the list. So then it's like, okay, well, he only throws to those two. So it's like, okay. So he only throws to his one and two. So I want to compare that to other quarterbacks. Sure. So then when you compare the one and two to a Philly, mm -hmm. right, who's a comparable one and two, mm -hmm. the, the total number is equivalent. So it's yeah. not the Miami relies. But, well, no, because you made it about the number. You made it about two receivers when the original argument was more about the disparity between they, the one to the two, which is actually still really, right. really high. The original argument. But, okay. Like, but look at Devontae oh. Smith's number two. Look at CD's number two. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, even and their number twos aren't even probably like Jacoby yeah. Myers and Michael Gallup. Aren't I don't even think we should get it off of the comparison we made because we actually, that's actually, we're, we're fortunate to have AJ Brown and. Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith just got paid. It's actually a really close yeah, so, comparison that we can make. So the, the original conversation was yeah. just the number one. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere, again, that's where I am asking to clarify, he, yeah. he then moved the conversation to the, the, the first two. Okay. The, well, he has two targets. So then it's yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. so I want to then compare how often do we use both targets? I understand what compare. you're saying. Yeah, no, so it's like, it, okay, go ahead. So, so that's where it's like, what is his original? So what is the point that I he wants to make? I understand what you're saying, but then what I'm saying is like the numbers actually still kind of dole that out when you look at the disparity difference between Tyreek to Jalen compared to AJ and uh, Devontae Smith. Yeah, it's but, bigger. It's, yeah, it's but, and significantly bigger. 21 but, receptions. But, isn't but like, that's the picking on that earth, difference earth, compared earth, to, again, us. We're not taking Jalen Waddle out of it though. That's, so, so, yeah. so that's what we're saying. Like, I think that that number is kind of more important to the conversation. We're looking at who who we use out of like our number two top two guys compared to Durham Smythe, Braxton Berrios, everyone else on the mm -hmm. roster. When you look at other teams, because it's not like Philly doesn't have a good number three. They have Dallas Goder. Sure. So so that number could they could use less of AJ Brown yeah. and Devontae Smith and use more Goder. Mm -hmm. Sure. Again, who does Miami have to do that with? Durham Smythe. That was our number three target this year. Yeah. Was Durham Smythe. And then as Braxton Berrios, River, Craigcraft, they, they have the same kind of numbers yeah. essentially. So yeah, it's yeah. like you throw the ball to your running backs a lot too. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, did you have anything else you want to say on this dudes, brother, before we go ahead and move on? I just had we were we have a uh, couple of videos I want to watch with you, then I'll let you hop out of here unless you want to talk about uh uh fallout, but I don't want to spoil it for you. So I want to let you go if you wanna if you want to save uh you know save that series for later. Go ahead, do your thing, brother. 
Okay, cool, cool. So uh, we're just going to play a few videos, then we'll get into the uh, the Fallout review. Make sure you show some love. I should say, since we've been talking for a while, uh, Paul B. Balcom, yeah. right, with the B in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Paul B. Balcom on Twitter. Go find him on Twitter. A bunch of great conversations, a lot of fun, great guy. He hasn't bite. You don't have to worry about uh, uh -huh. communicating with him. He's a... Uh, uh, you know, friendly, friendly, friendly people. Uh, and then also Deuce Andretti, go find him also on Twitter. Deuce spelled incorrectly because, well, just look at his tweets and you'll you'll know why. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> Deuce Andretti, go check him out. A lot of fun as well. Great dude. Very funny. Uh, crazy, crazy fucking takes. That's why I love to do this shit with you, Deuce, because you always have some takes that just drums up conversation, brother. And I appreciate it. Seriously. Um, and then, yeah, uh, then I obviously sit in politics, man. Go find me sit in politics everywhere. Spotify and Apple. Go check us out on Spotify and Apple. We've been uh, dropping full episodes there with the, with the video, which is dope. Um, and then with YouTube, we've just been having some issues with just not getting the same distribution from YouTube. Uh, so I've tried to show some more, uh, care there. So make sure you go support those, prof uh, those profiles, uh, just so we can grow there. And also just in case anything happens with YouTube, you don't lose us or whatever that kind of situation is. But then also, obviously, if you're over on Twitter and you're seeing us, uh, there, go subscribe on YouTube. There's a ton, a ton of content, a ton of debates, arguments about anything you can imagine, hip hop, politics, sports. Uh -huh. Um, current events, everything. So we get into it, man. We get into it here. So let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun here. And we're going to play these videos. So I want to start it off hot. So let's go ahead. Let's go. Get off the bloody road. Sick of these yeah. people getting in the bloody road. Get on the grass, you dickhead. Get on the grass. <laughs> All right, guys. So, so Australia yeah. is like Florida. Yeah, was that foul? <laughs> was that foul or called for? Foul uh, yeah. as fuck. <laughs> like, Completely called for. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. Yes, sir. I love oh, it. Oh, get on, get on the grass, you bastard. <laughs> Yeah, it's get tough. Grass, you bastard. It's tough because I mean, I, not as much uh, people in wheelchairs. Obviously, I haven't Bro. had the pleasure uh, so, on the road, anyways. But people with bikes so, do piss me off. So I get it. <laughs> so, so bikes. Yeah, no, the bike one gets me, and walkers, like especially living yeah. in our community. Oh yeah, because me growing up, I was always taught to get the fuck out of the street. It's like, course, like, like if you're walking down the street, there's a car coming, get out of the road. Avoid the vehicle, okay, brother. Get of course, out. And then advice. people, I don't know where it came. Like, no, I as a walker own this street. Okay, I as a bicyclist, I'm riding my bike. Like, again, I again was taught to get into the grass. Avoid the big giant vessel that that's faster and stronger than you that could kill you. Okay? And maybe don't wear all fucking black. Black in the black. Oh yeah. God, when it's dude. dark out. When I see it. that, dude, I want to hop out the car and just beat him up. <laughs> Why are you putting me in this position? I'm Literally. texting. I'm texting right now. Because if I kill you, then it's gonna be. <laughs> I mean, I'm feel bad about that. I'm gonna feel bad. Uh, I'm gonna feel but bad about it. It's like by a wheelchair. Come on, man. I don't know if he can really operate in the grass like that, dog. Yeah, it's true. It was pretty like, cool. Come on, man. Like, like <laughs> get out of the grass. Get in the grass, dickhead. <laughs> and then just smoke him like that. Yeah, he's he like, smoked him out crazy. Uh, Deuce, and you said that you support this, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> this is what he said. Get in the grass, brother. Get in the grass. Get in the, grass. Get in the road. Yeah. So here's a, another one. This might actually be a video of the guy before he, uh, you know, ended up. <laughs> Replay. Who's oh, standing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that guy Bro. doing? Why is he still going? He's like, Let's run they smoke. can't drive. They need He's to get, like, get, get him out of the car. Would you He's ever drunk. go to one of these like meets? I mean, no. it seems like a, it seems like a fucking vibe. We should go to one. That'd be cool. I, What's that? Yeah, I think it would be cool. That, 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 let's say we did a, a, a we went to somebody's gender reveal once and they did a car like like doing like a oh, the just, color from smoke? Yeah, just oh. going down the street and I'm like and everyone's around and there's kids around with phones and I'm like, yeah, get the kids up. Like if this guy loses control, like he has like way too much trust <laughs> in this random ass dude in North Paul's Port. fucking up like, the baby shower. Like, 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 like yo, get <laughs> out of the way. Like, bro, if he does this shit again, yeah, whatever, like, 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 like this like person, <laughs> what if the lake, like this is my worst nightmare. Yeah. What if you're driving and you catch a lake ramp? Yeah. And you know you had to lock that bitch. You yeah. had to lock that bitch up, and then you, you keep going. And, and you, <laughs> no, this. Well, I, see, this is—I uh, don't know when it was, but I played video. I played a few videos like this where they're like these car meets, and you have people doing, you know, the fucking donuts, and it just goes wrong. 
I would never be the person in the middle of the fucking car mosh pit with the camera. That's just not, I'm just not. I'm hanging out the car, bro. <laughs> Literally trying to get the craziest shots. I just don't trust the motherfuckers driving like that, honestly. No. So it's like, yeah, but I would go to one of those events and, and just like kind of peep what's the, the scene. You know what I mean? From afar. From afar, yeah. I want to feel like I'm in a fucking Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. Yeah. Racing for slips. Just bro. keep on telling people family. Family, bro. <laughs> yeah, everybody see family. Bro, I mean that that's a nice exhaust you have there, bro. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Look at that exhaust. All right, hold on. Bro, I thought he died. Nice skirt, <laughs> <homie>. <laughs> My dog Paul's using fucking uh undercover terminology. <laughs> Great exhaust there. Next thing you know, he's beating your fucking jaws in. <laughs> <laughs> Even at, yeah, jump on mute, brother. Jump on mute. Um, so let's see what else I got here for us. Um, that might let's I'm gonna play this because this might be a little bit. He doesn't do right. Holly teach. Oh, okay. So this is Donald it. Trump's national security advisor. How big of a threat do you say Donald Trump poses to our national security? Well, I think the basic problem is he's not really fit to be president. Uh, he he having served four years. Uh, you know, he came into the White House not knowing much about how the government operated, not knowing much about national security. And uh, over a four year period, he didn't manage to learn very much. He doesn't appreciate the issues. Uh, he doesn't uh, focus on uh, strategy, philosophy, policy. He doesn't do any of that, as as many people have observed uh, across the range of uh, government affairs. He's anecdotal, ad hoc, transactional. Uh, and worst of all, he sees everything through the prism of how does this benefit Donald Trump? So when you come to trying to make decisions on national security issues, he's not focused on what's at stake for the United States, what our options are, uh, how we can protect our interests uh, uh, in, in the most effective way. Policy, he doesn't do anything. All right. So, Deuce, brother, let me bring you in here. This um this guy right here, he was the um, for, former national security uh, advisor for Donald Trump during his uh, time in office. And obviously, this isn't an endorsement. So how do you feel about that? You're the closest to a uh, Trump supporter that we have. Not that you are a Trump supporter, but he uh, seems um, seems a little bitter. He got fired, but that's all right. I mean, <laughs> that happens. Yeah, he went down the drain with the rest of the swamp that totally got drained. Yes, totally. Yeah, I mean, he, was, he was one of the. He was one of the corrupt motherfuckers on his team in the beginning. That got that fired. was yeah, yeah. He was the corrupt one. None, none, no, no, there was a group of them corrupt that, put the prison for it. that he just, hired that were on the left. He hired so, people from the left and the right for his cabinetcy and got fucked by both. So I know you're not a supporter of Biden, but um, is there any part of you that thinks that Trump isn't right to lead, or do you do you feel comfortable with that? What do you mean? So, like what he was just saying, he said he's not fit to lead for several reasons. He's selfish. I mean, yeah. uh, he's not well informed on civics and what his duties would be. Uh, Doesn't take um, national security seriously. Yeah. So, I mean, he's named a shit ton of reasons. Um, now, I, whether you think those are valid reasons or not is a whole other thing. But uh, I'm just wondering from your perspective, do you, want, do you agree with that or do you see that him being a better side of his neck, brother? That you said what? But this fucking other side of his neck, dude. Doesn't just, matter. Just, 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 no president is equipped ever to handle any of the things they deal with. If well, that might be fair. I you mean, believe that, that man, I guess, you're I guess. just want to talk in those terms. You're you're insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just like people saying that nobody's nobody is ready to be a parent, of course. But there's a yeah. way to prepare for police officer and all that. <laughs> no, it, I mean, you can't prepare. You can prepare all you want to until you do it. You, you never know. You, you don't know if you can. No, but you're right. But that's why your criticism is kind of like uh, bullshit a little bit because it's like you can say that literally about anybody. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's my point. Oh, okay. so, right. it's, okay. so it's just well, like. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, 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 you can always criticize someone's preparedness, right? I mean, yeah, sure. It is what it is. It's a crazy yeah. job. You know, I mean, like, nothing really can compare okay, you actually, to be the leader. Okay, of the so let me. I, I don't want to make this about Biden. I just want to make this as simple as possible. Let's make this literally just about Trump. You, you want me to, to chop it down? Well, no, I'm just curious where your stance is because I know where Paul's stance already is. So I'm kind of curious where you would stand because I don't. <laughs> I honestly don't know where you stand. So it's like, do you think that Donald Trump would be? Good for, and like I said, don't consider necessarily Biden because I know how you feel in contrast to Biden. But right. just if you were making that decision on your own, where would you kind of land with that? Do you think? Okay. 
Well, don't you have to go versus the competition? But if okay, well, it does because that's the only option we're ha we have. But I think if we made it that, then we would probably both agree that they're both terrible options in general. At least me and you, and then Paul would be probably not that far off from us even. Well, um, if we look at Donald Trump's track, track, track record track. with foreign yeah. policy, yeah. I mean, he yeah. didn't start any wars. He was already, but he was already in a war. Well, he inherited one, but he didn't start any new ones. Yeah, which he didn't get us out of. He, well, um, he had a he had a long term plan. Yeah. Remember, and then when Biden came in, they basically like, yeah, fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna make this, we're gonna expedite this, we're gonna we're gonna do it, just you know, rip off the band aid. So by the way, yeah. So here, because I want, I think, want to add context to your answer, and I want you to address this. Um, so he didn't have any wars that he got into. So a lot of people would say, like for example, the Israel conflict that we're in right now, and moving the embassy to Jerusalem is pretty controversial. That's one of the things that he did. Um, and obviously, is Israel loves that, but a lot of people would say that that was one of the things that you know incited this kind of it's like appease Israel. Then don't appease Israel, brother. We gotta take a stand. You know, what I'm we, we need to go rock with them all the way, or we're not gonna <laughs> rock with them. It's How many important. American lives just, have, have we been just taken? got one foot in the door with uh, Israel and one foot out the door Israel? with Israel on every and, fuck, and on every person. on every topic, brother? It's just crazy. We gonna give them money, but we ain't gonna fight the war. You know, so, what I'm saying? So, we gonna so, give them so, the mosque. Or whatever it is, but now it's Donald Trump's <laughs> fault because we started the war because we gave him the mosque. Oh, is it? Like, you wanted to give him the mosque. It was an embassy. So, was an so over the last three years, <laughs> Biden has started how many wars? Zero. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean the answer is zero. He hasn't started. It. America I mean, we involved. In America is in a war, but we are. We are. Wars. We are ally is in a war which again that has nothing to really do with which we're helping to financially back but again but that's again what you were if trump yeah. was in office i would have i would assume that he too would follow the the, the, the what you're supposed he said, to do yeah, he said he wouldn't. but again again <laughs> so that's again you like, saying like, that that him saying he like, already said like but, but that's the years. point though <laughs> that like like he's making is that there are fucking rules to foreign policy yeah. And this guy just doesn't take it seriously, as in like a no, true rules. It's called. But it, there it's called are. Good for if your, your fucking ally is involved, there are certain rules. We have NATO protections. We have UN protections. Didn't I did tell you Biden said he's follow. not going to support the Israel uh, Hamas, uh, Iran, the, the Iran bombing and shit. And then he, and the, come on, man. So it's like, what are you saying? It's not just Trump. It's a, it's it's for it's smart well, foreign, for foreign policy for the United States of America. Yes. It's so not, but again, let's. Let's. Ask, I want to ask Paul because you. I think you're touching on an interesting thing, so I want to make it more straightforward for you, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you view the support in any way as we're in a war, or do you see this as like something completely separate? I I, I think of it as something that's completely separate. Again, okay. Uh, our ally, we're, we don't have anybody on ground. We don't have any troops there. We're not fighting a war. Are we aiding an ally who is fighting a war? Yes. Now, again, that is through policy that we have to abide, oblige, uh, you know, oblige what by. What do you mean? One of our ships got attacked, and we attacked the ship in 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 the waters out there already. What do you What do you mean? We've been involved in that in okay. that war over All right. Year. Okay. Okay, but right. but what he's saying isn't wrong as far as like the like Jesus. groups uh, the troops on the ground and, and, stuff and like nothing that. happened with any with any ships any anything under Trump's presidency, right? Like 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 come you on. You're in a war. I already said that. I We're mean, talking about. Okay, so but. Whatever. Again, again, it is what it is. But again, these hey, are new uh, wars, brother. I'm just saying, national wars. security is is a major threat to the original Congress. Like uh, as far as like our national help security with is Israel, a major threat. Hold on, hold on. Let him finish this. I, I I think the the future help with Israel, like like where Biden is coming out saying like like listen, like you're on your own with this one with Iran. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this. This is where like I feel like the, the nuance has to come into play. Where it's like we have aided so much to where there's so much that you feel like you're getting lied to about, like with the food strike. Uh, where where, where it, Israel comes and, and hits the food aid and it's like, oh, well, we're sorry about that. That was an accident. And there's all this to where it's like, you know what, maybe on this, maybe Biden and them are listening to the American people where it's like, we don't yeah. want to. So, do so you, again, I don't know what, that's where like, we've talked before. I don't know the exact uh, policies. Do I don't think, know the... Well, because you mentioned policies, like they have an obligation. So this is obviously a point where Biden or whoever, the U.S. military, they're choosing to exercise some level of like discretion and not get mm -hmm. involved in this. So why do we not assume that they have that same option to not get involved in <clears throat> like Israel's fight with Gaza, which honestly they can handle. They're a superior fighting force. They don't really need our help. You know? No, I know. I, yeah. I, I think that at first to you, got to Gaza, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like at first you respond how you're supposed to respond. And then again, you okay. get, you gather new information. Again, yeah. I don't know the exact, 
I, I'm not I'm not in there. I'm not a sure, political absolutely. science major. I don't know the exact ins and outs of what we're allowed and we're not. I know that there are rules and policies in place. Okay. So, right. So um as far as like like with the video that we watched, who is that? Steve Bannon, I believe, right? The one that we just watched? Yeah. Oh, who, I don't who's that remember. talking? I forget. Uh, um, but uh see, yeah, right. with that if, if that was the only person who worked I with Trump it. or under Trump during during that time that came out and said something and he had a book coming out. I'd say take with a major grain of salt. This is somebody that has something he's gaining when it's been everybody who hasn't been indicted and found guilty of some shit coming out and saying like, Hey, listen, like he's a threat to national security. He doesn't take his job seriously. He's lousy at this. Um, like, like you, you have to take it when, when you have people coming out saying he is a threat to the democracy, people who worked with him, people who were his friends come out saying like, Hey, listen, like I have to leave. Turn my back on when you have a Republican congressman right now uh, giving up seats in, in the House, abandoning seats, saying, hey, listen, we're out. We're out of the party. We're done with this. You have to take no. You have to see that there is a reason and we can well, go. Conspiracy. Okay. You're, you're, you're rambling now. You're saying a lot of things that we can't speculate to be true or not. I, I have anything. True. I have not heard anything about Republicans just giving up seats in the House and the Senate that, it. that are okay, hard, can- that are so hard fought for. That they barely even have in the first place. I, I, I've sh- I've shared the article. If you didn't click on it, that's. Oh, yeah, it hurts. I, it I mean, who are you talking about? You talking about that one girl that just lost? What is her name? Hey, um, real quick, real quick, uh, and I'm gonna look more into this, but uh, this is just the core answer. I, I just think it's kind of interesting. So, if the, if the NATO member state is attacked on territory belonging to them north of the Tropic of Cancer, yes. Otherwise, no. This is and the question I asked: Is uh, does this does a country have to uh, support its allies if they go to war? Okay. Um, this is, and then they said this is why the UK could not invoke Article Five and get all of NATO to gang up on Argentina in 1982 when it attacked the Falkland Islands. The treaty is directed against the USSR in Russia and is therefore only applicable in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, it's very interesting. Yeah. The, the, the Israel ship shouldn't be involved there, and the Russian ship. We well, northern started. Just, so. Technically, that would be Northern Hemisphere still, but yeah, and it's interesting that it's specifically. Cold War, specifically centered around Russia, and that's one of—I mean—that's obviously one of the big uh, uh, sticking points with the Ukraine war. It, it, with them not wanting Ukraine to join NATO, mm-hmm. yeah. So really well, interesting. No, they, the main point was don't put bombs, you know, on our border, but that, not you know. join NATO, not join NATO. Therefore, the bombs be there. Let's not get fucking too into the weeds, brother. Uh, but I'm just saying, well, we put the bombs there, and they—they they didn't join NATO. They still put the bombs there. So I mean, <laughs> what, what what are we saying? Now they have the the perfect reason to do so. Well, uh, the bombs ain't because Russia went and said, oh. You put bombs there. We're gonna go ahead and take those bombs. Thank you. Now what? I mean, who knows if they have bombs in Ukraine? But I mean, I, I would be hard pressed. Whether they have they leveled, wouldn't. they have leveled parts of Ukraine. They they have. Well, I'm saying bombs. like American bombs. But either way, let's not get caught up in this. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Um. So this is just a funny video. So basically, uh, I'm working for AT and T, and if you got whoa. like whoa, 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 a whoa. phone bill that's like three hundred dollars and for three phones. On my iPad, I can look up, um, you know, I can basically estimate how much your new phone bill would be um, with the new phones. And, uh, you know, I don't know all the details yet, but, um, you know, I truly am helping people. It's not like a scam. I'm not trying to sell. I'm helping. Yeah, he's on something. You're definitely... I mean, I think you are trying to sell, but you're really fucking bad at it. And you also have, like, look at this man's suit. He's got dad's suit on right now. Oh, I don't know. What you uh, but I don't know. Network on AT&T. It's a blue polo. <laughs> I feel him. I don't know if you guys had that. T- that He's either, like, like, really tall or, like, he's got very broad shoulders. <laughs> his shoulders biggest fuck. Is Brock his dad Mark there. Zuckerberg? He must have really broad shoulders, man. Like, I, like honestly, this kind of reminds me of, like, uh, like, I worked at Nordstrom for a period of time. And if oh, you guys don't know what that is, it's God. like a, a department store that's, like, upscale. And I was really young and didn't have any money. I was like fresh out of high school. And uh, in order to work there, you had to dress nice because you're selling clothes, obviously. So it was like upscale. So like what I wore to go to work there was fun. I look like this guy. Uh, just I just trying to make it, baby. I, yeah, I didn't have the suit. I just had like the dress shirt on. But like everything like ill-fitted. Like it was all Walmart fucking shit. And I was selling them. It was wild. Look, it was a good experience. It was like look, humbling. Uh, looking like you're from the 1940 Chicago era. Yeah, no, he's the a zoot suit motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he was in the but, mask. But I, I don't like 
Yeah, I, I can go on the app and kind of estimate how much my payment's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't you're know what you're doing. But you're literally trying yeah, to sell yeah, us. Like, you're like, trying like, to find people yeah, up. Stop. Yeah, this, this, this is the people <laughs> I'm like, like upsell my hey, listen. Hey, listen, file your taxes with me. I'll get you Literally. two grand back, baby. That's the hustle, man. That's what we're all going to be when there's no fucking jobs and it's all done by robots. Um, oh, all right. So here, I'm, I'm just going to keep on moving because I want to be able to I want to be able to get into the fallout with fallout. you. I'll hold you too long. Uh, so look, this right here I wanted to show you guys. Actually, I'll save that one. Uh, how far? Okay. For Sneaky Link. What now? What's the farthest you're driving for Sneaky Link? I don't even know what the hell you're talking about, man. Hey, hey, what look the at fuck deny, is that, deny, deny, deny. <laughs> what the fuck is that, brother? Uh, what's the price you're driving to go life. get you some, you know what I'm saying, some cake? Cake? Yeah. Oh, now, what cake are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like it's a female, right. bro. Well, I'm ordained, sir. May the Lord be with you. <laughs> He's ordained. Hey, what's the f <laughs> I'm ordained, sir. So, so that means no. Dude, so we got to get back in the fucking field, brother. Ordained. These Man. Yeah, They're yeah, out bro, we got to get these interviews, bro. <laughs> He's a... They're out there, bro. These wild people. <laughs> He Can't you get old angels online? Oh, you can, yeah. 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 It definitely doesn't mean that you're holy. Yeah, you I don't know, know what that is. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know what that meant secretly. I'm ordained, I, I, sir. I think there's he's a, cheated on his wife at least eight times, bro. People if he should be not, worried. If, if he's not worried fucking women, it's guy. because it's not because he's ordained. I'm yes. They should, they should do a home check on him. See what's but, going on. Yeah. Yeah. Because listen, I'm he telling you, that guy has skeletons. people tied up. The the, the 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 moment you asked him to to uh compromise himself on video, he played dumber than no, a box. Thank you, sir. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. Speaking, like, sir, I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and get his license plate. And follow him home. All right, this one right here. This Bring is uh, I'm stuck. This is a little prank call. I wanted to pull this because it just reminded me of the good old days oh, with crazy. Damn it! Yeah, well, yeah, she got a black eye. I don't think no. Grab not... pub. Hey, is this pub? Yeah, this is Grub Pub. Hey, can you come let me out of the dumpster? Shoot. <laughs> Pardon me? I was I thought this was the dumpster next door. I thought this was the store, but I climbed I'm the lid stuck. Can you come get me out of the dumpster? You're in our dumpster? This is the grub pub, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one in the back? Yeah, the lid closed on me. It looks like really dirty. I don't want to touch it. Can you just come lift it for me? What, what were you doing? Were you were you like uh, in their dumpster diving, or how the hell did you get in our dumpster? I just imagine she's actually in the dumpster and you're leaving her in there asking questions <laughs> instead of going and saving her. Climbed in. I wasn't dumpster diving. I was like, I don't want to be crude. It's kind of embarrassing. I like, I like, I um, I don't have a bathroom, so I poop in here, but in a bag. I always close it and leave it in here. Did you, did you hear a sigh? Get on the phone in the back, take it. He's like, Jesus fucking Christ, I'll hang myself. <laughs> He's like, How old do I have to go get out the dumpster? I gotta go get to her through fucking poop. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, this is the bitch that's been shitting in our trash can for fucking three months. Yeah, imagine that. As, as a work, as, like, I've worked in places like that where you like somebody's doing some foul shit like that, and every single person is on the same page, and they're like, Everybody's Batman. They're like, We will find this motherfucker. <laughs> If he's ever here, you know. Hey, behind the place where we when we work next uh, side by side, bro, the fucking homeless guy that would just like take shits in the back. Mm -hmm. yes, Did you ever I run into that? that? You don't remember that? that. Okay, I remember yeah. that. I remember. Oh, that. Yeah, 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 bro, come on. He was wilding out one time. He had, yeah, I think bro, he that was foul. Did a shit on the uh, barber shop's chair. Yeah, no, he did, dude. He did, <laughs> dude. That was crazy. I called yeah, him out there yeah. too the next day. I was like, hey, bro, you get you gotta get up out of here, bro. Oh yeah, you need I was to. Like, I don't know. Find that, a new that. Spot. He's like, oh, what's wrong? I'm like, no, that shit was foul, bro. That yeah, bro, it's hot around here for you. I okay, told him, I'm I told him you know exactly what you did, bro. No, exactly. Oh, he, he, he said, he I'm did. sorry, man. Don't call the police. So I'm like, yeah, get up out of here, dog. <laughs> I fucking should. Jesus Christ, trying I to take, pass I said, take the chair with you, bro. Take the chair with you. Yeah, yours now. You have a place to sit. Yeah, so you sleep on the chair over there. Hey, I got a bad back and a gag reflex, so I don't know if I can help pull you out. Are you a big girl? I'm a little fat, yeah. Tommy, some big fat chick fell in the dumpster. Can you go help her get out? Yeah, Derek, go no. help her. There's a girl stuck in the dumpster. A fat girl. I ain't shitting you. I shit a little bit, though. I don't know. She's in the. It's the only girl going to be in that dumpster. Playing a bar? I'm so you imagine you're just holding up with a bunch of ladies in the dumpster? Man, no, it's just going to be one, bro. Actually, it's going to be none. They, low key, he's going to be a little disappointed. Oh, dude. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay, I'm about to go out here and yeah. save a bitch. Listen, the, the guy, by, by, by just hearing it, the guy that he told to go out there, 
Yeah, is like, bro, so. he's ready. He, oh, he's yeah. thinking knight in shining armor this moment. Yeah. This is it. Probably yeah. going to get a date afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Girl. I don't know if those ladies, if if she was genuinely in the dumpster, I don't know if those ladies go on dates. I think he just <laughs> he go ahead and do some big fat girl in the dumpster. Go get her out. <laughs> he said, "I have a bad back. I'm with you, way." Oh yeah, he said, "I have a gag reflex, bitch. I cannot be around you. I'll throw up." <laughs> so, how many prank calls uh, were you a prank call kid? Uh, I did a few times, like uh, sleepovers and stuff. We call people and just like random people. You know, like classic, you yeah. know, it's your refrigerating type shit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So are you a big prank caller? Um, um big, not the biggest, but I did have so 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 Brandon Hurley, shout out, buddy, fifth grade. Uh man, what an influence. South Park in this. So I remember then this was movie gallery days, and uh we're calling off the landline. Like he called me and he said, Hey man, you want to do some prank calls? I said, yeah, what should we do? So oh, y'all weren't even together at the time? Is no, no, no. No. That's the fucking weirdest thing ever. So, 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 so we're on the so we're on the phone. <laughs> he literally called you to yeah. three way prank. Well, no, no, we, we used to talk <laughs> on the phone all the time as kids. Like, like that's what you did. Yeah. Like, like I feel we, you. I just never yeah, did bro, that. Buddy, we didn't have gaming lobbies. You just called your friends. So I was always in person when we did prank calls. That's that's different. From yeah. Me, so <laughs> so 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 he told me he's like, all right. So let's call movie gallery. So so okay. And again, like we call we did movie gallery all the time. That, that was a spot. So we're calling movie gallery and we're ordering like the dumbest movies. And then, then we started ordering the movies from the back. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we ordered South Park regular and cut. We did this like seven straight times. Mm-hmm. So uh the eighth time we call, I mean, we did this way too again, fifth grade, way too quickly, back to back to back. And we call and the person on the phone, no, I'll never get it. She goes, Your phone number is 941-505-0914. And as soon as you start reading it, you heard, oh shit, click. So Brandon, they got defeated yeah, by caller ID. So, That's so, crazy. So Brandon, boom, and then she goes, <laughs> she goes, yeah, we have caller ID, idiots. So like, you call again, like we're calling the cops, and I'm just like, uh, 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 okay. So she hangs up, and then I get a call back, right, from from Brandon immediately. He's like, he's like, dude. You you did Star sixty seven. I'm like, we what? gotta go, bro. Get on. Like, we gotta I'm get like, out of here. Like, what the fuck is Star sixty seven? Like, I, I had no yeah, I idea. You, yeah. No idea. Yeah, I remember. But I think, fucking set me up. I think he that's probably how most people learned what Star sixty seven was. <laughs> you were like, I'm pretty sure that's how I did. I didn't. Make a, I didn't make a phone call, but I do remember somebody telling me like. Uh, a friend of mine named Billy back in the day, where he, uh, I was staying at his house, and he, uh, yeah, we were doing prank calls, and I remember they like, make sure you do Star sixty seven or whatever. Star oh, 69. Yeah. After um, that, after- Deuce, uh, by the way, did you have any like? Uh, I'm curious if you were a prank caller. Uh, <clears throat> nah, man, not really a prank caller. I yeah, used like uh, bitches, um, right? <laughs> no, like we did. So I remember one night I was around people that were doing it, and uh, we prank Complain. called someone at like five in the morning. That's crazy. And um, That's they kept for some reason, like they called this number at like one. The person answered, like was talking shit, hung up, called him again at like three. You know what I'm saying? Just to be assholes. They, <laughs> answered, like they answered talking shit again, right? You know, it's like some there was some like some so probably like they were probably like 23, 24, you know, college yeah. kids or whatever. Yeah. And then we called the same number at like five in the morning, right? And I guess like we all fell asleep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or some shit. On the phone? Yeah, bro. Because when we, bro, listen. Bro, listen. It was crazy because we woke all woke up to a a loud ass, good morning. And it was like, bro, over like, it was like, it was crazy. We all woke up like, what the fuck? So and they turned the, the phone. prank call around on you? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. They got oh, wow, us, yeah. dude. Hey, yeah, I'm nasty. glad to hear that. I'm glad they got their recipe. It was nasty work. Nasty work, dude. <laughs> and it was yeah. like it was like 12 of us in this house. It was in this like in this room prank calling. You know what I mean? The Fuck thing crazy. I remember about prank calling was the like trying to like keep your shit together while talking to the people. And, like you freaking out looking at your friends and be like, oh my god, this is the greatest shit ever. Bro, I, I, <laughs> and then they did the boner jobs one. They did the boner job. Hey, you call boner jobs? Oh yeah, that one. What's that? Yeah, that. Uh, but like, I, I, like I, I, I remember there was one that that you could send, you can send it like someone's cell phone number or phone number, and then they would call that person, like like uh, it was like a website, and they would call that person, and like you could choose like 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 what prank you want, oh, wow. and it would like prank call people. Oh, I, I remember like a way I would flirt in like elementary school, like after I found out Star Six Seven. Yeah. Is like calling like prank call like like a girl and now and like kind of like but I guess my voice was always kind of 
They're like, Paul, stop fucking. I'm not around. good at accents, so it's like the moment. Hey, hey you did it. He's like, hey, <laughs> so he, hey, oh yeah, this is it. This this is Drake. <laughs> we we got this video right here. By the way, this is going to be a real quick one because we we're just like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Stop. 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 This is great. That is crazy. We're not. What? Clear. Are we clear? Is Devin Haney's mom alive? Because I'm not that's what was being said in the chat when hey, Siri. this got sent. But I think uh, his mom was a uh, an escort. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> his, his dad. His dad. All right, was, all right we gotta look this up. We gotta look that up. We can't. We can't. We yeah, can't. I, this is, I think we can't that because for too long. <laughs> his dad. Um. Well, because Ryan Garcia has been outing all his family business. His dad used to be a pimp. Oh. Okay, hold on. We're taking the word of somebody who's clearly on drugs. No, no, no. It's, like, it's like, true. In my video, I think you hear someone in the background saying like, high as fuck. like, like, yeah, he's high as fuck. He's high as no, fuck. No, but like, he, ch- he changed his. No, this it's true. His dad was a pimp and changed his life. It's a fact. It's what okay, happened. Well, I don't know. I, yeah, maybe. So I'm pretty sure what he's yeah, alluding to is who's your mom? Where's your mom? Where's your mom? Where's your mom? Like, I don't think Devin Haney has a relationship with his mother because of her past life or whatever the case is. I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, I don't know how Ryan Garcia finds out all this information, too. It's kind of crazy. I didn't hear this in the video, but it says that (laughs) before shoving Garcia, Haney stated, where's your fat ass mom? Where's your fat ass mom? Where's your fat ass mom? What? So in response to to Ryan Garcia saying, uh, "Where's your mom? Where's your mom?" Devin Haney started to say, "Where's your fat ass mom?" Jesus Christ! So are brings you, me back to the days. So are you guys wanting to? Oh, dude, your mama. That was it. Yeah. So uh, are you guys wanting? To, are you guys want? You gonna buy the fight? Ooh, that, that, does this? That, that, does this want you yeah. to? Does this make you want to watch it more or less? Because the less. more he does this shit, I don't want to watch it. I don't even give a fuck anymore. And I love boxing, and that breaks my heart. Yeah, I'm a boxer I mean, over UFC. I think that's fair to be so i don't know i mean it definitely draws my attention to it but i we kind of already talked about this a little bit in the chat where it's like i kind of see this as him taking an opportunity after he just lost to javante davis and then coming into this fight where he's trying to capitalize off of his name and his notoriety and his fame uh while he's while he's at his hottest before potentially if he loses this fight if he loses this fight there's a he loses a huge i mean he already did kind of lose quite a bit of steam so i kind of see this as like a, a little bit of like a rebranding into more of a celebrity away from uh just the athlete yeah celebrity. but why would he not yeah, he's building his name he's building his name but, but, but his in, my, but in the most form. negative way like like it, yeah, like, like it, it's like, this is like a almost like hurting his brand where well, before as a boxer, it hurts his brand it doesn't necessarily hurt his brand he was known as a social media boxer anyway well, I mean, and I think like I don't think it overall like completely kills his brand if he's trying to do that rebrand anyways, because it kills his boxing brand. I agree with that. But if he has the feeling that that's already going to decline and possibly evaporate, like say he loses to this guy, he, there might be a real crisis of confidence, which is the sad part of this, which might be where this comes from is a complete um, deterioration of his uh, self-confidence. But um, uh, as a celebrity, I think there's total, there's tons of ways that he can market this. Also, it's not just like, where's your mom? Where's your mom? It's, you know, the, uh, the other crazy shit, you know, yeah, talk about Kanye, right. him talking about whatever. But it's like AB. We're, we're yeah, right. Well, 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 that's kind of where, like I'm saying, is like, like to me, I I respected him a lot more mm-hmm. five months ago than, than I do now. I I respect him a lot more when he lost to to, to Javante Davis. Yeah. Than I if if he were to do if he were to lose if none of this came out and he were to lose to to Devin Haney and then come out with a podcast or come out as as a something other than a boxer, mm-hmm. I would have followed it a lot more closely than I would now. Cause like now it's just like how much of like what you say is just for fucking bullshit. Sure. How much of it is true? Are, are, are you on some fucking shit? So it's yeah, like, yeah. no, I definitely think like, that. but again, sure. this is the same thing with Aiden Ross whole shit, all, all their sticks that they do with this, which again, who, who the fuck am I? What do I know? I mean, it clearly yeah. works. Well, and the thing is, I think I don't think that anything you're saying is wrong. I just think that when you're like, oh, this doesn't make me respect you more. I don't think he's doing this for respect. That has nothing to do with the reason he's doing this. When he's doing these fucking weird ass rants about Bohemian Grove, I don't think any part of him is like, this is going to get me more respect. I think it's more people are going to talk about this. Um, 
I may be able to pivot this into some different kind of career outside of boxing. Uh, I think, but I mean, to, to your point, that's I think there's question. like sponsorships that he could have kept intact and stuff. I think that's where it'll hurt him more. Um, yeah. But I still don't think it'll be impossible. There's people that will do business with him. People, Fashion Novi, well, Nova yeah. does business so, with uh, AB. But 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 that's example. my question. Is like so. I guess I guess my question is yeah. this: Is do you think it's a good branding, bad brand? Do you think it's a wise move? If you were his his advisor, what would you say? Like, 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 like I'm, I guess I'm trying to see like, yeah. like what brand he's going for. So just, just, uh, I think like, I think just like conspiracy theory, okay. like internet personality, willing to say the truth, quote unquote. Uh, I think that's what he's going for. I think that it's complicated as far as like, is it good or not? I, I think, you know, it's toxic. I wouldn't wish this. I wouldn't wish like somebody that I love to take this route. Right. Cause I think it's going to bring, okay. and it does bring a lot of negativity, but I think that this may be what he's going for. So I right. think it's probably a positive. Yeah. Who, I think who's it's what to say wants. good or bad? But yeah, yeah, I think I think if this is what he wants, then I think if he wants to be a controversial figure that can kind of people don't hold him. I think some of it, too, might be a little bit of like he's kind of like having a child star thing where he wants to break out of that image by going right. extra, <clears throat> you know, like unfiltered or whatever. <laughs> right. Um, Justin Bieber pissing in, in a exactly. mop bucket. Exactly. Right. Making <laughs> making different types of music entirely uh, because he wants to be taken serious as I'm an adult. Um, so I think all of that kind of plays into it. And sadly, I do think some of it might be a, like I said, it's like a uh, crisis of confidence where, you know, he, he may have fought Javante Davis and be like, okay, this is a different level. You know, this is yeah. a different. Yeah, different, I'm not there. Okay. Yeah. And like his whole career to this point, well, to that point, had been built on that he is that he is in that class. So that's a real reality check. And if you still want to continue the lifestyle of I'm famous and rich and all the things that come with that, then you have to figure out, well, how do I continue that in a different way? If boxing maybe isn't, if I'm not going to be able to keep up that mystique with boxing. Um, so that's what I personally WWE, think. WWE, baby. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Shit, he should go to WWE. That'd be fucking nuts. Uh, Deuce, did you have anything to say on this, brother? I see that you're uh, uh, off camera. So if if you can't say anything, just pause and say nothing. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so <laughs> that's Ryan Garcia. I'm looking forward to the fight, though. I just, I mean, I guess I'm watching it. Yeah, so. with De Devin Haney too. It's like I'm gonna watch pretty much any of his fights just to see. What's going? Because I see, obviously, there's that several boxers oh, where there's man. a crazy collision course on the way, and it's a moment for history. If Ryan Garcia or Ryan Garcia wins, then that would be just crazy history um, and just wild. So uh, it's like watching the Javante Davis and Ryan uh, Garcia fight. That was such a moment, and actually, I, I thank them for that. That they did put their bullshit to the side. Specifically, Ryan Garcia, who lost, he pushed all of his tips, chips to the table and, and did brisket. it. Um, all right, so this video right here, this is gonna be the last one, and then we're just gonna get into a fallout discussion, and then we'll be up out of here. So. Why is it a bunch of fucking glizzies on the damn? <laughs> Dude, this is what it took to get you back, brother. I was right, just talking God, to you. Yeah. Uh, Suspect. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, they're just riding around. It's funny. There's a few things that they say. Like, it sounds like they just got, like, promoted to, like, a management job or something. They're just filling themselves right out the fucking parking lot. And the bitch was like, all right, well, fucking suction cup. Suction cup, suction cup, suction cup. Suction cup which, suction which, who has three of them? Like, like, like on, on pocket. Like, like, on, <laughs> they were in the car. In the car. Are they in the purse? That's Where? a travel bag. That's fucking a travel bag. Glove brother. department. Yeah, and the fucking uh the like white colored one has a fucking alien asshole tickler <laughs> on bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely interesting. Yeah. Stand down no, it's fucking shit. I don't know. I don't know why it's in your ass. Oh, fuck. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm a gorilla on the boat. Go and get that money. But I don't know. Why the one in the hand, too? He just runs his fucking <laughs> big one. He's just chilling in the hand. And you know what's crazy? The ones that are sitting on your fucking. I don't think this is what they were going for, but it looks like you're just about to suck those but, things. Okay, okay. So, 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 yeah. So, so, what I was going to say is like, it's like, I'm waiting for her to like yeah. let my pop up and be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just start I'm, fucking I'm, dolling I'm, on why, why yeah. she got one in her hand? Is that her shifter for her? Ah, uh, bro. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she's driving. 
<laughs> like, there's no way she's driving. She has a brother. phone and a cop. That's not her shifter. That's that's the strap, brother. That's the strap on her. And that's the thing. Is somebody else driving while she's in the fucking backseat? Is this an Uber? No, Bro, could you driving. imagine being in someone's Uber? But or, or, or driving an Uber and then uh, somebody gets in the backseat of your, your car. And fucking, yeah, slaps some dildos on your window. I'm getting money. Hey, I'm getting a fucking, it's like From a no. nasty fucking snatch. No. Yeah, that so. <laughs> do you think she cleans them after every use, or do you think this is kind of like a use and throw? Maybe that's what she's stuff. heading towards. Maybe she's got to head towards the fucking laundry bat to clean those fucking bonkers. <laughs> the one in her hand, she's gripping that bitch Dude, like it's real life. <laughs> she's gripping that bitch like it's real fucking. Life. She ready to put that strap on somebody? <laughs> <laughs> the shaking it. Oh my god, the pride is if that's a. Oh. <laughs> Grabbing it very aggressively. Like, he's driving, bro. Oh, hey, 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 where did she pull it from? Was that, was that in use as soon as you start driving? Like, where did it come from? Because it wasn't in the video to begin with. And then no, it just appears. No, no. Well, maybe we're just lowering the whole time. Maybe oh, okay. she might, might have had that bitch in her pants. That's what saying, just she's literally it. just saying she's ready to slut herself out. She's just ready to... I'm going to go real low on the mustache, bro. Yeah, the mustache is crazy. At first, I <laughs> really had, tea, I had to contemplate Martin Lawrence the, the gender. <laughs> and I mean, where, where do you boys land? It's a That's woman. It's a woman. It has to be a woman, right? 100%. Why else no, are you... Okay. No, right. Okay. <laughs> Hey, we'll leave. Like, you Where let, do you, you want that? Know. Where do you, you want know, it? Everyone else can vote. Oh, oh, man. Up the ladder, they mad. I make them bitches mad. Definitely, a, definitely a fucking man. Oh, there's, there's another one. There's four in the window, not yeah. three. This is a big window. It's like, like this, this is the size of a window. Yeah, she's got a big vehicle because those thirteen-inch straps aren't slapping her ear every time she has a bump. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, the white one she gave a little seven inch or two, so that's kind of yeah. Up. But it does have an asshole tickler. So it does. Something. It that's does. It's kind of. Yeah, I like how also she's like, uh, uh, I'm climbing the ladder. Loki sounds exactly like Forty Two Doug. By the way, this could be her, this grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got the promotion. Definitely a promotion at the Circle Costco. K. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, maybe. maybe who knows? Just in, anywhere they'll let her bring the strap. You know what I mean? She's got to be able I to think, wear. I think she's promoting her her strap on collection. What if it is like a bada bing? Oh, like a strip yeah. No, no, no. That's a sex store. Bada, bada bing, bing, Jack and Jill. Oh, okay. Uh, Exotic. Could you imagine? Wow, what a flex! Like I'm the assistant manager <laughs> at the Jack and Jill. <laughs> this is what I can get you. <laughs> This is what a deployed discount gets you. Four. Not bad marketing, brother. It's not bad marketing. How do you use four? Not bad marketing when you say that, actually. She is, um, it's like, again, like, and dude, yeah, imagine. She's outnumbering holes. I'll imagine driving down the road. Imagine you're just driving down the road. And you see this shit? And you see this going on. It's time to go home, brother. So that one strap can't even be held up because its mass is so large. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shit dangling. Okay, yeah. I don't know what human That's being... That's what I'm saying. Look how big yeah, her car is. That shit's not smacking her in the ear every time she hit a bump, dog. Like I don't know what human being needs a fucking lightsaber to be inside of them. <laughs> uh, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, to, to each his own and God bless him. You know, God bless him. Uh, they said so I need me a giant earthworm. <laughs> hey. Jim the earthworm fire fire. Um, so we're gonna get into Fallout now. Deuce, you want to pop out? This is gonna be spoiler, spoiler review. Spoiler full be, season. I would love to have your questions, but at the same time, uh, you know, I understand if you want to watch the show, so I don't want to hold you. You know, I'm gonna go turn it on now so you don't spoil it. Okay, brother. That's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I appreciate you for showing uh okay. showing out today. Deuce Andretti, go follow follow him. Deuce Andretti on Twitter. Like I said, spell a great wrong. follow. Make sure you spell it wrong. Flip the E and the U. Um, great follow, worth following, and just a funny guy, good guy, and uh, we'll have one here again soon. We look forward to it. Deuce, I'm gonna try to see about something uh uh with Jason, by the way. So just keep an eye out for that. Okay, I'm trying to that'll be fucking dope, bro. Let me know. Yeah, we we, we gotta do mock draft. Mock draft for sure. Also, all right, oh, love yeah, you, brother. Definitely. I'll see you next all time. Right, love you. Bro. Yes, sir. All right, so it's just us in the building now. Um, appreciate
appreciate you guys. Before we get into it, actually, let's just get this out the way so we'll have our conversation. We'll kick it. So, Paul B. Balcom, Paul B. Balcom on Twitter. I can't stress how important that is to go yes. follow this man. Yes. Good conversations. Uh, and also, by the way, aside from good conversations, because I always say that, one thing I want to say is, and the same thing goes for Deuce Andretti there, but I'll say, especially for Paul, is you could get introduced to some shit that just is not in your algorithm. It's completely um, out of left field for me, anyways. Like, there's plenty of times that if I didn't have Paul and a friend on Twitter, I might actually not see a certain piece of news that's just not getting to me through well you know what that that, thank you for saying that yeah of course because that's why i do it okay a lot of people think paul you're just argumentative and it's like hey listen (laughs) at times sure i I wish i wish life was more of a sue sale but i do understand that where i live okay i I live in a in a very information yeah so so there has to be the reverse side because i algorithm yeah because listen your algorithm i'm not gonna lie because mine has gotten it from a few friends of ours that we have a group chat with can get very skewed Oh, so, yeah, yeah. so there's Definitely. like you just need the other side a little bit. Course, so now that you said that, I'm gonna double yeah, up. Yeah. Oh, brother, I say so. Instagram stories. I'm sorry, Facebook friends. I mean, I love. I mainly get it off of Twitter because I don't spend a lot of time on Instagram, and I don't go to Facebook almost at all anymore. Um, but the Twitter stuff is really interesting because more Twitter. like. Even though it's to- it is toxic, there's conversations yeah. happening. So I always think that's really interesting. But, um, so yeah, that's Paul B. Balcom. Make sure you go support. Um, and then for us, it's Sit in Politic. That's on Sit all Politic. platforms across the board. Go check out Spotify and Apple. I want to stress that just because if anything goes wonky with YouTube, they've already kind of blackballed your boy a little bit. So if anything weird happens here, I want the audience to still be able to find us. And that is on uh, Twitter for one. And then also Apple and uh, Spotify. And those are video podcasts and everything. Yes, yes. which your Twitter. I will say oh, you want to you want to tell everybody else <laughs> the that. most wide spectrum of stuff. Okay. And That's all of it, you can shit. just talk about And again. Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah. fun just to get in the comments and just kind of definitely, definitely. No, I mean, Twitter, I actually, although, like I said, it is a toxic. So I have to always preface it with that. Cause I think there is some shit that's just really unhealthy with it. Of um, I do think like just from how like isolated, at least I can really, I know we all are like that, but I definitely feel it from time to time. That's an outlet to where, you know, you just feel, you just feel not alone. You know what I mean? Honestly, in a weird way, yeah. uh, you just hop on there and you're like, okay, these are all people that are discussing shit that either there's shit that super, super matters all the way to shit that and this is really including myself matter. where I'm talking about, I'll be talking about like Israel and Gaza and like sending out some fucking message. And then next thing I'm talking about fucking Kendrick Lamar and, and drake so it's like yeah. i love that kind of <laughs> and, and, and maybe even more passionately like <laughs> I, I i do i do love how sometimes i'm so so angry and thing and then it's like i send it and then i go back on my feet and i go down and see like the sweetest thing you're like oh yeah, you're yeah. gonna a completely true. different conversation <laughs> something wholesome um but uh one quick question that we're yeah, gonna follow yeah, just yeah. uh paying paying for a verification which used All to right. mean something now it's just kind of like it's just a membership, right? Yeah, I thought about that. Go ahead. Because, yeah. like, man, I feel like the, the character limit is getting smaller. It's probably not, but like, I'm like, damn, dude. And then you see these people who you you can hit the C more, and I really need that because oh, okay, the one because yeah. you see how I go like one, two, three, yeah, yeah. and then okay, now go back down, and it's yeah, like. Yeah. It would be cool to like one big thing, but I don't know if it's worth paying. Like, I, I don't know if I want to give Elon more money. I'll be honest. <laughs> so I wouldn't for that if it was me. But I mean, it, to each his own. The uh, I've considered it because of the uh, like signal boosting. So like right. just being able to reach more people and getting like priority. Uh, I I don't know if that's still what he's implemented or planned on implementing but i know that's one of the things that he talked about uh when people were complaining about yeah. paying for it that's one of the things he's like well you know people will get uh like that's basically preferential treatment a little sure. bit so i've thought about that we just because yeah because twitter is one of uh the ones that we get the most traffic on as far as like these actual videos so uh, i have thought about really taking advantage of that and also dropping the individual like videos that i chop up i thought about dropping those on twitter yeah. it's just it's weird for me it's like it feels like shit comes and goes so quick on twitter so it almost mm-hmm. seems like it's a waste but um it's probably not and i just need to tighten up so all right so sit in politic paul b balcom those are where you find us um uh, paul b balcom on twitter and then sit in politic on all platforms go support show some love we appreciate everybody that came in today jaded spades iceberg slim by the way iceberg slim go check him out on the fresh out uh yeah, yeah the fresh out podcast that's an awesome hip-hop podcast that i watch uh, and i appreciate him for coming through here and supporting the sit politics uh and then we got close sings go check out close sings you got some great singing content on that page oh. and uh, i appreciate you for hopping in here and supporting oh, and uh chloe it's chloe without an e so okay. c-h-l-o and then sings 
Okay, like, I see. Yeah, yep. Right there. Wow. So yeah, go check her out. A lot of great content, a lot of cool like play content over there and stuff. And I'm sure she's going to continue to build that over there. But I appreciate you uh, t- finding the time to hop in here and support. Oh, yeah. Um. So without any further ado, Fallout. Um. Fallout, based off of the Fallout video game series, came out on Amazon Prime. Uh, this past week it was released a little early actually and released in its entirety and um yeah i mean it came out there's not really much more preamble to get into i want to get how we feel about it uh i guess i'll, I'll start off you too start. yeah I'll definitely. so this is your baby yeah i love this so and i i knew that i was gonna love it just from the trailers that i had seen leading up to it uh i knew that at the very least that i would really enjoy it um i was actually pleasantly surprised though when i started to watch it with the amount of faithfulness to the source material as far as like the video games there was tons of easter eggs in there where they weren't like they weren't forced in the way where uh it took me out of the show like it's like oh they're really forcing this concept from the game to be in the show it was, there's was no moments of that they're always really subtle and just if you paid it i'm sure i missed a shit ton of them like for example uh there's uh the main character in this it's a woman named lucy uh which by the way i thought she was amazing she might have been my favorite part of the show uh but she ends up getting radiation poisoning and actually uh, this is so this is a world by the way i should take a moment because some of you guys probably don't have the backstory so real quick just really really fast to give you guys some spoilers like spoilers but this won't be too much spoilers just i'm gonna give you an idea of the entire universe um and then this is a more specific story but so fallout and spoilers 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 yeah we're gonna spoil uh, everything yeah we are definitely gonna get (laughs) uh but the story itself is based around like a a post-apocalyptic world where bombs had been set off uh this is a society that had um Uh, In the 1950s, they end up basically relying upon nuclear energy. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's one of the main difference between our world and their world is that they actually went headfirst into nuclear energy, where in our world, obviously, we peeled that back and we're uh, afraid of, you know, some of the costs. And then also there's lobbyists, uh, fossil fuels, uh, lobbyists. Fallout, shall we say. Exactly, exactly. So so in this society, they move forward with that. They end up actually... um, having bomb bombs are dropped and that's the whole point of the fallout series uh bombs are dropped and then you're in this post apocalyptic world this covers a little bit of before the bombs are dropped so you get to see some of that and then a little bit uh and a lot of it is covered after the uh, bombs have dropped and uh, that's to be expected though like i said because fallout is mostly covering that uh, i'm trying to think there's factions in this world military factions um there's yeah well i, I want it because there's going to be so much so <clears throat> someone who didn't play the game okay Okay, love the series. So I want to okay. ask you, kind of as we go, if what if this was in the game, if what so yeah, please, yeah. the Brotherhood part of the game, yeah, or is that um, yeah. uh, uh, Sunny Shade or uh, or whatever yeah, it's the, called the, the sh- community? Sh- I know shady, about. shady yeah. something. So there's a community yeah. in this show that is a big part of it that ends up not being gets blown away, um, which isn't much of Shady I Sands. Yeah, Shady Sands. That's right. Uh, that I don't know because I didn't play the earlier games. Okay. So this one is based in California area. You end up dealing with what's called the New Republic of California, which is basically a government that's trying to restart society. Right. Um, and if you're familiar with the games, anybody out there, um, that was covered more like Fallout 1, I think. Fallout 2 was okay. more of that. So Fallout 4 is the one that I played in detail. I played New Vegas, but I didn't finish, but I played all of Fallout 4. Um and that's actually like more Boston area. So okay. the Brotherhood of Steel is in that, um, but not the new Republic of California. Okay. You know, not that. Kind of the vaults. Do they have like like where the vaults are a big part of the gameplay? Oh yeah. All, all, all like like they have how there's different vaults throughout. And it's all vault tech. All that's the same. Yeah, definitely. The vaults um, are like the one of the main things. So in so i think it's like this with all of them i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm like 90 percent sure that it is that all the games follow uh what's called a vault dweller okay um yeah and then and then so so is it kind of like a like a grand theft auto is it kind of like a call of duty campaign or is it kind of like a bully campaign uh like like okay like like uh call of duty or like okay so is it more free roam like like completely free roam so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 like, 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 or is it kind of like bully, where it's like it's free roam, but it's not necessarily. There's you have to hit every checkpoint with the story. 
uh, is kind of more secluded, or is it kind of like Call of Duty, where it's just basically you're Linear. just playing the whole story? No, it's more it's open world. So okay. it's open world. There's just like you know, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's like Grand Theft Auto, and I know you're not saying that you're trying to get like a general idea. Um, if I was gonna compare it to something, probably be more like Skyrim. If you played that. I've seen it played. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's yeah. more like that. It's a role playing game. Role play, RPG. Yeah, okay. RPG, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you have a gun. So, I mean, the, but it's easier. Like when I say role playing game, though, it's not like Elden Ring. I had a hard time with Elden Ring. They do a good job of like making the combat in Fallout worthwhile, I guess, okay. watching or playing rather. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's more, much more like an open world game. You start out in all of them, as far as I know. And you guys in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong. But um, as a vault dweller, you end okay. up coming from, you, go to the surface for whatever reason um in the one that i played fallout 4 it's because your kids are kidnapped pretty much everything i'm really honestly almost everything was accurate okay, i, I yeah. can't really remember i'm sure there's people online that had like small issues with things but like the general things they got all of it right that i right. saw so like the vaults them having uh, experiments the whole purpose it actually for, as a game player it was interesting because it actually paid off some things that i hadn't seen paid off in the okay. games so like the reasoning and how all that happened as to like why there were experiments in the vaults i and once again correct me if i'm wrong i don't think that gets explained in the yeah, games but then it ends up it's a main part of the uh television show so um so that was really great i could see how as a game player um there's more to pull from this but i i, I don't want to i don't want to use Something that as like a crutch a well no no i'm not saying that i'm saying but i don't want to use that as a crutch because any of you guys out there that haven't played the game i think there's still a really really great show here um mm -hmm. and i no. think that yeah. and i think that applies for anybody like if you if you read the books uh, you've read the harry potter books for example well then there's going to be like just something extra there for you when you watch the movies it doesn't mean that a, a person that doesn't know shit about mm -hmm. harry potter couldn't enjoy those films but just having that extra context either one makes you fucking actually hate yeah. it more or it makes you appreciate some of the details. So like, uh, like what I was going to say is like, I, again, I never played the game. So mm -hmm. I know it was a big game. Um, I never played the game and watching it, man, like, oh shit, I told you I watched eight, all the eight episodes yeah. throughout the work days, two days. Like it was, mm -hmm. it's that good. It gave me like a nice low key vibe through the production, mm -hmm. like kind of how it was. Um, but uh, last question, video game TV show reference that yeah. I really have right now is, is the game do you get someone like how she had the ghoul for a little bit the maximus and all this like like a uh companion, companion throughout the game is that yeah. kind of a yeah you have companion so uh it's kind of just like that actually as far as like you can only have one companion mm -hmm. in the game so i thought that was interesting because when the main character lucy and the ghoul started traveling together he actually the dog stops traveling with him because he says like something to her like oh it's not my dog yeah and then he, which i thought was interesting because in the game actually that's there's, funny there's that's, a dog that's cool yeah there's a dog just like so that so and this is another thing that they kind of paid off from the uh, games where you have this character called dog meat in the game and it's a dog just like the one in the thing and i think he actually calls him dog meat at one point um and uh he's a companion of yours so you also have a ghoul and I thought he was actually going to be playing that ghoul, but he's not. Uh, I don't think okay. there's a ghoul called, named Hancock uh, in the game, and uh, he's like he's like how the ghoul is in this, where he's sentient, not uh, you know feral, um, yeah. so not like a zombie. But um, yeah, did you have anything? Else? No, I was, yeah. no. I'm... Yeah. So, uh, but so I was really impressed from the start, from the depiction First of, of was... the vault. I thought the vault was so cool depicting the kind of like culture that they have was really yes. interesting to me um i was watching it with somebody that didn't play the games and at first i started watching it this, this is my woman by the way so i was watching it and then at first she's like oh st stop watching it i need to watch it with you and then i did and then when we're watching it i wanted to check back in with her also just to kind of get a non-game player's perspective and she uh was saying that she really wasn't that blown away by it and her criticism was with the main character actually oh, which i think like was actually so well she doesn't that she didn't like it she didn't like how she was reacting to things oh. because she leaves the vault and then um you have to understand like i said in the vault this is a this is a environment that is uh completely controlled <coughs> and completely controlled outside of the apocalypse so after she leaves that area 
and in her case, like I said, they all have their own experiments, the vaults. In her case, it's a society built off of like a meritocracy, which is like built off of, you know, basically hard work and people that have merit and deserve things. Um, and also another thing that she that is a theme throughout the entire show is doing the right thing. The, the golden, golden rule, rule which, yeah. uh, yes, that's what us liberals live our life yeah. by. So, <laughs> so do, uh, do unto others as you want done to you. So that's a huge part of it. But this is these are not rules that are played by <laughs> all by the surface <laughs> so she ends up going to the surface and there is a little bit of like a resistance i guess to immediately change based off the things she still you know wants to treat people right and so on and so right. forth um and uh, the per when i was watching the person i was watching with was kind of like uh after she got fucked over this way and this way wouldn't she change but then you do end up seeing her change you, you and then see she, that evolution and then, like yeah. i said the person i was watching with actually loved it it was like okay now i see it and also the pro the the premise or actually just having the context from playing the game, you know where it's like she's acting naive, but she would be naive. She would was, definitely be this naive. This was the yes. issue with a lot of these characters. Like I also heard, uh, I talked to somebody else, and they were criticizing the Maximus character, who actually I didn't like, by the way, and I didn't like even at okay. the end. But they were criticizing how like they're like, oh, they're dumb and like they they can't even speak when they're asked a direct question. And for me, I'm like, okay, that is annoying, and I get it. And like I said, I didn't like his character. He pissed me off. But Take into consideration a person that is basically adopted by a military faction in a right. post-apocalyptic world. And this military faction is not just the army or whatever, like how we have in this world. It's fucking brutal. Be it's all and all. Yeah, like, it's literally cutthroat. People, like, even to the point at the beginning of the series, it's kind of alluded that his his best friend, they build it all up, their best friends, the only person that cares about them, they end up actually getting fucked up. They, there's a razor, razor blade in their yep. boot, and they leave it open to where, like, <laughs> did he do it? That's how fucked up the society yes. is. Did he fuck over his best friend right. um, in having this to, like, huge to, opportunity? To get advanced because he wanted this. Exactly. It, yeah. It, no, uh, I was going to say, like, like I, I, I love, like, I, I took notes throughout, like, like live yeah. notes, right? Like I put like first seven minutes was wow. Like like mm -hmm. uh, like honestly, like the way they set the story up, I thought was really good. I thought the way that they set up each episode for the next and future episodes, because like because like, I'm somebody who I watch something and then like I, I start to like try to like guess as like as it goes. Like like I saw the mysteries ahead of time. Like mm -hmm. I didn't I will say like I didn't like when she first left the vault mm -hmm. and she sees the table where you have like the family that's that's dead at the table, right? Like you just have their their skeletons. And then they then they showed that Vault Tech had the plan D. It, had, it was Vault Tech plan D uh econo package poison. Mm -hmm. And it's like so 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 basically that Vault Tech, so, so right there I put okay, so Vault Tech obviously is part of this like end of the world mm -hmm. because they're gonna put uh <coughs> the, the, they they built the vaults and then they're giving people the poor people poison. Mm -hmm. And it's like if the vaults are just a precaution, why the fuck would I need poison? Yeah. Like like you're obviously making money and, and monetizing it as much as you can but i but they kept that for someone like me and blew my mind at the reveal of like everything that actually happened which obviously sure. we'll get to but it's yeah, like yeah. it's like I, I just thought episode by episode they did a great job explaining everything out uh for somebody who didn't play the game so it's like i didn't have many questions you understood where the you understood as time if you're patient mm -hmm. why he's a ghoul how that whole process yeah. you you understand like a lot of it uh the the cool thing with um that fight scene that right after the wedding was insane oh, right after the where wedding. the raiders oh, yeah, come yeah, into yeah, to, yeah. to, to vault so, 33 by the way, let's yeah let's make that clear real quick for the audience since we, let's in the you want to go episode by episode what do you sort of yeah, so, yeah we don't have to because <laughs> honestly i don't remember exactly what happened in every episode but this is one of the big flash points i think we should address and if there's any issues that you have with it so um our main character lucy she is at the point where you know she's ready to have kids and stuff this is the apocalypse and in these vaults there's a high uh value on reproducing so you can very to, old testament feel yeah yeah so um she's at that point she doesn't have any suitors they kind of lay out like a lot of people in your own vault or your own relatives and all that kind of stuff yeah. <laughs> do, do, do the, the immediate jokes for like like how like yeah i can't wait to get married so i can experience the real thing like you know, cousin practice is okay, yeah, but it's yeah. been 10 years. It's like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and her cousin being in love with her, that was her an interesting her, choice. She, she had to tell her brother right from the beginning, yeah. like, like Jets on the worm. Like, yeah. there are rules against brothers and sisters yeah. for a reason. Yeah, literally. And it's like, oh, what the? I'm like, yeah. you know, as someone who's famous from Alabama, ah. I'm offended. Yeah, well, and, I think, and, and I think with that, by the way, it little things like that give you, like, a glimpse of, like, this is actually, it, yes. like, it's pristine, 
it's I guess in a lot of ways it's better than the surface and it looks clean and everybody seems like they're being productive and Utopia. everybody's like happy. But then in reality, there's like these really weird, like unsettling <laughs> practices in the Very. in these vaults. Um, so yeah, so you end up having she wants to get married, they don't have anybody for her in her vault, so they're gonna actually marry her to somebody from Vault 32. Mm -hmm. In this case, this is a little different from the game. There's three vaults that are connected in this. Uh, uh, story and that slowly gets it and we'll get into like exactly why but there's three vaults so there's 31 32 and 33 are all connected um, and in the game I don't know if there's any others like that but typically they would be like individual vaults like okay separate um, so so yeah so they're all connected so they want to do a they do like a every three year uh, trade with the vault next to them for like supplies or whatever yeah. um, and so they're going to trade a person for some supplies to vault 32 yeah. they want to get somebody for uh, Lucy to marry and so they do that it ends up blowing up because you end up finding out that raiders which raiders are a common thing in this universe just people that are just assholes who steal and fuck people over on the surface and um, uh, they've taken over vault 32 and now they're going to try to take over vault 33 and take all the resources right um, so that was interesting and that was an interesting discovery. Um, that was actually one of the reasons when I was watching it with uh, my woman, she was saying like, and then it is a good point now that we're actually talking about this is like, that is one of the craziest betrayals you can imagine. So after that, for her to still kind of like not have much skepticism with people, like you just got fucked by some guy, he immediately tried to kill you after fucking right. you. Um, and all of this was about the, and you married him for fuck's sake. Um, that was just that, but it was great for the just, yeah, uh, reason but, of the show. But I mean, I guess I could see why somebody might be like, okay, I'd like to see that have more of an impact on this person. Yeah. But which again, at that yeah. time, like, I, I guess like, cause they kind of hit like, well, like the people from vault 32 must have went insane. Like, 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 yeah. like, like what made them go crazy? What went on? And then that's where fucking norm being a little sneak goes yeah. over and you see like, well, okay. So their crops are kind of a dry. There's yeah. some like bodies. It's like, well, what's going on? Yeah. And then you, I mean, and later on, obviously, you end up finding out that's yeah, been an later issue for, on, for yeah. a long time. But but in that moment, it was still like kind of <laughs> like something had well, not been think, right. But I don't think that they did think that at first that like that there was people in Vault Thirty Two went crazy. He did. He, that like the her brother Norm, you said his name. I don't yeah. remember Norm. He uh uh he definitely was skeptical, but generally there actually wasn't much thinking about what went on at all, which kind of speaks to the level of control and like these people are going oh, yeah, through the motions right. yeah, you know yeah. what i mean it wasn't until later that it ends up you see from his perspective you see that people killed themselves in the vault yeah. and it looks fucking crazy but really i mean people pretty much just accept it to be yeah, honest, yeah you, you're right because because the whole concern was how did they get in mm -hmm. it was how, raiders they yeah, knew it was yeah, raiders yeah, at first. yeah 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 how did they get in? because yeah. because because a lady mount mount maldove or yeah, um, yeah. Uh, maldove or, yeah yeah maldove she she showed herself and all that so it's like that that was interesting and then like like okay obviously she's leaving the whole again the whole cousin thing of like no you yes. can't be we can't marry each other yeah, she wanted like, to leave with them she it's not good for society yeah please yeah. say no you need to stay <laughs> um interesting uh yeah. i i like honestly like that whole first episode i thought was a really good it wasn't too slow obviously it has to be a little slow but there's enough like i said kind of gave you that, that marvel loki vibe where it's like we're going to show you a battle. It's going to be gory as hell, but it's yeah. going to be very funny. Well, by, by the time of the set, the first episode, though, I do agree there was like a nice pace there. But I mean, by the end of the first episode, you're out of the vault. You're with, out of the vault. You Lucy. know Maximus. Right? I think that's yeah, and I think that's like more than you could really ask for. We're that's, already that's, out of the vault. We're now like that's perfect progression of the story in my opinion. Perfect. Yeah. So then, by the way, we have her. She's she's maneuvering the wasteland. Which which Lucy, real quick. Yeah. That girl. Did they not? Like, like, basically, pick Emma Stone without the salary. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, like, because, I mean, I did, like, like, her face, eyes, mannerisms. She didn't remind me of Emma Stone, honestly, but she did. I was uh, talking about while we were watching it. She reminded me of like uh, Wednesday. I was like, she'd be a great yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's good, that's like, good. Yeah, awesome yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, I know they already have a Wednesday, and she's she's great, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like she wanted to be in that or they wanted her for that i think she'd fit so, so, here, so uh, yeah, i was gonna say maximus like, like like what i wrote down for him that first episode was like 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 do i like this kid do i not like this kid like do you think he did this to his friend like yeah, because yeah. because again like he played like he didn't even when he was questioned so he showed him mad that his friend got promoted which obviously like that sucks which i I also put like again another black man can't trust a white woman because she brings them in to like look at the the T sixties the big teddy bear things robots and she and she <laughs> and then they get in trouble obviously and it's like all right boom and then she gets promoted so he shows he's mad 
Then you see the whole thing. So it's where she gets sliced on her on her thing by the razor blade. He gets pulled in by whatever their overseers call, forget his name. Mm-hmm. But uh he did the absolute worst job of of trying to convince him that he didn't do that. Yeah, like like really. he like he sat there was just like thinking real hard, like no, I no, I didn't do that. Yeah. It's like it, it kind of like, worked out for him because the guy was seemed like he loved yeah, it. He's like, he's like he's like, I love that you do anything. Yeah, he's, he's like, I'll, I'll do anything out here. And then yeah, that second episode, what we get into, that's where they introduce Ghoul, right? Uh, I don't remember. I mean, I th- thought he might have been introduced in the first episode, but maybe it might have been second. Cause, cause I, maybe I, I'm not sure. It's, yeah, it's like, around there. Like, like yeah, because I think that's what well, well, at least they show how because they introduced him as a uh, Cooper mm-hmm. in the first one, the first like seven minutes or so. Oh, okay, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you saw him as Cooper, and you knew if you watched the preview that that's who yeah, the, the obviously actor, cowboy right. you know Ghoul's going to be. Uh, which again, that moment was kind of like. You're you're questioning like like what's the deal with like the guys being like you know kind of sending them at the party and all that, but the whole thing where he gets pulled out of the the ground, yeah. right uh, in the graveyard, fucking kills the kills the guys who are wanting to hire him. Like yeah. like we're here to hire you for something, and he's like, all right, yeah, well, yeah, I'm just gonna kill you. Well, I thought that was really cool, kind of like uh, homage to, and I thought I think a lot of his shit was a cool homage to just old school westerns and it was yes. cool that they ended up working that into his character where he was <laughs> an old school western, western actor, actor. <laughs> and with ghouls ex-military the, yeah and, and with ghouls in the game uh they're they're known to like be crazy even the ones that are like him uh where they still have some level of their like you know yeah, uh, like 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 roger like roger guy or, yeah, yeah like they're yeah. still fucked up and crazy and they take a shit ton of drugs to prevent themselves from turning into a ghoul and because they have a, a resistance to drugs you can actually turn into a ghoul in the game uh if Ooh. you like eat dead people and shit oh, no uh, shit. yeah so uh but you can continue to play as them and you'll just have higher levels of chemical uh uh immunity and shit like that uh Damn, you mentioned something. Oh, so yeah, the uh, uh, I think they call him a panko at the party, and that's an interesting. It really sets the kind of. It really, honestly, is sneakily, really sets what the overarching lesson is for the story, which is this kind of like economic capitalism message, right? And uh, not like it's not like super focused in on the like communism good thing angle either, which I thought was good. You know, I didn't want it to get weighed down too much by that. <laughs> yeah. It just it 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 positions communism as an adversary to capitalism, but we don't really get too much of like delving into that ideology, but we do with capitalism and basically is the reason for everything bad. That's going to go on in the story. So even in this case, um, it kind of gives you an idea. That's where they're leaning. Cause they're, cause Panko is like a capitalist slur. Right. Um, so, and and that's kind of like where like, it was like, okay, so like it was basically, yeah. Capitalism versus, the alternative that was being painted as communism, which then you had people from there that kept coming out and being like, we're not communists. Like, yeah. like just come to come to a meeting, which in that, that was like, again, that, that speaks to like that cold war time where that was yeah. happening. Yeah. It's real. You know, like Oppenheimer, you saw in the movie, like you sure. had, at real university, Stanford, like how all this stuff where it's like there, your uh, departments were split. On whether, hey, come to this meeting where I'm going to turn you in for being a communist, like all this, or being a sympathizer. So, yeah, no, I thought, I thought that kind of what was real cool. Um, the whole scene in Philly and their little Western town there, where, yeah, he shoots which them. was really cool, by the way, because, uh, like from a game perspective, that was one of the first moments, aside from the vault, the vault was really crazy to see as somebody that played the games, but, um, that town it was it wasn't there's a town called uh uh uh, i think it's called diamond city in the game it looked almost exactly like it it was like it was really cool to see that come to life see like the repurposed kind of merchandising you know how they have the nuka cola signs and shit that are like used for random things so uh that kind of uh just attention to detail was something that continuously i found myself really appreciating and here by the way before we get too far from that i this i have that this scene from philly i want to show you guys uh this is a scene from the show i want to share with you guys give you a little taste of you know what it was about and um like i said i want to hear you guys opinion on it so let's go but i've been paid a whole lot of caps to provide this man safe transport out of philly Same plans, I guess. All right, so we're going to get right back Same into it, plan. but I think it's important to know. Um, Poured out of that, uh, would be fucking shitty. 
Copy. All right. That's like Tilly blows his fucking leg pull off. That is, uh, that's exactly how, like, the combat in the game goes. So this entire scene is really, like, sh paying homage again to how the actual gameplay of the game is done. So there's a thing called the VAT system in the game. And, like I said, it's RPG, so the shooting's kind of unique. But it's where you can go into this, like, slow motion mode, essentially. It, like, stops time. And then you can select parts of like limbs of people's <laughs> bodies and then if you like select somebody's leg you'll blow it off just That's like that cool. so this is kind of like essentially what they're having him do like this character is basically doing that um in this moment because there's and we're going to continue to see it but he's just blowing motherfuckers <laughs> <legs. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> change plans i guess <laughs> 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 You don't get shit if I kill him first. And by the way, with this, because you, you hear him like doing his little one liners. At first, I thought that was like kind of cringy in a way. I didn't hate it, but it's kind of cringy. Um, but I actually grew to really appreciate that because how they tied in the fact that he's almost like insane playing a, a character version of himself. You know what yes. I mean? Like walking through this wasteland. He's like, I'm cowboy version of Cooper. Of fucking. Cooper, yes. Even later on, he sees a video of himself playing this character and he's almost like taken fucking back seeing i think his face and yeah. seeing him as the person 200 years ago mm -hmm. um because that's another thing by the way for people that don't watch these ghouls they live he was this character the ghoul that you're seeing was actually alive at the time that the bombs were so, dropped so 219 years later yeah and they have these uh you know extended lifespans because of the fact that like zombie um <laughs> so here we go Even this right here it does this. It slow down and show you your bullets. Uh, what in the oh, oh, he's next to him. <laughs> Damn, y'all ain't got me working up an appetite. So here, and by the way, this is something else that I thought was really cool about this game. And I'll show you some more stuff that kind of really paints this picture. But I love that this is one of our main characters, one of our quote unquote heroes, if you will. And there are several times that he does things that are just not heroic in this in this <laughs> in this wasteland, which is to no not rules. It's to not water it down, though. You know what yeah, I mean? It's to not water it down and try to, you know, protect these characters that we're following, like make them feel real, make this guy feel like he actually has been in this wasteland for 200 plus years and right. had to survive. Which, um, which one of my favorite lines that they kind of hit a couple times in the movie in the show series is uh, when they say to her, like, once you realize, like, like, like once you find out what you're looking for, you sure you're still going to want it. Yeah. And and they're basically like like this world up here completely different though everything that, that you've been taught yeah. and you thought out and it's like yeah but like you have to like there's going to be a, cru a cruelty to this world well i mean and i think so I, I i love that you brought that up and i think part of it is that but i took it to an even another level as far as like when i heard that line and i, I agree it's important i took it and maybe this is even what you're getting at but i took it more as like what's going to end up happening is going to actually change you as a person right right and then yeah. that's going to change what you're even what you even want exactly general, exactly person. your yeah. whole perception is going to change which is going to change that 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 desire and then obviously you're going to learn some truths and all that yeah but like like another thing is like when uh, right before this scene where she goes and talks to that lady in the shop mm -hmm. or whatever. And the lady like realizes she, that she's a, uh, a vault oh, dweller yeah. and is like, like looks at her fingers and it's like, Oh, you even have all 10 fingers. Like, yeah. like that's, like, well, okay. she doesn't want to help her, by the way. Yeah, she doesn't want to yeah. help her at all. Which, this is, it's, which she doesn't even understand. She's like, she, I'm coming to you for help. The lady says, like, oh, I know who that is. And she's like, okay, well, help me. And then she's like, fuck you. Yeah, fuck <laughs> you. Leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which which we understand because, again, yeah. this and this is one of the cool things that that uh, like I like about the show. And I'm sorry to go on like a thing, but like uh, you identify so many times with, with every character. Like, not every, but so many. Like, like, like in that moment... <clears throat> You feel for Lucy, right? Because you feel for because like she's looking for her dad, so you know yeah. she's distraught. And in her perspective, they are good. 
Yeah. Her entire life has been taught to not even lie to people. Yeah. Like you do nothing bad. As she's out in this wasteland that is cruel, no rules, right? And then you have this old lady who she's sitting here saying, like, hey, listen, I've had to sit here and live in this hell mm -hmm. while you're pampered. Mm -hmm. So really, who's the good person? And, it, and you kind of sit there <coughs> on both sides that in that well, in that moment where it's like, why should she help you? Like, yeah, and she actually touches on in a subtle way in this. Well, not subtle, but just doesn't delve into the detail of it where she kind of reminds you as the viewer like what you're saying, like from a privileged standpoint that the people that are in these vaults are fucking rich people rich. from the previous world yes. that were able to buy a spot in vaults. Yeah. Which and avoid, gets deeper and later. And it's, yeah. Holocaust. So you're not, when you're, when you're following Lucy, it, you, you're almost not <laughs> yeah. aware of that. And then this lady really brings that back home where she's like, basically reminds you of how these people would be viewed by the current society. Yes. And she really, the old lady really nails that, uh, in that kind of like dialogue yep. and like and for me i loved the lady that played lucy i thought she was so oh, fantastic awesome. so uh she really nailed it every time she was slowly just being fucking just broken by these people that were that are broken and she's like what the fuck and so many times she's like this place sucks she's like it fucking sucks <laughs> here, <bro."> Did she? <laughs> <hate it. laughs> this doctor is good I'd offer you one of these cherry tomatoes, but you got a hole in your neck. See, like this kind of shit was was cringy a little bit for that's me, but I will say, yeah, like it grows on it, it. it grew on me, and and also you have to, it it grew on me because of what it what it actually was serving in the story. It's not just this guy's weirdly, you know, out of place <laughs> having these fucking uh, one liners. It's like it's that he's like this weird version of this character slash himself that I, honestly. Going off of from the game standpoint, it's not even clear how much of that would be clear in his head what is real and what's not. So that part they didn't really get into too much as far as like like you don't really see him thinking back to I don't know if his flashbacks are supposed to be him thinking back or if that's just supposed to be like us being filled in. Right. Yeah. So uh, that I guess wasn't that clear, like exactly how like in touch with reality it was i guess i wish i would have seen a little bit more of that but i'm sure we will honestly yeah. as the series goes on and that'll probably become less and less it'll become less and less stable and become more and more of a thing i'm sure yeah. uh, at some point in the series <clears throat> This one's dope. Yeah, that kind of shit, like I said, really almost identical to the game. Like, uh, and then, like, he didn't kill her, and that's like he spared her. And, 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 and that's one of the things about the ghoul that I like is like the tomatoes. There is like this like redeemable side in. Yeah, there is. I mean, I, I don't know how how consistent that was with his character that he didn't kill her. To be honest, because at this point, I think he slowly gets redeemed by Lucy over time. Yeah, because he, you know I mean? he well, he could have killed Lucy earlier, and he could have killed Maximus. And he didn't kill either, well, but he didn't kill Lucy because he wanted to trade her. That is true. Yeah. So then he ends up trading her. It doesn't give, it doesn't <laughs> that, give a fuck. That was actually, very, that goes, very true. He actually goes fully through yeah, with the trade. Yeah, full, full on, bro. Like, like no regrets. And and I, then, but at the beautiful part is we already touched on it. That was one of the big payoffs in the series was when Lucy goes in there. She ends up uh, confronting these guys who are uh, basically trying to sell organs and shit. Um, she ends up getting the product that he bargained for and ends up giving it to the ghoul as he's like basically dying on the ground because he says, needs his medicine. And then she says, you know, golden, gold rule, motherfucker. So and, and, uh, then, and then she also hits like, I may look like you. Or like, 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 I may one day look like you, but I'll never be you. 
yeah, yeah. And, and like, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Well, which by the but really painted and illustrated that between those two characters, who the ghoul at this point hasn't been very redeemable. Even though I liked him, he was a, a cool character still, and I liked him. But he was, and, and that's why I applauded earlier was that they didn't sugarcoat it. Like he did kill a fucking whole town of people oh, right there. Kill he shot a doctor, which I mean, I'm not exactly sure like i'm not exactly sure how horrible this doctor is if he like necessarily deserved to die or not maybe i missed something with that but i was i was unclear with his involvement and everything going on well so i'm not sure if he was a bad guy is my point but they didn't hesitate to have the ghoul be consistent with what his motivations were as a character good guy or bad guy things are not black and white and he's blowing motherfuckers yeah, off. And, and, and and that's what i'm saying yeah. is like like i took it as like He's out here to to do his job. He is out to get bounties. He's out to like keep himself going because he has a mission, and he's hit on his missions to find his family. Right. Yeah. So his whole thing is like is so I feel like like the shooting the the leg off of the doctor that was like a big like she said, get him there safely. Boom. Like well, change the plans. The, he's he's no longer a one piece. Mm -hmm. So you failed at that. So you're not getting thousand bottle caps. Yeah. So so where's the negotiating table at now? He needs the old lady for whatever information. Fine. Down to the dog. He stabbed the dog before that. Cause, or the, oh, yeah. True. He, or maybe it's about to come or whatever. He stabs the dog because the dog attacks him. He heals the dog. But now, again, was that so he could track? Yeah, I don't know. You know what yeah, I, mean? I don't know. But even him killing the dog, well, so originally, like, injuring the dog. I like because that's once again, like, it's being, it's not. It's being consistent. It's, and it's also not, like babying the audience right like we can handle like situations where it's like i have to understand <laughs> well and i have to understand okay people are complex he might actually still overall be a good guy but he may feel as if like the ends justify the means in this scenario so then i have to right you know it, it, that's the interesting part right. of storytelling yeah so get into that and that's a uh in uh, most times i think audiences will reward you like some of the biggest fucking game of thrones like these are the biggest Breaking Bad follows a fucking meth dealer for fuck's sake. One of the biggest shows of, of <laughs> who, who you side with so much. Who you with, side with all the time, and you hated his poor yeah. wife. His, 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 his poor bitch of a wife, dude. dude. That so mad stop at complaining about him. So mad meth. at him for for cooking his own meth. <laughs> he has cancer. Holy <laughs> shit! Wild, yeah. Fuck it. Oh. <laughs> Right here. Come on, dude. Like, fuck. In the front of this guy, who they show you loves this yeah, dog. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is, I don't know if he was bad or not, so. Yeah. It seems like he probably was, like, like involved in some shit that wasn't. That's probably why he ran away. Well, well, well if you remember, like, like when he, like, when they did the whole thing, like, story build up of, like, him with the dog, where he sees that the puppy was under the, the weight requirement, the 10 mm -hmm. ounces. So he fit, fit that. Uh, then like saw the dog getting raised, like took the dog. Okay, cool. And then you see as he's trying to get through this pass, you saw there was like a creature that they're wheeling through, mm -hmm. and then he impl then he planted the chip or whatever like the power to him. Mm -hmm. But it's like I don't know if like, yeah, was he taking the information because he knew it was all bad, like what they were doing bad, and then was going to go run with it or what? Because he only left. Because the one doctor came in, saw the dog, confronted him about the power source being there, and then he wound up uh, like getting attacked. The dog killed him, yeah. so he had to go. No, that's true. So it's like, so it's like, uh, when was he going? What was he planning on doing with the power source? We yeah. don't know. So no, that's true. I don't. I'm not exactly sure who he was really, obviously, working for at the right. end of the day. Which you might um, find out. Yeah. Stand down now so this part right here uh and this might be the last part i show you guys in this then we'll get back into it and then i got one more video to show you around fallout but this part i thought was really interesting for video game players uh because this was the only time that i really noticed this anyways that stood out where she does this after all the people you see just got shot she pulls up and she tells them to stand down and she like She's about to tell him, like, I, I want to ask you nicely to please leave or something. Um, so in the video game, there's how your character's built. 
um, one of the things is charisma. So you can talk your way out of shit like this. So I kind of felt like this was a moment where they were paying homage to that. That's cool. Where you don't have to just shoot people in Fallout. You there's there's dialogue options, and sometimes you can completely avoid there is fights. Diplomacy. There's diplomacy. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, so she and I'll show you guys where she's like, okay, I'd like you to please stop. And then we'll see how that goes. Down now. Fucking vault dwellers. <laughs> Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. She said, stand down. And this is the MacBook guy that we've been talking to you guys about. Uh, by the way, something we didn't mention with the That's Maximus guy. The- <laughs> yeah, how he got the uh, power suit. So he ends up going. So after he, uh, the. A uh, woman ends up getting cut in her foot with the uh, razor. He takes her place, which means he's going to go be a squire. And remember what we said earlier about this. This is the guy that I was saying uh, that he's not a great communicator. He's really awkward and would be because he's raised in the society from like the age of like six, eight, yeah, something like where, that. Where he was found in rubble from the war, yeah. from the bomb being dropped. And obviously well, the, lost the, his family. The second set of bombs. Yeah, the second dropped. set. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then they end up taking him. And like I said, this is a brutal, brutal cutthroat society, extremely competitive um and uh so he gets he, his ass beat every day he gets his ass beat and people are just and, and we get to this point where you're it, it actually really interestingly highlights this uh because you see him being a squire for this guy and he has an idea of like he's moved up and he's out of the uh camp where people right. treat him like shit and all that and immediately and he's, he's like not gonna asking, be respected he's, he's gonna thinks, be respected exactly right. and he asks him like some question about being a knight and then basically the guy's like shut the fuck up and he hands him his like job cop- Trap area, yeah. yeah. His cock plate and is like clean this, um, and then has him put it on, and, and then like, has him put yeah. it on back on his cock. So the uh, uh, they end up getting out in the wilderness. They're you know doing little quests, side missions together. They're trying to actually hunt down the same doctor, uh, but shit ends up happening. They end up getting attacked by some uh, a mutant like bear, werewolf bear, yeah, thing. <laughs> and then, which is cool by the way. Once again, for guys, because I, I I kind of keep assuming that people have like have some background knowledge with the bomb being dropped. There's a lot of like crazy creatures that have been changed based off like radiation um so they end up coming in contact with uh, just a fucking monster and it beats his ass to the point where he's bleeding to death and maximus is slowly going to get him the shit that he needs to uh be healed stim packs which are the same things you use in the game which is another thing that was cool it looks just like that in game so the fucking old like, school which which which, which yeah. one of the crazy things is that i put down was like Okay, so so they go on the vault in like 1960s, 50s, they're like a right, Cold no, War. No, it's so, no, that's why it's kind of confusing. I actually thought this while playing the game too, so I understand why it's confusing. The 1950s, that is the point where like society changes. That's why the culture is still very 1950s, but the bombs don't get dropped till uh, 2077. It's actually a future. Uh, yeah. It's hard to, it is hard to tell. Yeah, 2077 is actually when the okay, first Because I know like we're 219 years in the future. Okay, because because okay. I've been wondering why hasn't there been any like technical like real te- uh, technological advancements like you see like like even like their screens that they have are still very like atari looking even on their like like uh a really advanced fucking yeah. ar- ar- arm plates yeah there are there aren't like real screens so mm-hmm. their tv tubes are still predated like pre-1970s mm-hmm. tv televisions yeah everything so- looks, <laughs> looks older i think a lot of that though is like aesthetic okay for like the game Honestly, okay because they're probably what they you know right so uh it's this aesthetic thing and also just to be able to like um put those kind of cultures against each other i think was probably interesting for okay. them as far as like update like a 1950s futuristic kind of society and gotcha, I, I feel that. Um, but i, I agree because, with you like there are like the stem pack was really old yeah the stem pack definitely that was- but i mean honestly stem pack uh, i don't know See, you see that after the apocalypse has happened, though. So people are using things like repurposing. I think the stim pack is even supposed to kind of look like somebody took some like makeshift thing and made something okay. that people use. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, but yeah. So I think that's why you're not seeing like advancements there because they're just set back. So the only advancements you really get, things are just not organized enough. And we see in Correct. this. By the way, let's let's move this forward a little bit. As far as like, uh, this is one of the main, main, main plot points is the vaults. They're being uh prepared to come back and like basically repopulate the earth in the right way build the correct yep. society at least this is what they're told yep. um 
Yeah, yeah, mid Midwestern America. Exactly. This is yep. what they're told as as the people in the vaults. Uh, and you end up coming to the surface, and you already touched on a little bit the uh, shady sands place. Uh, you find out that that was a place that existed, and that's where Maximus comes from. And at some point, there were bombs dropped that completely destroyed that uh, city. And this was the city that you're first starting to see that's like really like a, a, a utopia in a way. Um, now, this is before the people from the vault have come up. At the beginning of the series, you see the main character's dad actually say that, uh, you know, radiations went down again this year. And uh, by the time that his kids have kids, we may be able to go to yeah. the surface. L Lucy, who just got Lucy, married, yeah. this is being at the wedding, right? So her kids will yeah. be able to go to the surface. Um, so kind of pushing that down the down the line because there's an idea that they want people to stay. Go ahead. Well, with Maximus getting the suit, did you agree with him? Like, like, oh, like, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. Thank you. For yeah. That. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you for bringing me back to that because mm -hmm. there's another thing with that I wanted to touch on, and this is why uh, people in uh, the few people were telling me they fucking wouldn't watch the show. Uh, <laughs> So he's getting the the stim pack for the night that he is in charge of like helping. Uh, and then the knight starts to basically just abuse him and tell him he's a fucking idiot. Well, do you know what people do? Do you know what they do to squires like you? You're the worst fucking squire in the world. They're going to kill you. This kind of shit. So then yeah. you see Maximus slowly like start to consider like, okay, am I not going to give this guy this fucking uh, stim pack? And then he decides not to. And the person, by the way, that is in this uh, uh, uniform is Michael Rappaport. <laughs> yeah. So by the way, no, but that's why people, so people, I've had a few people that I was talking to about the show that I respect and I was trying to get to watch it. And uh, some of them did watch it and they were like, I won't watch it because of Michael Rappaport completely the takes me out of the show. Why? Just yeah. because political views? Like political views. Which Here, is funny I, because... I, I want to make this quick because yeah. this is a review, of, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I do think it's kind of important to talk about. I loved it. You loved it. So we're both on the same page. Um, I just want because I want to hear you push back on it. Um, I want to give you like the best reason as to like why I why I see where they come they came yeah, from. Yeah, go ahead. And I this arg I had this argument off camera for hours. So trust me, I don't agree with it. Um, but I can see their I can see where they have some credence. Um where he is distracting. You know what I mean? Like when he took the mask off, I didn't mind. I was like, oh shit, that's Michael Rappaport. That's funny. Is what I, I, I laughed at that. Yeah, I, I like, thought it was funny. Rappaport. But uh, I could also see where some people it like kind of takes you out of the fantasy a little bit. He's a personality he that is built off of like not being an actor as much as like being michael rapaport online he's a divisive person um with the israel shit specifically extremely divisive right now um so i could see why it was a small role it didn't have to be michael rapaport there's a few people i could think of that could be just an asshole in a suit <laughs> uh and he's in there for such a sh he's in the movie for such a short period of time it's a glorified cameo um so I could see people's criticism of like why Michael Rappaport. You don't really need him to play that role. Many other people could, and you only risk kind of taking people out of the fantasy. Yeah. And creating. So um, he hasn't it, like he's always yeah. been kind of a uh, <clears throat> controversial person. I mean, he's very anti Trump. Trump. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, I less now though. I don't know if you want this <clears throat> recent shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would hope that the people who are anti cancel co culture. Or not being canceled culture right here because they disagree with somebody, so it's like, so well, I heard it from both sides. Right, I heard so, it from somebody I would consider li at least as liberal of, as me, or if not more, okay. and then the other person, is, you know, more conservative. Yeah, so but, I'm gonna hit all of them. So I hope that yeah, yeah. too. I feel like that that character again, like it, it just adds to it. Like yes, the character's supposed to be an asshole. That's that's yeah. the thing where I sided with Maximus in a way because. Yeah, like the guy decided he flat out said, I want to go shoot shit on board. So you're going to land. You're then going to walk up to a cave and be like, oh, you go. You you go, Squire. I'm suited and I'm the knight, but you go, little bitch. Mm -hmm. So then when something hits the fan, you can then go, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, and and take off and run it. away. <laughs> you run away. Then you get your ass mauled in a, while you're in a robot suit with the gun, right? You get fucking mauled, and then you're dog cussing the kid, saying you're a piece of shit. You're the worst ever. Yeah. You failed. They're gonna kill you. They're gonna hang you. They're gonna do all. It's like why would he? And I feel like Michael Rappaport plays that part perfectly. It's not been him acting. Yeah. It was just him being him. So it's like I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I feel, <laughs> I feel where people. But it's also like I thought that now we're at that point where it's like. We're, we're done with it. We're done with the whole, like, oh, you've upset me before with something you said, yeah. so I can't watch something I, that, that you play yeah. 
I agree. 70 just, seconds. Of? I agree. He just has a, he does have a loud voice. He's not there. like one of the quiet. And I don't mean, I, I, I like fucking literally he has a loud voice and then figuratively he's one of the most outspoken non politicians on I think I that, that that conflict it's an active conflict that people are very divided over that's all I'm saying I can see it I don't think it's a reason not to watch the show and one of the main reasons I don't think is because he's only in it for 30 seconds so it comes exactly. and goes yeah, it's like 70 yeah, seconds he's not like a main him. character it's not like that would be weird if he was fucking uh uh Maximus, for example. That, okay, that'd be weird. Now again, uh, th- so 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 does he never get a job again? No, you know I what I mean. Kind of like, that, like, like where do we draw the line? For my own, I don't know. Not you personally. Uh, yeah. Well, that's why it's tough for me to say. Because like for me, I would say abs- I don't give a fuck. Sure, give him a job again. Uh, the, part of the argument I had with the people on uh, on the phone and stuff was that you know because all some people. The person I was talking to on the phone with actually did say that this felt like to them because it wasn't necessary that it was then a, a decision where it's like a, a kind of like a uh, uh, quiet way to support what their their uh, political views. I didn't agree with. I I think can, that's can possible. I push back on that just a little. Well, can, go ahead. Just because of, I, just yeah. because I think that that's possible, but I think it's just as likely. Michael Rappaport's been in Hollywood for thirty fucking years, forty years. He may have a relationship with Christopher Nolan's fucking brother, who who is showrunner on this and uh, directed it. Um, and maybe there's a situation where he's just like, oh, I would like to put this guy I know in this. He's a, he's a good fit. Or Michael Rappaport. This is a, another thing I've seen where like people are fans of a certain uh, 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 series. So maybe he's a Fallout fan, and for whatever reason, Todd Howard, the, who's an executive producer and has and who created Fallout, for whatever reason, wanted to get him a spot in the movie. There's a million reasons. It doesn't yeah. have to be. And I'm not saying that's any of those. I'm I'm um, uh, speculating, but it doesn't have to also be. Oh, this is <laughs> this is uh, this casting was in support of Israel. <laughs> right, exactly, and, and, and that's saying he could have auditioned with twenty other people who sure. auditioned for for the part of the Titan or, or, or the Knight. Yeah, and then they said you play the best asshole out of the bunch, yeah, and then it, okay. then yeah. they, there it is, sure. and it's like again, I don't know if it was necessarily like 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 my pushback is yeah. to the whole like like it doesn't. Well, he didn't have to be casted. Well, none of them had to be casted. There was a, a single character on this any any actor actress on the show that had to be, had that part. They all were selected. So, yes, it but is a selective process. But, but the issue, the difference with him is that he's a divisive public figure where, like, the late, I don't even know, I think it's Ella Purnell, I think is the lady's name that played Lucy. Like, I didn't even, I honestly didn't even know she existed before we watched this. I, I seen her, I looked her up afterwards and found out she played in, uh, uh, like, the fucking kids of Miss Peregrine's house or whatever, which I watched back in the day. She's probably a kid in it. Um, so there's no baggage that she's bringing to the role no. Where Michael Rappaport. There is, a, I mean, for me, I think there is baggage. It's just not enough to where it's going to one. It's not even really going to affect how I enjoy the show or that scene even. And I agree a little bit with you too, as far as like, well, he's an ass. He's known as kind of like an asshole and he leans into that. He likes to be disliked like with the Trump shit. He's that's doing that. Thing. He's doing that. So people get pissed. Yeah, and that's like, his, say, that's his thing. Yeah, so, so it's like, I could see why uh, he made sense for that. Um, but as far as like saying like he doesn't need to be casted, I don't think it's a one to one because of that baggage that he brings. Yeah. I think that makes it a little. Yeah, bit I, I get that. But like, like it's like Ezra Miller. Like, like if you cast Ezra Miller, then it's like, it, you know, you well, cast Ezra his, Miller. Yeah. has been. Uh, well, I'm just talking about. Yeah, that. yeah. I, 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 get, I, get, I, get, I get the comparison, but yeah. then it's well, like I'm not, I'm not even. I trying. would understand more people being upset about yeah, Ezra yeah, Miller. Sure, sure, sure. But again, like Tim yeah. Allen. Tim Allen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do. He's very, very, very conservative. He's been very vocal against liberals and against the Hollywood elites at times. So that Christmas movie, why why they cast him as Santa again? Like find a new Santa because he's you didn't have to cast, recast him. Yeah, you didn't have to well, give okay. him you you don't have yeah. to give him new rules. Yeah, the roles because he's so divisive. Right? Oh, he's I'm very sorry. divisive. I I see what you're saying, it, and I think that's a fair it's point. Petty. I think it's a fair point, but I think that this like specifically how hot this Israel the God Israel this thing is, I get. It's yeah, like specifically, it's just what. And honestly, the fact that it has to do with war, and this is like a game. I mean, a, a show that is dealing heavily in like war and he's dealing with like yeah. a fucking warmonger character essentially but uh, i mean for me I, that mean, kind I, of- I didn't know michael rapport said fucking anything about israel oh, like, a lot. Was, 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, so that I might, had no idea. So I mean, for me, so I to did. me, it, it, it raised I no did. flag for I me. I did personally, and it didn't really. I didn't give a fuck. It's like he can have I his own opinion. Laugh. I was like, oh my he god. He can have his own opinion. To be honest, it's like I, that is irrelevant to me. I could. It's not that it doesn't come into my head though. So that's why I think that when I was having the argument on the phone, that was the one argument that I'm like, you know what? I could see that. That's valid. Where, um, it, you know, if this is a fantasy, sci-fi fantasy, you know, that just it does. It does take it does bring you back into the real world for a minute. And you do say that's Michael Rappaport. And like for me, somebody that knows his views on Israel, it makes me think like, oh, yeah, he wiles out on Israel um, or on on Palestine, rather, because he's in support of Israel. Um, but like I said, it's just not that big of a deal. Yeah. So for where it's going to yeah, take me yeah, out of it. Yeah, um, he, he played the part perfectly. I'll say that to where I wanted to kill him, too. Yeah, he's a total <laughs> <big guy. laughs> and, I mean, the thing is, the guy is the guy, uh, Maximus when he's making the decision not to give him. He could save this guy's life 100 percent. He could. So, and he's one of your main characters. So, again, it's doing the same thing like with the ghoul where the ghoul's doing these things that he's a hero. He's one of our heroes for sure. But he's doing things in this wasteland based off his miseducation of being in the wasteland that us as people that live in this society, we can't necessarily fully agree with. Don't, yeah. But uh, Michael Rappaport in this case does do a great job to make us like be like, well, fuck, dude, what would I do? And that's tough. Yeah. Like he is. Dude, he is flat out telling you like they're going to kill like, you. He's yeah, saying, yeah, he's saying like, you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. Basically saying, yeah. save my life. And then I'm going to yeah. turn you in so that so then you can get hung by a post and crows yeah. eat you. Because that's what he's saying. He's like, you know what yeah. they do to you? You're gonna you're gonna hang by a post and you the birds are gonna eat you. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, I you know what? Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. You can go ahead and bleed out. Okay. <laughs> that's how that and then you know what? I'll figure my next steps yeah. out. And that's which, which we go from there, and just to bring us up to speed with the rest of this clip, and then we'll be done with it. But um, he ends up taking the power suit. And this is where it gets kind of he ends up lying about who he is. He says that he's Michael Rappaport's character. Um, but that's where he fucked up. Baby. That's where I thought it but was interesting with this character because he does have this tendency to not trust people and like lie. He lies to Lucy about this. And it's like, well, you don't even have to. She he, doesn't fucking know yeah, anything. She doesn't know who, yeah. who, who Maximus is. Yeah. Yeah, you could have just night Maximus. Yeah, you guys yeah. night Max. That's a half lie. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> you you cleaned it up. <laughs> but yeah, so he's in here. This is the first time that Lucy or the ghoul meets the Maximus character. And by the way, they're all in search of the doctor that got his leg blown off in this scene. Uh, so because, all, because of what's yeah, yeah, so they're all also converging on what is their target to this point. Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel, stand down. Or be cut down. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Huh. Okay, it's not gonna show it, but then uh, you have a moment with Lucy and that Maximus character, and that kind of starts a little bit of a love interest between those two characters, because uh, she's just like enamored with this knight and his nightly behavior, which I thought was actually really cool. <laughs> I hated their relationship because, like I said, I didn't like the fucking uh, Maximus, Maximus guy, but I think it was really cool because up to this point, this is coming off of back to back to back unhonorable things that you see as the viewer you see uh, uh maximus do you see yeah. him let people die you think he might have uh <laughs> put a fucking razor in his best friend's boot all this kind of shit and then he meets our main character who at least uh, at this point i already thought she was awesome and she's immediately kind of enamored and fooled by this kind of oh. like ploy that he's playing this hero role she immediately falls for it so it puts you in this position as the viewer where you're like but like you know, you know, you're like this guy's fucking Bro. kind of a scumbag, Lucy. Please no. <laughs> Bro, at this point, her love interest has been her cousin. Yeah, that's pretty rough. That's a pretty murderer. Rough. <laughs> yeah. no, she's a, this guy. She does not know how to pick him. <laughs> yeah, she does he, not know how to pick him. Yeah, the vault uh, did not teach her that. Yeah, that was definitely <laughs> she missed that class. But, uh, uh, so yeah, you end up having that. They end up separating at this point. Um, uh, how does that end up happening? You have Lucy, I think, gets away with the doctor 
and then they continue to fight. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, the ghoul and uh, Maximus fight. They end up following her, and then there's this little cat and mouse thing. The doctor ends up passing away. But and, yeah, so, 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 so the old lady gives him a foot, he bleeds out, and then he's basically like, Hey, listen, yeah, you don't need me, you need me to my neck. They put a mechanical foot on, yeah. And by the way, that scene's crazy because it's so fucking oh, disgusting. brutal. Yeah, they're like, sh- they're like shredding oh, his fucking leg. God, up the, the, yeah, yeah, the device is just like a bunch of blades and just like, hold still. Yeah. It's like, so it's like, Oh my god, it's like a fucking put your foot yeah, through a uh, garbage disposal, yeah, I'll lift. To, to put a foot on, yeah, lift, and, and this is a big fire. giant robot foot, yeah. and then. He's like, oh, I'm just bleeding through this, so this ain't gonna work. Yeah. And then and he ends up taking poison. Yeah, yeah. He he took the plan D. And then I love how he even goes in like this. So like, I thought this would be more popular. Like, I don't understand why more people didn't want this. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. tastes like banana. It's it's harmless yeah. and it's quick. Yeah. And he took it and then he's like, Okay, by the way, you need this, this in my neck. I'm not gonna tell you what this is, but this is what everybody wants. Uh just take it to Mardova, yeah. who she Lucy knows as the person who took her father yeah. and that's the whole reason why she's out here yeah so it's like okay well shit that's going to help me okay boom so but then he gives her a wand like a little fucking looks like a little straightener hair hair straightener that flips out and it's a goddamn chainsaw oh, and, yeah. and she's supposed to again this is lucy who comes from a world where i don't know if she cuts her own steak i don't know <laughs> if she's ever even had steak <laughs> to i'm not having to cut a fucking head off yeah, yeah. and carry a head yeah. around <laughs> it's like Wow. Yeah. And then that's that's definitely that's a huge moment for her where she ends up going through with it. And then mm-hmm. she's traveling with this fucking with this head. head. Which uh, then you have the whole, you know, the ghoul mm-hmm. follows through with the dog that he saved, brought back, whatever. They follow. Who does uh and then what happened? How does Maximus get lost in this part? Because this is when he gets to the little town. Um he ends up he breaks the little thing, doesn't he? I think he ends up um well he has the guy that he so he tells them that Maximus he tells the brotherhood of steel that Maximus died and that he needs a new squire they send out yeah. the new squire and then there's but a bunch at of shit that, that point happens. is he's he's going to go grab by a new in, uh energy core right oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he has yeah, to sell yeah, yeah. tooth is, yeah. and then he has some some bandit raiders trying to like take his shit yeah, yeah, fight him. The, yeah, fight him. He yeah. took an ass beating. He did take that. an ass beating, but then when he ends up getting the the uh, suit, suit back on, he, he squishes fucks, the yeah, head. Squishes the dude's head. <laughs> um, and then from there, he ends up getting that back on, and then that might be when he radios in and he's like, "Hey, uh, my squire died." They end up sending out a new squire, and then you have them go back and forth for a little bit, where they're actually kind of bonding. This is one of the people that back at camp were bullies to Maximus, mm-hmm. so he's pretending to be Titus the entire time. They end up bonding through that obviously he ends up telling him that uh it's it's maximus and that he lied and that they have to get the story straight and um uh the guy's like fuck that right which up- the, w- real quick just yeah. the guy again like he's someone that you kind of hate at, at the at the camp. camp because he's part of the ones like jumping the uh, maximus and he's just kind of like yeah you could tell like he's like a, a bitch mm-hmm. but he's kind of trying to Pull, play the part and then he goes into how like no like maximus is a nice guy like like mm-hmm. i thought he was really cool uh i was the person that was beat up all the time mm-hmm. and then when he came in with a new like i thought hey it would be a good idea to get it off of me but it kind of like humanized him yeah like, oh, like, where, where you're like you're like okay definitely now all right you're well, even for maximus's character because that's right. what happens where he ends up Yep. Confessing to him and saying, okay, well, actually, I am Maximus. Which backfires. Yeah, the backfires. He's <laughs> like, well, actually, fuck him. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> I'm more about the brother than you. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but he ends up shutting off the suit yeah, with Maximus in it. Which, which was, was fucking nuts. crazy. Left him to die, which yeah, yeah. he did step on his foot, break his foot. He did break his foot. And, really and then, but it's like, and then you have the whole the ghoul going after Lucy, mm-hmm. that whole thing. And Lucy, by the way, finds Maximus at this point. She saves him. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she saves him because she ends up turning a suit back on or whatever. Well, or well, no, it. no, no. Because before that, remember they, uh, she's holding the head mm-hmm. around the little lake thing, and then uh, uh, the the fucking uh little frog, the 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 mutant frog thing comes, takes the head. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah, looking yeah. for the head. Well, I ain't torturing you, sweetheart. Yeah, this is yeah. I'm using you as bait. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
uh, we're definitely picking up an abomination of some kind or another. Yeah, the guy, by the way, that is the new squire for Maximus that gets sent to him that uh, leaves him. Yeah, yeah, which it's it's cool how they how this got blended. Yeah, I'm not sure. Year. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure we're tracking the right abomination. I think they're, they're finding a. It's my mistake. If you let me leave the charge, I'll leave the charge. I am a knight of the Brotherhood of Steel. Get back to shore. But and, sir, and this is the cool no. part where it shows the difference between him and Titus. Michael Rappaport. Yeah, Titus's character, where it's you know Titus for you guys would have sent Maximus to go handle this. Yeah. They as he ran away. Yeah. And that's where Maximus whole thing of like you don't deserve to be a Titan mm -hmm. or a knight. So. Yeah, definitely. This is a, the, I agree with you. This is actually an important moment as far as like character development for him making yeah. this decision. This is one of the first times we actually see him make actually a her heroic decision. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I don't think they're going to show it, but they end up getting the head through this, by the way. They yep. end up uh, getting the head at this point. So Lucy had it, and then at this point is where it, it ends up in their hands, and they continue to travel. And then what we just told you happens where uh, the uh, the other squire ends up fucking him over, putting him in, leaving him in the suit, yep. powering it off, because he's trying. Which the, Maximus is trying to kill him at that yeah, point. Yeah, which at that point, they're, so they're on their way to uh, take that head to the Brotherhood because the Brotherhood yeah. wants what's in it. Mm -hmm. And the ghoul is taking Lucy to what she thinks is going to be Philly and that, or wherever mm -hmm. she's supposed to go to find that lady. Yeah. Uh, forget or was over mauled over. And, but really he takes her to go trade her for vials. Mm -hmm. And uh, those vials are there to keep him alive, which you see a ghoul through this process, which kind of, again, shines another light on how, He's different and like like kind of like why he has to be the way he is is you have the one ghoul who's around been a ghoul, I think he said like 30 something or 50 something years. Yeah, I don't remember, but they do yeah. show you a guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the Roger who you see him, he's turning mm -hmm. and uh, turning, I guess turning into like a zombie from a ghoul mm -hmm. to a zombie. And you see him trying to remind himself, I'm Roger, I'm Roger, but he doesn't have any of these vials that that he has. Mm -hmm. And he he references in there about how the ghoul, how uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I've always been good at making money, Roger, mm -hmm. and which is whatever he's been doing bounties. So, and kind of, you can see where Lucy kind of started to see the difference. And then again, she wanted to help the thing yeah. that's turning into a goddamn zombie. And the ghoul's just like, Hey man, why don't you go ahead and tell me about that apple pie you love so much? <laughs> and then fucking like, like Brian, <laughs> which again, like. And they pay this off, by the way, the Roger thing. They end up paying it off later when he's trading him in. You have the lady the, that's saying, I'm Martha. Over yes, and over again. exactly. But this lady ends up actually uh, going full feral ghoul. And uh, Lucy ends up getting attacked by several different, uh, you know, yeah, zombies. which which Lucy, which again, like, like and that was a that was a cool port. So like she gets traded in, which funny because, again, they, they reference the 10 fingers. Mm -hmm. 
the ghoul goes at her. She gets one cut off, by the way. Yeah, because I don't have that. Because she bites, she bites the ghoul's fingers, and then he cuts her finger off. Says, "Now this is the closest we've had to a fair trade, uh, honest transaction, this entire time." Yeah. So, and then uh, she goes, she gets her finger get put back on by that robot. She's like, "Oh my god!" She where she starts to trust the robot. She's like, "I thought you were going to like like sell me for like sex and all this." And he's like. Oh my god, ew, why would I do that? I'm just gonna harvest you for organs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Yeah, and then uh she gets out, she releases all the prisoners, but then the ghouls, and that's where she didn't listen, right? Mm-hmm. The people like you don't understand. She released some zombies, and then it was that last ghoul who that Martha, and you saw like again, that's where you like you said, like you point out, it kind of clicked for her, like I have to like it put her in that moment where now she has to take that action mm-hmm. because she wanted to save Martha. Well, Martha is gone and Martha is t- going to attack her mm-hmm. and Lucy has to kill her. Mm-hmm. And that's like, like you said, like the huge character development that you kind of see through it all with that RPG game kind of yeah, thing yeah. where it's like, that was that moment for her where it's like the whole new Lucy. It was, it was just came out right Yeah. There. So yeah. that, yeah, that and, was awesome. And I think like that's, this is kind of getting towards, somewhat the middle of the uh show and we start to you know get into like the back half where we see more of the the um we see more of the past yes. after this and we start to see uh walton goggins so the ghoul his relationship with his wife and how his wife is actually involved in vault tech and like Crazy, I, so. and like i said earlier he starts to be kind of suspicious because he sees some things that he's not really happy with that seem unethical and uh he another p- cool p- uh part of that is uh they end up actually he's an actor like we said earlier so they include him on advertisements for yes, vault tech. yeah so like he's a part of some of the original advertisements for the vaults themselves did you, yeah, well, 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 like which you see in that, which that, like I said, the first episode, you you hear, hey, can you give us a thumbs up when he's pretending to be a cowboy, and mm-hmm. then he, his daughter's like, what, what does that mean? He's like, with a bomb, if it's bigger than your thumb, you know, mm-hmm. all that. So, uh, but you kind of, and then yeah, like it takes a few episodes, they they bring it back. Hey, he's an actor, and then he's on the set, and then this lady he's talking to, that's his wife, and then she wants him to do advertisement. He's against advertisement. Mm-hmm. So then it's. Her then selling him on, no, this is a good thing. This is for people. And you saw in that advertisement when he was doing the run for the commercial, there was something that, like he said, where, where it's like, like, yeah, this is like good or whatever. And like his wife, you can just see it. Like, like she basically like told like the, the whoever like produces or whatever, like, yeah, just like run with whatever he thinks. Mm-hmm. So you can see where like his wife is feeding him something that you can already start to tell she's lying to him. Mm-hmm. And there's something that, like, like it's obviously against him. And then, yeah, as you as it gets on and gets deeper, you see, like, you know, yeah, what were you leading to? And this is all paranoia around, like, and this is where it's uh, drawing this kind of parallel to paranoia around the bombs of like Cold War times. Um, and that's what the vaults the vaults are really playing into that. And there's this kind of like idea as to like why aren't we solving problems and we're preparing for catastrophe? And uh, the vaults vault tech kind of gets put in this position like, well, if we're hedging all of our bets in this way, how do we make sure that this actually takes place? And then this is when now uh, Walton Goggins is actually he's working uh, like he doesn't like a hundred percent he's he's uh torn on working with the communist people but this is the first time he's actually really starting to work with them and he's uh hacked into his wife's pit boy the wrist uh the like tele the cell phone on the wrist basically um he taps into that and now he's listening to her in these meetings at this point like what paul was saying she's kind of sheltering him from a lot of what she's doing or her involvement or just really their mission in general and this is when you actually see that one she has a lot of the worst fucking ideas that get implemented horrible yeah, person she is the person that ends up suggesting that they use these for social experiments and and, and the uh, owner who who was like the bad guy buzz whatever mm-hmm. uh buzz kiss he honestly it almost looks like he had an honestly good intention and good idea yeah that then like yeah she was kind of like the like malicious brain and then you had all the yeah. fucking well she sold goons. she was selling <laughs> she was selling the people that i think had to be on board and she just knew what might play into their egos right. and their interests so she ends up telling them like hey uh like you said 
Bud, he's the person that's really telling these people like, hey, this is what we need to get into. We need to get into the vault, so on and so forth. Um, and then sh they're like kind of lukewarm on it. Like mm -hmm. I said, they're like, uh, how do we even make money with that? How does that happen? And his whole idea is like, we're going to last forever. We're going to outlast the competition. Right. And they drop this in kind of interesting ways where he's talking to uh, the ghouls character when he was still a human. And, you know, he kind of has this pitch where he's talking about time and like that's how you win in capitalism is mm -hmm. time. And it it seems like outlast, and it outlast, seems sort outlast. of and at the time when he's talking to him about this in the party and this is how why it was so beautiful how they did it because at that time it kind of seems like incoherent babble even Walt Goggins character is like what the fuck are you even talking about dude okay whatever uh and then you end up seeing it in this new context now where they're talking about how we win is time because everybody's going to be gone and we're going to be the only company still around right. um to you know sell people and, shit and, and at this time we're learning with the vaults that there was a lot in 32 that was experiments. The experiments were done in 32 that, uh, that when they went back to go look in, uh, oh, no, that's four. No, about, no, right? no, no. So, so, so Norm, remember Norm goes back and like, like looks, cause he starts to look through like, like the systems and stuff and starts to see that like, uh, I don't know if there was a signal or whatever it was, but there's a reason why he went and checked on 32 again and he brought the cousin and they saw that like these people were dying over time. And they were killing themselves. So it wasn't just that. Uh, uh, oh, because remember, he asked one of the prisoners. They, they kept prisoners from the raiders, and he and he like poisoned them. But like mm -hmm. he said to him, like, like, hey, uh, like something. And the guy said, I don't know what thirty two. Oh, because he said he just killed it's been innocent for people. A long time. He said, right? he said, yeah, he said, I don't know what thirty two was up to. What all thirty two was up to, but it was anything but innocent. Mm -hmm. So then they went back, and so that let me go check, and you see that like. People have been dead for years. Yeah, I and don't then, think though. I say I don't think that was because they were running experiments on them. I think what it was is the people in thirty two figured out what was going on. Which, by the way, here we'll tell you one of one of the main plot points. So just so we can talk about it freely and we're not beating around the bush. So, like I said earlier, there's three vaults that are all ta attached: thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. Um, you're right. Norm starts to get into the uh, the computers, and he realizes that. Um, there's overseers in these vaults. Um, so what that means is basically like the manager of the vault. They look, they oversee everybody and all that. Um, his he dad up, was the one, his dad was the one when he got kidnapped. So, uh, he ends up uncovering in the computer that every single manager or every single overseer that they've had, um, from either vault, I believe was from 31. Yep. So 31, 32, yep. 33, 32 and 33 have only had overseers from the one vault. So now you're in this position where, you know, election, elections are rigged essentially. Saying, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you're being fed these, these, uh, uh leaders and what was interesting to me is once again this is the the kind of discussion that they were having around capitalism that capitalism uh well the manager rather and this is the the parallel that they draw between the overseer which is something that if you play fallout you're familiar with i thought it was really really smart and really interesting how they drew the parallel between that and then a manager in our everyday life. yes and that was i also thought it was really smart because i however much you know about economics or whatever but the manager is a hundred percent a creation of capitalism the manager doesn't exist in communism yeah. because the owners are the workers the they're workers supposed to own. be hands-on so it's the workers directly to the owner there is no manager. So the only reason you need that manager position as a manager. buffer <laughs> is in a capitalist society. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting that they, they kind of drew that that parallel between the two. Right. Um, and then that's what you end up seeing. That, and, and by the way, I think that's what happened with 32 is 32. Uncovered yeah. This yeah. Because, then, because you kept seeing like, like, like we, we know, know the truth, we know the truth death, yeah. to management, death to management, all that shit. Yeah. And then. Um, the thirty one was just a brain, which again, like 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 that's like the the brains behind. Well, so by the way, it was a little like brain on like an RC car rolling around, <laughs> like, who, who, who controls everything, and like and like and like that's and they have all these pods where people's bodies are, and they're like mm -hmm. sleeping. Now, uh, you see, in uh, uh, Lucy and Maximus are together, and then they're walking through the uh, because she finds him when uh, he's stuck in in his when uh, his squire leaves. Mm -hmm. with, with the head and he's stuck in the body she comes and saves him from like some giant roaches and then they go and they and he's really hurt he gets shot because because i see some some cannibals on a bridge they do a whole like she she decides we're all put our hands up and walk by each other which is a good idea yeah and then he was right they're just there to kill you yeah. so uh but he got shot so they go to this hospital they go to the hospital they walk in it's a trap they get brought down they're back in the vaults and in that yeah. moment 
she doesn't know anything yet. But we, as the viewers, we have put together now, and and then we're seeing that that the vaults are fucked up, that, that the vaults are fucked up. Yeah, yeah. and that's actually not where you want. Which again, this is the battle that you have as the viewer. Mm -hmm. Are the vaults a good idea? Yeah. Are they not? Because again, they are when you look well, at their safe. So even aside they from, are, like I, I think you're right. Are they a good idea? But then even more so than that, I think the question they put you in is even though they're fucked up, are they better? Are they still better? Yeah, and that's yeah. thing. Like, no matter what, they're still like the surface is so fucked. Yeah. So it's like, so then there's vault four, you see it's a bunch of people who are surface, mm -hmm. people who are now down in vaults, and they're they have a weird ritual, yeah. but they Bring to light to her yeah. everything that's actually well, that the vaults are fucked up, which we should touch on by the because this is one of the cool parts about the vaults. Yes, is every time you land in one in the story, you are like, what the fuck is their purpose? What's their social yes. experiment for this one? Because they're all different. Um, so in the case of this one, which I thought was really cool how they showed it, and Paul was touching on it, it's people from the surface now in this vault, but the original purpose for this vault was that it was going to be a scientific community Where and scientists it, ran everything scientists without ran everything. regulation. Yeah. Which was really interesting. Cause even you see, you end up seeing like some footage of shit going awry and one of the fucking test experiment, uh, test subjects breaking out. And there's like this guy that's like talking to the camera and he's like, this should not be taken as a sign that this, that scientists <laughs> should that not be able to rule <laughs> yeah, that the scientific community is not the preferable uh, type of community. Yeah. Um, so it was really interesting. And he, and that's where he mentions without regulations. Yeah. So, it, so yeah. So no, no. So, and then, uh, but you, but like they kind of go on like, and they explained to her how like every vault kind of had its own thing. Like like each vault had its own purpose. Well, because they ask, yeah. what's the, the you, guy oh, with one yeah, eye yeah, asks, yeah. what's your experiment? Yeah, and she's like, what the fuck are you talking yeah, about? We don't have an experiment. And then yeah. Master, she's like, well, your ignorance is should it, like 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 yeah, it, it, it is an excuse. And then you think, oh my god, they're about to kill her. They're about like this kumbaya play is about to do like this big like public in front of everybody, like killing. And then they're like, your punishment is to be like sent back to the surface and she's like wait you're letting me go yeah. which is what she wanted but yeah. maximus he want to say maximus is caught up in the spell he's yeah. caught up in wait I, I have tv this what is this food i've never had oysters popcorn mm. popcorn is a big selling point like oh, yeah, popcorn awesome. is big yeah so popcorn it's like broken like and 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 this is cool then he comes out <laughs> then he comes out maximus style and yeah. fucking fucks it all up because he's like Ali, but can he stay? He's a really good guy. And but then he, he comes takes out. The power suit. He oh, takes, which they confiscate, by the he, way. Yeah, they confiscate, but he takes their power source. Yeah. To power the suit. And then he's going to leave. And she's like, yeah, but they kind of need that because, like, they're going to die in a few days if they yeah. don't have it. They're going to run out of supplies. Yeah, so he's like, fuck them. So, so like, like, that whole thing was cool. And then, but then that's kind of where, like, the whole meeting and they turn in with, like, uh, with Cooper's wife, who was crazy because her secretary, is Betty, who's now running yeah, 33. 33. Uh, Hank, who is the dad, right? But uh, where <laughs> those people who ran the big corporations at that time and were like the big money, mm -hmm. those were the people whose ideas were well, the, the, people that, the people that worked at these corporations. Because she even tells Walton, or she tells the ghoul uh, when they're having this argument about whether or not the vaults are unethical. And she's like, I'll do anything to keep my family safe or something like that. She actually says at that point, which actually is kind of a plot hole because she's talking about something that technically shouldn't exist already. But she's saying like, we need to be in one of the good vaults. So technically, if she introduced that idea later, then that really shouldn't have been even on her mind i guess right point. which is something that again like yeah they were speaking in these vaults of uh, through these vaults as absolutes like like we are going to lift you like like it, it went from a, a hypothetical to like you saw like her her growth was she was like you said saying like no like we're going to be in these vaults and we need to be in the best one mm -hmm. and i'm working here for that reason like yeah. like because he, well, can, and, can, can, here, he said because, we're rich we can buy a spot and to make it clear because i actually forgot why i mentioned that because because you just started to mention it so she's saying that the Vault 31, the like I said earlier, the 32 and 33 have always had managers that came from 31. 31 is populated by people who worked in these yes. businesses and, yeah, and in Vault the Tech. time yeah. at, at the time before the bombs had got right. dropped. So these people got put in some kind of like cryostasis where they are frozen and they'll slowly be unfrozen at, over time so they can manage or oversee yeah. these uh these and, vaults. And, and the new world and new America, right? Yeah. And the thing is, but but when it was like uh, West West Tech and all them like in that one meeting, th those were like the head honchers, like the one like mob boss looking dude, the dude yeah. fucking smoking the cigarette. Uh, 
they were the ones that were coming up with like these like crazy like oh yeah we could do this 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 vault and it's yeah. like that was a selling point because she suggests yeah hey, like i said earlier she you, could do you, what can, you, want. you can do what you want in these and she also said you it's, don't have to tell anybody yeah and this is your world and like, immediately you know. and immediately like what paul's saying here is there's a thing called suit this is actually a little bit of a tease for these kind of characters that are in the uh video game which are super mutants uh so you hear them kind of like bring up these different ideas like oh we should have a uh vault full of super soldiers and we should have a vault full of this or like in the in the game even you under un uncover vaults where it's like uh you'll have a hundred women and one man in a vault vice versa you'll have a hundred you'll have a hundred uh, wild men, experience hundred <laughs> men and one woman in a vault imagine how that goes um, again like, like yeah. what's crazy is like this and the concept that they did it with honestly doesn't been that far outside of reality with what rich people would do. Oh, yeah, like, right. like, I, I, like, like, right. like, honest to God. And yeah, it's, right um, and then like what got cool was after that when they got back out, and then okay, well, we're gonna go where we're supposed to. Like everyone's gonna now work their way. They meet back up with us. They find the squire dude who he tries to dump the fucking dog. Yeah. Okay. And then he gets his foot fixed by the yeah. by the weird the snake oil sales salesman snake oil salesman but, who was fucking chickens earlier and all that. Yeah. And then yeah, he winds up selling them a, a, some a, 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 a fix a serum An elixir that turns yeah. him into a ghoul, which turns him in, it fixes his foot. But he yeah. later finds out when he gets shot in the neck. Yeah. But they're narrow but, that, which by the way saves his life there too. Yeah, he double saved his life. Double saved. Technically, yeah. I mean, it's fucked up. He didn't tell him, but at the same time, if he wouldn't, if it would have just been some shit that fixed his foot. Then he would have died. He, he would have died there. with the air. Yeah. yeah so. And then he realized he's a ghoul. He can't go back to yeah. the brotherhood now. Because they'll kill him. Now they're going to kill him because he's a ghoul. Yeah. So now Maximus has to, hey, I'll save it. You guys go. I'll go to them. He goes back to the brotherhood thinking he's definitely going to die now. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, the leader of the brotherhood is, oh, is like actually like, like, I love wait, your tenacity. Wait, you killed. Wait, you let Titus die? Yeah, you're right. He didn't deserve that. And then wait, you know where this is? We should run the world. Then again, like, like it was just it was, get the army. Then you and get this, by the way, him and Lucy are separated. Remember their yep. love interest? This is the point where they end up getting separated and they'll only briefly be reunited for a short period of time. Right. And then and Lucy is she's and, on her way. By the way, I'm sorry, just because no. I'm remembering uh, this this is important shit to actually mention. At this point, oh. Lucy had actually invited Maximus to not go back to the Brotherhood, but come back to the vault with her right. and live in that vault whenever you know she yeah. makes it back yep. to 33. Yeah, because she's gonna go back to 33, which at this time. Her brothers, her brothers in the vault. Remember, she he discovered all this at thirty two. Well, the Betty character, mm -hmm. who she is now, they're having an overseer battle right now, like an election. Mm -hmm. Well, she's the only one from thirty one. She gets, she wins the election. Mm -hmm. He sees that. He, they then, uh, she then comes up with the idea that they're going to split thirty three and 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 mm -hmm. half. Some are going to go live in thirty two. So we're going to stay in 33 and repopulate 32 of the ones that are leaving. Now you say like, there's a bunch of dead bodies, all this destruction, everything went wrong there. Mm -hmm. So she goes, let's all as a group, we have to go see 32. It's spotless. It's mm -hmm. clean. There's not a dead body. There's no blood. There's no scratch. There's nothing. So obviously somebody had to go in and clean it up. Mm -hmm. So that's 31. No. So that's Betty knowing what's going on. So well, you know the, Norm now knows this now. And there's the blonde haired lady. Yeah, the blonde She's hair. also a part of 31. Yeah. So it's not just Who's, the overseer, by the way. They're yeah. not alone. There's like little sprinkle there, people, people right. sprinkled throughout. And then that blonde girl who is now who now seduced their cousin to be the mm -hmm. dad because she lost her husband. She has having the baby, right? She's now the overseer of 32. Mm -hmm. She was elected as over and it's like again, another 31. So this is all getting put together now by norm he get he's realizing that there's a lot more to what's going on everyone turns a blind eye to it they know or they're just ignorant so then you have uh, a lucy who she's looking for a mom and she keeps being told you're like your mom but she doesn't know where her mom is but they find out that her mom's pinpoint whatever mm -hmm. is the is the one that opened pit yeah pit boy pit boy like pip yep. okay pit boy is what opened up the outside door for the uh 32 for, for 32 for the raiders to come in mm -hmm. so somehow they got in through that so you don't know how da, 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 da. she's told that her mom died so then you get to where she finds uh moldover moldover mm -hmm. whatever yeah. and she has her dad uh, her dad's in a cage mm -hmm. so 
she then gets told everything about what happened. And that's where it gets even more insane, where it's again, like, that's where it's like, okay, I was not expecting where Lucy and Norm actually went to that, 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 that shady sands, shady sands, who, which she has seen now that's all demolished. She's been to the surface. So she has been to the surface before. Remember, and and they show you, this is actually really cool. How they, they'll show you, They'll show you the flashback, but they don't show you enough of it. So you assume that it's in the vault because her mom's wearing vault gear and you see the cornfield, which, which we haven't explained, but, 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 but yeah. in the vault they have to, to make it as normal as possible. They have a cornfield and then they, then they use a hot lamp as the sun. Mm-hmm. So she's having this memory of seeing her mom in the sun and she remembers feeling actual rays coming from the sun in this moment. But she remembers, she references, that's just what my mom brought out. Yeah. And then her mom was dead. She ne- doesn't remember her mom. Yeah. Her dad is who buried her mom, so they say. So then you find out that no, her mom was at the service, was at this place. Her dad found out that the, that she took, uh, that the the mom took the kids with her. The dad said that it wasn't time he was actually pissed off that they're pissed off that there's actually this utopia. It, it's built, but they didn't build it, right? And then you find out that this zombie, this ghoul, this 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 tail the crypt creature sitting at the table is wearing a charm that is her mom's charm, and that's her fucking mom yeah. sitting right there, decayed. And then, then you find out that the dad is who actually ordered the bomb to be dropped on Sunny Shades to eliminate that entire utopia and lie to everybody, to get, kill her mom. So, so now this whole thing, and then at that moment, she gets the power source about to put it in. Boom, here comes Maximus once again to yeah, destroy, fuck, again. fuck everything up yeah. with the Brotherhood. Yeah, because he ends up letting her dad out. Yes. So she's sitting there. She's contemplating, like, should I let my dad out? I now know that he's a fucking monster. Um, and then Maximus comes in and is like, hey, he's like, hey, I'm her dad. And then he's immediately, which I guess makes sense. He's like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, psh, yeah, yeah, let me let you out. Yeah. And then that's when you end up. She, he immediately figures out that he's from Shady Sands. If you guys don't remember that we mentioned that earlier, so now he finds out that his dad or, or uh, that Lucy's dad, his love interest, uh, is responsible for where he lived and everybody that he know he knew being completely destroyed so uh then he ends up having you know a little bit of like a crisis of you know he wants to fuck the dad up oh my um, god yeah wild i mean and that's and that's for the most part the end you have uh the dad ends up getting away in the power suit um you have moldover which this was one thing that's kind of disappointed me. i guess I, maybe you can't have everything wrapped up perfectly or whatever but uh i didn't I don't think that they ever really explained why the Moldover lady was there. So she was from present day. She was from the past, but she also had an age, but she wasn't a part of that company. So they didn't really explain as to why. Yes. Is, is right. Because, like, because they did. No, I, I don't, I don't know where they, like they never brushed that. Like, okay. like, because you see her, by the way, I don't know if we said she's the leader of the, the communist, communist party yeah, yeah, the communist in people. present yeah, day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, she was the one running the meetings. She was, she actually knew uh, Cooper's wife, she said. And then, like, that's kind of where, after that conversation, he then put the little bug in her thing, you know, Pit Boy. So, uh, but yeah, Moldover, she's there at the end. She hasn't really aged, aged a little bit, aged, it looks like, like 20 years. Right. Well, probably like as much yeah. as her dad. Yeah. And then, when we see him. Um, what was interesting was she was holding the hand of Lucy's mom oh, yeah. as, she, as she dies, she bleeds out. And it's like, what's their relationship well, obviously that's gonna get hit on at some point yeah. well and maybe and, not though because the mom's dead and moldover is dead at the end of this i think true yeah right yeah, yeah. So so it, it, there, but, well that's what it shows like, yeah, yeah. she bleeds so maybe, out yeah. as they all look at the power because she goes and turns on the power source go across the town like so now there's all this power and then they're calling yeah. uh maximus now king because he killed moldover so they yeah. say and then, so now he is, but what she has, by the way, that's that, I thank you because I forgot about that. They so she definitely dies. Uh, he did not kill her, yeah. <laughs> they leave, uh, Lucy leaves, uh, with the ghoul because he's like, Hey, if you want to survive, basically come with me because this is about to be sworn. And, and they're looking brother, for the dad because he flew of off, yeah, because he flew off. And um, uh, so you have all the people for the Brotherhood of Steel run up there, and like what Paul was saying, they see that Moldover's dead and they ask, like, did you kill her or something like that? And then his friend from the beginning of the sh- show who said her ankle that got her ankle cut, which, by the way, was her. She, she ends up she telling you that she did it herself because she was afraid to go out in the field. Um, uh, she ends up like raising his hand and he doesn't correct her. You know, it's, it's 
the shit that happens with him basically happens this way. This yeah, is how dude, it always yeah, happens. yeah. It just he's just thrown in a situation. He, he refuses. He to handles answer. nothing well. Like like everything is opposite. Of what you it's like what do. you were talking about with the when the one guy was interrogating him. He's like, did you do this? And just by like not answering and like quivering a little bit, he ends up saying, "Well, dude, promotion, brother. Yeah, they're working out. Yeah, it worked out for him. It's like now he's king. Every time. Yeah, yeah it's like Jesus time. Christ. Oh, he should have been God. killed a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's a fucking. But, he's uh, the biggest traitor. No, <laughs> the, the biggest, but yeah. it's like. So, but I don't know because we're still so so where we're left on now is they got to find the dad. And by the way, the dad ends up they show him, he's the last part of the show. He's like the closing scene, and he's standing back and he's like looking over a town. And for video game players, that's supposed to be the new Vegas city. So uh, you know, that's exciting. Okay, yeah, because he's going back to like he said he I thought he was going back to the vault, but when they show him at the end of the movie, like I said, he's like overlooking yeah. uh, New Vegas, which is, uh, you know, like one of the destinations for the game. Yeah, it's like a little tiny place, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so, but uh, and then he, we still got to find uh, uh, Cooper's wife. Cooper's wife and, and, and his daughter, his yeah. daughter, because like that's like, he's like look, and that's what he says to fucking Hank. Al- I don't know if his daughter's alive or not. That's the point. I don't know. When, by, he doesn't know because we seems. didn't super touch on this like specifically. You do see the bombs drop off, uh, and so th- which is fucking wild. All the arguing that they had about this. Walton Goggins is actually not near a vault. He's in the middle of doing a job when they drop the bombs off. So mm-hmm. presumably his wife may have been the only person that actually got to go in the vault, but there's a great chance that she's going to be around and they do right. say he's looking for it. Like Paul yeah, said. Yeah. He, he said, I'm looking for my family, but remember and, and at that party, I forgot to say this at the party. He said, when he said, "Why, why are you here taking pictures?" Or like, like what, like whatever, like con- the dad is being condescending to Cooper, the dad mm-hmm. of the birthday party, and the one friend goes, "Probably pay that alimony." So he's divorced oh, okay. from I her. Missed that. I missed that. Yeah. So, so, yeah. He, so, so they got okay. a divorce by this point. And again, remember, she wanted them to go to a, a shelter, a vault. He said, "Why can't we get land out in like Bakersfield?" And she's like, yeah. "And that's like, where that's she says the whole her. thing, where she's like, you don't understand. That's not going to.' I'm sitting here trying to help our family and get us into the best thing possible. You're talking about a fucking farm, yeah. And it's like that's not going to help us. She's like, you're in a fair and, deal. And it's like, what do you mean? Because like again, like he's thinking like, what? Are, no war is going to come from this. Like yeah. let's relax. And so, yeah, like like I, I the way that they t- do all that, it's perfect. But that's just where we're kind of like, I don't know." If the daughter's alive, that would be mm-hmm. a major plot twist. But at least he's looking for his wife. You know she's a villain. You know Hank's looking for someone, probably his wife, because he's probably porking her. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I don't know, uh, Lucy, I'm, I'm interested to see where the fuck that goes, because is she going to turn into a ghoul? Like because 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 what because what was that whole reference to when she was talking to yeah. the ghoul about like I might I may turn into you but I'm not gonna be you yeah are we gonna catch up with the squire kid who's now a ghoul he doesn't even, so. he doesn't that. even know what the fuck he's walking into because he has no idea. <laughs> Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah. He just, I'm just starting into a ghoul. I think with him, well, he is a, he is officially a ghoul, and I think that they'll probably end up bringing him back at some point. And the guy that played him, I got to get like he was just likable and just like yeah. fun. You know what I mean? He was one of the funner, like com- he was one of the genuinely like comedic relief w- while still feeling like he made sense in the world. It yeah. wasn't like he was a fucking clown in the middle of uh, uh, this war. Do, show do um, you know that, that that one actor oh, God, this is a dull part my bad but okay. the one actor he kind of looks like, he looks just like him that's what i was gonna say he reminds me of him but he's a funny actor very pale red mustache mm-hmm. looks like he's just depressed all the time looks pissed off but this kid he's in he's in a show or another movie where dude, he plays he plays his character so well and it's like that's what he's turning into i just see like the next 15 20 years of this kid being in our lives is this a different guy or is the same so 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 it's a different guy but honestly they could be father and son i got you like i like i have to look up like like like, i know he's in a judd apatow film but like like, like, yeah no it's like it's like but he's just i can see where this honestly this cast is really good yeah i I think the cast is good the writing is really good the only one i didn't like was maximus i'm trying to think if there's anybody else but maximus pissed me off but i it's not that because i didn't like the, the writing or because i didn't think that that guy was a good actor uh i personally just found his character to be not uh, likable oh. but i thought i thought that added to the show that he was not likable. Right. like there's plenty of times where he was around lucy for example where i felt uneasy you know with yeah him around you know lucy what the fuck because he because i didn't trust him and things like that so i don't think he was meant to be like this just like lovable character no. so yeah. uh i i don't i don't knock the show for that i think that's actually a good part of the show the fact Wh- that i didn't like him which cool thing that they did yeah 
one, we don't know. Like Lucy hasn't gone back to 33. Yeah, not yet. No. So we don't know what's going to happen with Norm. We don't know what's going to happen with all that. Mm-hmm. We don't know if Hank's going to beat her to 33. True, true, yeah. Betty, obviously, is part of Hank's whole thing. So mm-hmm. she's, so that whole thing is interesting. Um, what, I'm, um, what I'm also interested in season two is seeing Maximus. We're talking about the character growth. Where does he go? Because, again, he's been on the fence. He has been either, like, extremely selfish and, like, whatever, get me ahead, or, <laughs> like, all about the, the greater purpose. Well, I, so yeah. him and this king role. I hope he goes more into that personally. I'm curious what, how you would feel. But like I said, I like that part of his character from a story standpoint. I, I thought his character was annoying. He pissed me off in many different ways. But where I think that he actually added the most to the story was as like a little bit of like a Heel. wild card that had like, you know, in, like, I mean, like I said, everything when he lied and shit, you could understand why somebody yeah. might not trust people or might lie yeah. in that upbringing. So it makes him a little bit like a sympathetic yeah. villain. I don't think he went villain in this season, but I could, if they continued that progression, I think that would be more interesting than making him like Lucy's boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like that. I, I could see him getting mad that Lucy isn't with him and then going after the volts and, and vengeance. Sure. I, I yeah. can see where he goes against the, the brotherhood of steel leader. Uh, I could, I could see where he just like yeah like like it, 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 either yeah. way I do think story wise mm-hmm. if he went full villain it would be best yeah. you have to have a I mean but you do with Hank but like this I, I like, you like and care yeah. about like it's because we've actually sat with him yeah so with Hank I guess they kind of set him up to be somewhat likable because they show him like oh he's a good dad and she tells at the beginning she's talking he about he's a good dad he is a good dad and she even says like all my good memories are with my dad or something at the beginning mm-hmm. um. So, you know, they definitely set him up to be likable and then they pull the rug from underneath you. So with I just think it'd be even more effective with Maximus because we're experiencing so much of his character growth Mm -hmm. with the dad. We're basically not lied to, but basically lied to from a story standpoint. It's like this is the person he is. And then that's changed in a second with Maximus. We're seeing more of a slow character progression. You know, you're seeing these things where it's like, like I said, you can empathize with him. I understand why he doesn't trust people. I understand why he, why he also feels like, uh, like maybe making selfish selfish decisions is the right move because everybody else yeah, is doing again, that and, and nobody else is yeah, going to do that for nature, you. Nobody's yeah. coming to save you in this world in his opinion. 100%. Um, so I think that's actually a, a really interesting point of view and in a nice juxta, juxtaposition from uh, Lucy's character, which is it, it really doesn't even matter how other people are treating you or what they're doing. It's you're in control of your own actions and do the right thing and be a good person. Don't lie. She continues to do that even though people are constantly giving her reasons not to uh so yeah. so yeah i don't i mean i think that's a great season two definitely i want to see maximus's character growth uh with this season i want to say the lady that ella purnell i'm pretty sure is your name and uh, the lady that played lucy though she was incredible i thought uh seeing her character growth from a game standpoint she nailed that kind of like naive vault dweller kind of personality and then seeing that slow progression she was just somebody you really wanted to root for her 100 yes, percent. you wanted to root for her. there's no reason not to really get behind her even the uh uh one person had a detailed conversation that said fuck this i'm not watching this show because of michael rapaport the one of the things that they did say was that they thought that the lucy uh, actress was really good so she was just amazing in my opinion i, ca- I couldn't heap enough praise on her yeah, really from good. somebody that came from playing the games like she just really she really was faithful to that kind of character from my perspective. And I appreciated it as somebody that's a gamer. And uh, you always kind of hold your breath when people are uh, adapting uh, source material that you really yeah. hold in a high regard. And this is one of them. And I think that she was amazing. Yeah, uh, I, I, I love the whole essentially six, six episodes of optimism out of her. Yeah. Absolutely. And, then, yeah. and then it was like, all right, none. Yeah. It's like, it's like a perfect, like, well, because that's how it would go. And her and the Walton Goggins character, I think going forward, the ghoul who was like, he's actually redeemed by her a little bit. Yes. Like his faith in humanity, which I think will be an interesting relationship to explore alongside the daughter relationship yes. that we got to see at the beginning. And she may or may not be dead. She may be, she may be an evil character now or whoever, who knows? Because well, yeah. what I was say is because you can see his his human character when the flashbacks is all about like the greater good, all about doing the right thing as a person, and is a yeah. genuine, like genuinely good 
person. Yeah. To where like he didn't even want to be a spokesperson for something that could not be. Well, no, so, it, it, by the way, that, so um, we needed to mention this before we got off here. So I'm so glad you mentioned that because I thought this was one of the coolest scenes. So by the way, they kind of like show you a flashback with him on a movie set. And he's uh, yes, yeah. And there's yes. this. Uh, he's a cowboy. And there's this like end of the uh, movie kind of scene. You know, like he, the the good cowboy, the sheriff actually yep. um, confronts the bad guy, the outlaw in this. And the director's telling him to kill the guy. He's like, okay, it's in the scene. Can, well, actually, can, at first they're acting it out, and he doesn't do it. He he's doesn't like, do, I can't it. do it. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, and then uh, he's and then he talks to the director, and he's like, I'm the sheriff. Why wouldn't I just arrest him? Like I always do. And and, and he's been a TV show character. Like, like they built this character up where he's always does like the higher ground like the right thing yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly so uh, and by the way this is an interesting parallel to lucy's character which is kind of embodying this in my in what is now our present day and whatever um so he ends up having this conversation with the director and they kind of leave it there they have this back and forth later on he ends up finding a copy of one of his old movies it ends up being this scene he sits down and he watches it and you end up actually seeing this scene play out and him kind of like see it from these eyes now uh, later on. And it's just really it's a it's a powerful and, thing. And, and, and this is after and this is why I say that Lucy redeems him, because this is immediately after she the golden rule motherfucker scene we talked about earlier gives him all these vials. He goes in after that and watches a scene. And I just think that's, yeah. it was beautiful story. And, really. and, and this scene, he winds up killing the 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 perp. Yeah. So like like it show like. Yeah, he wanted to always be like the resemblance of good. So for like him to like all like there had like obviously what happened with his wife was like the big like turning point for him. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously we're gonna get deeper into it because again, like he has said to her, like, but it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's so it is interesting to see like where he was heartless, cold, mm -hmm. ghoul. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yeah, now like you said, like Lucy. Yeah, it's kind of like it, it sparked that. It She's sparked to, that yeah. back. It sparked that back where it's like maybe we are going to get this badass ghoul mm -hmm. who's just like a do the right thing type guy who, within reason, because obviously he's going to have to like take people's shit so he can survive. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and I <laughs> so, think, so yeah. Like, kill a bad guy, eat their shit. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, and it's a little relative, like in the society, like you know, like do the right thing and stuff like that. You know, it's a little bit on a scale compared to like the society we live in. Even Lucy does shit from time to time where it's like, oh, okay, well like in this society, obviously that wouldn't be acceptable. Um, but for the most part overall, uh, I think that's kind of the, the story there is like Lucy's character kind of like it embodies almost the character that Walton Goggins or the person that Walton Goggins really on like strove to be. And she's really practicing yeah. it over and over again. Um, and seeing their characters in contrast together were awesome. And that's going to be really cool. So season two, we're starting out. They're already together. So I'm oh, excited about that. Badass. Yeah, and, and again, really like, like I, I, I'm going to enjoy the future hit and play on like what is right. What is wrong between colonization and imperialism, right? Thinking that your way of life is the best. Mm -hmm. And doing whatever you think is best for the greater good, which in retrospect and other percep perceptions is pure evil. Mm -hmm. And again, which we've talked about relentlessly or like yeah. on here with our own country and what sure. we do. And it kind of hits on that. Per again, I think it's just perfect to the times mm -hmm. where we're at. It's just it's awesome because, again, like, yeah, you have the utopia that isn't really a utopia. Yeah. And then you have the freedom, which is it's. You're, you're living in a fucking wasteland. It's hell. Yeah. But which is better? Mm -hmm. Do you want the freedom or do you want this perfect way of life? But it's not really perfect. And you yeah. know that. Yeah. So it's, it's like, like I said, like I, as, as a viewer, I'm like, man, I don't know if I, do you want to live in the vault? Like it does look like a pretty good, pretty good setup. Definitely compare. I mean, but, comparatively, you're not, you can't even find fucking clean water. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. It's like, dude, she has to drink fucking like, <laughs> like radioactive water. Mm hmm. Which that was another cool moment where she's like dying of thirst and she makes that decision to finally that had a, break yeah. down and kind of like almost like it's Dude, almost like the acceptance. Her, well, it's like the acceptance of like this is where I'm at. I have to I have to kind of shed some of my I don't know, yeah. principles. I don't know, like you know what I mean. Like you don't drink radioactive things. Well, like here it's that or die. But right. it's like what do you want? Which now <laughs> now I'm sure with their power thing, like they have like yeah yeah with, yeah get oh cool. Well, but I think that the problem with that is though is that. Uh, the bro brotherhood, the brotherhood. came right behind that, so uh, they're gonna they probably they're control it. of that bitch. Yeah, they're probably gonna be like, okay, I need that. Back. Or that, or or maybe they live in that in that town. Maybe, maybe. And 
maybe this is good shit. We're definitely we're looking forward to that. The season two of Fallout, season one, we both loved. So yep. I mean, that's really we went through it all. And I mean, overall, just the real short, concise, uh, our opinions on it was that we both loved it. Uh, this is one of my favorite shows of the year. I probably like this. I just reviewed Three Body Problem. So if you guys saw that, uh, then you know that I love that. And if you haven't seen it, then go check it out uh, just to get kind of a full idea of that show. But I would say that I like this a little bit more. This was one of my favorite shows of the year so far, to be honest. If not, if not my top show, I'd have to really, really think about that. But um, I, I really loved the back half of three body problem. The difference here is I feel like the entire show was fun, super fun uh, while also giving you like a really interesting story with a ton of twists and turns. Um, but then with a, with a huge priority on just fun storytelling, like every episode, I was never like in a setting that wasn't, interesting to look around at and see at the set design or the costume oh, design dude, the costume like design oh man, is going to win should win awards like yeah, they, like was, honestly it's, it's it's yeah well i mean and also just as far as like um how true they were to the costumes of the game it's actually insane like some of these motherfuckers were wearing shit that looked like it was straight out of the game 100%. which which again i, I i'm that's what makes me happy again i'm not a game person but i wanted yeah. to hear from it from yeah. someone who is that it that it stayed as true to the game as possible. So one of the awesome. most one of the most I've ever seen. I, I after this, uh, because I didn't want to taint my review. I, I'll actually go. I want to watch some other people's reviews. I'm curious that people that had criticism of it, specifically people that have criticism of, um just how faithful it was to the source material because literally i don't know if i've seen anything that close to what to something else that i've like if i played or whatever like an right. adaption that was that faithful all the way down to the products like i said the stim packs literally look like the shit you use to heal in the video game it's fucking the attention to detail in love and craft that went into this game um i really appreciate as somebody that that loved the game itself. like, like honestly like Ed, did you see uncharted i did see uncharted so comparison as far as like sticking to the game, uh, I would say this more. Really? I okay. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I didn't love Uncharted. I like the Uncharted games. As far as like consistency to the, I would have to really think about that. Like, like I mean, for example, you could say that Mark Wahlberg was a terrible Saul. Um, he's way <laughs> younger. He's okay. Well, I mean, he's way yeah, younger. He was, he he look, like you were younger. Yeah, he didn't look like him at all. Definitely. And I mean, he acted still, which is Mark Wahlberg, but he acted like Mark Wahlberg yeah. too much. Tom Holland than. was. Uh, Tom Holland's good though. I, I love Tom Holland. Uh, but, I, uh, but for Nathan yeah, Drake, it's kind yeah, of maybe tough. not. Maybe not spot on. Um, and also, they were kind of dealing with a young Nathan Drake, which you only get like in pieces in the game. So uh, they were. You know, this is a completely new character, the Lucy character. And I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's any characters that I remembered from the games. Oh, nice. okay. Yeah, so actual characters that came from the games. There were characters that were archetypes that exist in the game. Like, there's Vault Dwellers, the robot that uh, was going to take her organs out. Those same robots exist in the game. Usually, they're actually, like, household robots that take care of household well, items. Okay, so, so what I was yeah. say is, if, if you look at uh, that one scene where uh, Cooper was talking to... Uh, his one friend there was an indian dude mm -hmm. who he was talking about how yeah like 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 the one robot they're they're using his voice and he's like he's like oh yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's like he's like i walk in my house and i'm telling myself to make me a fucking like like pizza toast or whatever and it's, it's so weird yeah and it's, it's, i it's, forgot like, about yeah, that yeah <laughs> and, and, and and then you then you see that robot later on yeah. and you hear the voice and it's like oh my god that's what yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah. about definitely definitely and i thought that was cool with the brain the uh with uh, buds, yeah, buds yeah, or yeah, whatever. It's his brain. At it's first, his I voice. didn't, I didn't catch it. I didn't yeah. think it. I didn't. Why well, not? That I didn't think anything. I was just like, okay, this is a whatever. And then slowly, I was like, oh shit, this is the fucking other guy. Yeah, um, it's his voice. So yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff was really cool. And by the way, with season two, and then we're gonna shut it down because it's late. My bad. But we this I could talk about literally for until tomorrow. Um, and it today just started. Um, so uh, damn, what was I just about to say? Uh, oh yeah, so things for season two that uh had happened in the game that we we didn't see. Like I said, super mutants. We didn't get any that i remember uh there's a lot there's a there's a, actually becomes a big ai force so like robots and stuff start to become an issue and there ends up becoming a thing there uh with like sentience and are they considered to be people or not the brotherhood of steel says fuck no they want to hunt them all down and kill them and then you have uh ro then you have this thing called the institute that creates these robots and puts them out into the well doesn't actually put them into the world but uh uses them or whatever and then you have rogue robots that become aware and they run out into the world and they're trying to hide in the world and then there's people that say 
okay, you're a robot, but if you are sentient, then you're still a living thing. So then you have rights, and then you have other people that side with That's the brotherhood. Interesting. Of Very interesting. And yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say is, <clears throat> and this is only in this part of the world. So, mm-hmm. like, you don't know, like, well, like that robots thing is on the east coast, like I said, that's because, like, because, like, 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 where, where in here would they even have robots? But mm-hmm. that's what I was thinking is, like, my god, like, 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 this was just fucking Philly, mm-hmm. and a few like places. This isn't the entire world, yeah. Which Philly, I like, don't even, I don't think that was Philadelphia either. No, most a, of the time they're out west, we yeah, they're yeah, in yeah, they're in California, then Las Vegas, yeah, so yeah. yeah, so okay, so yeah, no, that's yeah, interesting. So a ton of shit to definitely when, when did, uh, they announced anything for season two they announced before this came out that it was already renewed okay so they said ahead of time before it even came out that there would be a season two i don't know when hopefully they do two a year and it's not like you have to fuck they drop yeah. eight episodes and then you gotta wait till next fucking three years eight, next was, april it was cool that i mean that speaks to how confident Air, uh, amazon felt about the product that they didn't even wait to see how it performed and how many people watched it they saw it and they're like this shit is good this ha- this is going somewhere let's renew it and then it went out and then hopefully it's been going crazy i don't know how popular it's been but i know that i loved it. i know a lot of people love the games so i i just imagine it's going to do well um and there's just there's just still so much more to get into like i said i don't think i can't remember any characters from the game i probably am missing somebody i imagine they probably did have a little cameo uh but there's so many characters that delve in, into the games oh by the way that's what i wanted to, with the institute with the robots and shit there's the brotherhood who hates them there's the institute who wants to keep the robots but think they should exist and then there's the uh called the underground railroad so it's mm. to- totally trying to go parallel with the underground railroad with the slaves civil rights movement yeah so there's this underground railroad which is made up of mostly people who try to smuggle robots robots out Dude, of the institute that's, i don't know where i'm gonna feel because you know i hate robots well, yeah, but they, i love the underground railroad. yeah they make you they, <laughs> they definitely put you in an ethical position to really consider like what is a living thing what deserves to be treated with respect what deserves to live all those kind of things um but yeah fallout man it's a great universe i look forward to spending more time in it uh sit in politic baby thank you for nope. tuning in with us go it's check out uh, your boy uh let's see we got apple spotify instagram tiktok facebook any platform that you get on to talk shit twitter sit in politics sit in politics that is what you can find me at not sit in politics podcast but sit in politics on all platforms right here without the podcast part um, <laughs> 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 uh, paul, then we have paul b balcom here go check him out on twitter find him on instagram balcom paul Yep, Balcom Paul on no the IG. Fuck yes. All right, so IG, go find him. Balcom Paul, Balcom B Paul on Twitter. Paul B Balcom. I, Paul B Balcom. My bad. I would, uh, I would highly, highly recommend the Twitter follow. Like I said, he's a, just a good, good individual dude. So it's hard to find good friends out here in the world. I, I'm giving this guy the cosign. This is Thanks, a good guy man. to become friends with. But then on top of that interesting points of view will engage uh just a fun twitter follow in general so i highly mm. highly highly recommend and if you want to see him outside of that then you know where to find them politics. politics we're out here appreciate you for the love